lanes I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it To my own domain Yeah I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots Skipping breaks Feeling lost Feeling great Popping off Singing straight Never stop Never changed All the squad here to play And I've got something to say Yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never cap in space I won't stop till I hear him say Welcome back, welcome back We are back with our panel for Ready to Love this is season nine. We're in Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth, episode 10. And this is the Tommy Getaway Part 2. How you doing today, Sean? I'm well. And yourself, Aubrey? I, I am well. I am well. I, I was just complaining to you, though. The only thing about it, I'm well, but I, I, I just wish the temperatures would come back up to the 70s that we had earlier <laughs> last week. You know, what about you? Uh, it's well here. It's uh, in the sixties here. It's better today than it was yesterday. yesterday oh, okay. Was a, yesterday was a rainy day, and I just felt lazy. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, okay. It was a rainy day, huh? Did you just relax on the rainy just, day? Just relax. That's all I did. Relax. I know that's right. Didn't do oh, a yeah. thing. Didn't do a yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, when it rains like that, if you if you have the day off or it's after work, it is so nice to just be able to relax. Because for whatever reason, I don't know why it is when it rains, it makes everybody drowsy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. yeah. Hey there, hey, Life Colton, Online. Hey, Colton, how you doing, Kirby? Colton, good to see you. Thanks. Come on in. Please hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can get in on the chat. Hey, Kirby. Wow. Twice in a row. Good to see you. Good to see you, young man. Good to see you, both of you. Um, so, yeah. How, what's the weather like, Kirby, where you are? I think you're in the northeast part of the United States. What's the weather like there? I'm just curious. And Colton, chime in with um, where you are in the world and what the temperature is like, if you don't mind. So um, this was this was a very interesting episode this week with uh, Ready to Love. What what did you think about it briefly? Yeah, it was it was it was great. It was great. I'm I'm gonna try to be objective. I'm gonna try to be objective. It was great though. Mm hmm. I'm gonna try to be objective. Mm hmm. Yeah, I I think so. I thought it. I thought it was good. I I thought it was an interesting thing though was going on with. Um, and we'll we'll get to it in a little bit. I thought it was an interesting thing what was going on with with Chaz though, you know, in this episode. Oh yeah, oh yeah, very much mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. That's a, a lot has been said about that, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we, we're gonna get into it as we get into it because uh, right. I don't know. I just I don't know. I, I he he kind of he kind of threw a curveball there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, right. He but I'll tell you about it afterwards. I'll tell you about it afterwards. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, all right then. I know you got you probably got some inside scoop. Who knows? You might have been and tell me something. Did you recognize? Because I, I said I was gonna inbox Leron and one of the castmates to find out. Did you recognize the 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 city, the spot where they were vacationing, where that retreat was? Because that was nice. Yeah, I, I I don't know what it was where it was. I thought it was in Lake Dallas, which is outside of Louisville. But um, oh, friend of mine, okay, friend like of mine said that that wasn't it. But I don't know oh, if that okay. was the Trinity River or if it or was it or if it was over in Fort Worth or not. Because I know a lot of the places are in Dallas that where they were mm -hmm. filming. So I don't know. Oh, okay. Not that yeah, many water I mean, spots in Dallas. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I mean, it looked it looked nice. It looked uh, very. Um, uh, just kind of restful, peaceful. They had all the water activity oh, with yeah. the, the ski doos mm -hmm. and the ski jets and uh, uh, you know the floats True. and 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 the ho the house was very nice. The house mm -hmm. was a very nice house. This year they oh, didn't yeah. have any. We didn't see any bunk beds this year. No bunk beds. No bunk beds. No bunk beds. I think they, they they're I, moving on up in the world. <laughs> but I tell you what, I I, I would have been mad at that if I was the owner and um, with as long as we're having those skates on on that floor. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you know what? I didn't think about that. That's a good point because you know what? You can mess a floor, a hardwood floor, mess very floor easy. Pieces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get all them scratches in it, and ugh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. I'm sure. I'm sure. Own took care of it. Whatever. Whatever it was. I'm sure he took care of it. Um. Uh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Guys, technical difficulties. I sent out <laughs> really wasn't technical difficulties, it was my, my human error. I sent the wrong link to some of our panelists, so I'm trying to backtrack. Come on in, come on in, JR. <laughs> hello, sissy. Hello, Miss Iffy. <laughs> oh, is Miss Iffy? Oh, from the UK. My girl, that's another content creator. Guys, you gotta go over. Miss Iffy is so hilarious. She does a 90 day fiance and um we have done um the real housewives of atlanta together uh so come on in jolly good day to <laughs> yeah come on in she's a, a beautiful lady from from the uk so come on in i'm telling jr come on come on come on what you saying jr quit typing and just come on <laughs> <laughs> what is JR talking about? Well, what did, what did you think about? Okay, um, in this episode, we see as we get started, we see that mm -hmm. um that we had Alonzo on the on the on the bubble, we had Laurent on the bubble, and then we had William. William, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Oh, oh, I see. Okay, you know what? We got a we got a time zone difference too. Um, uh -huh. Jr. Apparently, when our time went forward last week, I guess he mm -hmm. didn't get the message. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, and I meant to ask him about that. This is so funny how different parts of the world do the daylight saving time. Even in this country, you got some states that don't do daylight saving. Do you guys True. do daylight savings yeah. time? We do. We do. You do? Okay, yeah. I'm we trying do. to remember. I know there's a couple of parts that don't participate. I don't know if that's just over in Alaska and Hawaii or what that is, but I know there's one or two states that don't participate. Uh, mm -hmm. Drop down in the chats. Uh, yeah, no, he's coming. Uh, Sissy, he's coming. We had a, a we had a, a little time mix management. So, you know, I sent the wrong link, first of all. I'm just be honest, okay? I sent him the wrong link, okay? That's my fault. And then when I sent them the correct link, apparently it's earlier there. Like they didn't do the daylight savings time over in the UK. So he's just, he's all like, you know, he was thinking he had another hour. And I'm saying, no, you got to come on and get in here. Get in here now. Come on. <laughs> yeah, because he's actually, JR actually had the notes. He was going to lead us in the, um, since we missed last week. Oh, and by the way, guys, let me just tell you what was what's going on. So. Oh, you know, YouTube and content creating is a lot of pressure and a lot of work, but in just your real life, uh, things don't stop, right? So I had um, been scheduled for a colonoscopy last week, and mm -hmm. it was for Monday. So, of course, on Sunday, I couldn't eat anything. I'm taking this nasty, god-awful liquid, you know, to cleanse my innards out, right? And... Um, mm -hmm. It's just it was just a mess, and then we had some mix up with, with our panelists. And long story short, I just had to cut and run and say, "Hey, we're not going to be able to do this uh, today because I was just too hangry. I was not in a good mood. I hadn't eaten anything, and I was really concerned about being on time to the hospital the the next morning. So I just went to bed early. That's what I did. I honest to God. But I will say I'm so glad I had it done. Um, they caught two polyps, and I'm going to find out um, uh, tomorrow or Tuesday whether or not they were benign, which I'm assuming, let's pray that, that they were. Um, but I, I just want to say, too, while we're here, maybe you guys don't want to hear about this, but I got to say, it's important to get those checkups. It's important, isn't it, mm -hmm. Sean? It is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. yes, it uh, is. You want to uh, get one body, that's it. Yep, that's get, it. And it, it got to last you. You're right. One body and it got to last you for the whole time you're here on earth, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, Miss Iffy is explaining too. Thank you for that. You know, it's a cultural uh, 
country thing, um, different countries. Ms. Ife is explaining that the clocks change on the last Sunday of March here in the UK. Oh, okay. Okay. That explains things too. We changed our dates or our, um, cause Sean, what did it used to be? Did it used to be the last Sunday in March? Cause you know, they just did that a couple of years ago. It, it wasn't ever this early before, like up until like, it was, it was ago. all, it was always the week before there he is. spring, spring equinox. I believe that's what it was. Uh, oh. for the spring equinox, something like that. Oh, if okay. I can remember Listen correctly. Yeah, mm -hmm. listen at the professor talking all formal, the, the spring equinox. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Hey, JR, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> hey, good evening, people. Hey. What's up, bro? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm cool. Obviously, like, uh, I didn't even know that the time difference had changed. So ours doesn't change till next week. Or oh. No, two weeks time. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was telling I, I was telling our, our chat family that's here and I appreciate all of them because listen, Sissy was saying what? No JR today? She like she about to back out, she about to leave out. No, he's here, he's here, sissy, he's here. <laughs> but yeah, I was telling her, I was explaining that A, I sent you the wrong link. My my bad. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. And then to top it off, like you said, there there's the whole thing of the time difference and I don't think I'm glad you just kind of went into your IG, your DM and checked to see that I had sent you the, the correct link and you were able to make it here on time. So thank you for that. Um, you want to go ahead and lead us uh, what we missed out on last week. I think you had some notes on that. Um, yeah, I can give a recap. Yeah, a give us a give us a quick recap. You know, he's good at this kind of stuff. Yeah, he does just, this. So. Yeah, like last week we had the first day of the retreat. Um, they had eliminated Dominique. Um, so first day of the retreat, you have Chaz already having three connections. And um, Vanessa kind of hoping that he was going to be choosing her and cut or at least cutting those connections down um mm -hmm. but he ended up adding one more and um beginning to feel the pressure and feel awkward uh because he was um he had too much on his plate mm -hmm. so he was sweating from last week um and then you also had um Laron calling a meeting, uh, basically <laughs> saying that um, any insecure or jealous behavior needed to be nipped in the bud. If you see your connection talking to someone else, <laughs> like, don't be mad, don't act away, you're not married or anything right. like that. So let them enjoy the process. So immediately you can see some people's faces begin to scrunch up. <laughs> Especially <Yeah>. Vanessa's. <laughs> uh, well, you know, like, who, who is he talking about me? You know, type stuff. <laughs> yeah, if he, if he said that and you felt like he was talking about you, probably was talking about you. Yeah, um, probably. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we also had... William uh, disclosed that he had, um, you know, a pro um, he's basically dealing with uh, a situation where his father fell ill or was unwell. So he had to also be nursing his father. Um, and sharing that, um, I think he shared that with Patrice. Um, she seems to be the listener, but ultimately the other ladies felt like that was too much for them to have in their lives at this moment in time. So that was kind of used as a reason to vote him off and send him home. Mm -hmm. Um, and you then had, 
a swing. Oh, but uh, yeah. So the, then you had the sleeping arrangements. Oh yeah, let's talk about that real quickly. What Where, about those sleeping arrangements? Yeah, like so. After everybody had claimed their room and everything like that, uh, we see Vanessa and Chaz sit down and have a conversation, and Vanessa basically saying um, that she doesn't think they should share a room together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he needs to be sleep by himself. But or, then, at least, or at least not with her. Not yeah, exactly. <laughs> at least not sleep with her. Um, but then she's expecting him to probably sleep by himself and not actually with any of his other connections. So when she walked in one of the rooms and sees Chaz on the bed with Mika, like just laying there, holding hands, talking, she quickly, uh, you know, away about it because I guess it's different when you're seeing your connection with his other connections mm. and she doesn't have anybody else like she hasn't been working the room to try and build connections for herself no she hasn't been not at all I so think... unfortunately um, yeah. mm-hmm. you know um, it's going to make her feel a way but Unless she goes and hangs out with other guys to try and get to know them, then she's always going to be at a disadvantage because he's got like free connections and it added Patrice to, to his collection as well. So, but yeah, so what, what were your thoughts about notes? last week? Um, yeah. I, I thought that the thing that stood out to me the most, like you pointed out, was uh, Laurent uh, talking about, uh, you know, bringing up these. Uh, the the group chat and the text in the group chat and and basically bringing up William's part in it and I think that was very uh, uh, shrewd of him that was a a tactic used to a strategy used to get rid of William so that he would have Maya all to himself what do you think yeah uh, it was definitely a way for him to get to Maya, I think in the week that we have seen the messages in the group chat actually being put out there by Will um, on another interview Mm -hmm. on my boy Kojo's channel. Okay, uh, yeah. He showed the screenshots and it looks like Laron had actually orchestrated Koshia being voted off and sent home. Ah. Mm. He was almost encouraging the other guys to vote her off because it was oh, between wow. her and Pika. And I get the impression he was salty over their interaction before she went, where they had that exchange at the table And she started crying and he got up and left and walked away uh, because he didn't like the fact that she had stopped messaging him and calling him or whatever. And she was now beginning to work the room and get to know the other guys. So because he felt away about that, it seems like he was then like, okay, you know what? I've got to get her out of here so I can get my real chance with Maya. And then that mm. also explains why he outed William for being right. a part of the group chat. Um, because Maya and William had a connection at the time. Mm-hmm. So one of the ways that he could interrupt that connection is <laughs> to throw William under the bus. Mm-hmm. It's part in the chat. But okay. also, like I said, mm-hmm. he admitted the fact that he actually orchestrated the conversations about the eliminations. Mm, so he did that intentionally. It sounds like, uh, wait a minute. So we got to talk about all that's good. But last thing we got to talk about before we move into this week. Uh, what about, did you hear about this thing about Vanessa and this voice message that was left on a, a, a voice message about her and Chaz? Yeah, I saw that. So well, basically, um, mm-hmm. 
it seems like uh, there, there has been a lot of speculation from some bloggers and commenters of the show that Chaz and Vanessa had been intimate, but there weren't any concrete, um, you know, proof of that happening. So you might be able to point to signs of, okay, um, she stayed behind at his house after everybody left, or she parked in his driveway where, you know, and wasn't really prompted or anything to do so as far as we saw. Mm -hmm. uh, so, she, you know, she must have been familiar with his house, at least, to have, be comfortable doing that. So there were a few signs. And then also... If you look at the fact that she's expecting him to cut his connections off and claim her connection and prioritize that, um, you know, we're, he's still in his process. But, yo, know, so uh, a few bloggers, commentators have surmised that something had happened. Anyway, she had come out and said, no, nothing's happened like that. They haven't. They haven't been uh, intimate like that or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, then Chaz then leaks a voice note mm -hmm. um, of Vanessa talking about their connection. Mm -hmm. and, um, hey there. Hey there, uh, Jay, from another round. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Um yeah. 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 I, I don't know. Like, I think I was telling you, it was you, I was telling Jay that um, when I see something on this show and it just not making sense, like I was thinking, why is Vanessa getting all upset about him holding hands or kissing on somebody? Like I can see, you know, you can be uncomfortable, but I felt like there was something else. And then it dawned on me, you know, I forgot my golden rule with this show. Whenever you see something that doesn't make sense, people going over the top with their reactions, it's because they've already, nine times out of ten, it's because they've already slept with the person. So, uh, of course, Vanessa's denying this on her, her YouTube channel, but uh, Vanessa, I think it's too late. We have already figured it out. What are your thoughts? We, we got to get you in here, too. Um, what are your thoughts, Sean? Any thoughts? Well, I, I'm going to say something that I know you and, you and JR probably uh uh, familiar with you know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm feeling? I'm from Palm Beach. You know what I'm saying? Oh, anyway. oh is that is that is that Will? Is that Will? I'm that's telling that's you, Will. you, yeah, because I couldn't watch that interview. I'm sorry. There are some people I, I found out. There are some no, people in real I'm, life. I'm, I'm, I'm from South media. Beach. I'm from, I'm South Beach. I'm from South Beach, Florida. I'm from South Beach, Florida. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, um, I, I, can't, I think I can't. To to back up a little bit. To back up a little bit. I. I one word that I heard last week's episode uh, that kind of stuck out to me that I was wondering why the word was used. And that word was why did LeBron use the word fiance when he talked about Koshia? Mm, I don't okay, know if you all, yeah. you, I don't know if you, I don't know if you all caught that or not. I, I, I did why, catch why it. Did he use the, why did he use the word fiance now mm -hmm. in the context of the dismissal from the show i i don't i don't know the context of what their relationship is or was or will be you know but i i caught that when he said that yeah 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 you know my, my fiance coach she is so 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 uh mm -hmm. I, I don't understand that uh but back forward to what you were saying i i think really uh, probably vanessa in, in conjecture vanessa may have given herself to chairs and you may have given herself two chances. <laughs> and, and she I was love feeling, the way you say it's so sweet. <laughs> uh, feeling betrayed. She was feeling betrayed. She was feeling betrayed. Uh, uh, and so, and because you know, they say, hey, look, you, 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 you would say, matter, of, matter of fact, we should just sleep in separate rooms. You know, you, we don't need to be in the same room. You know, and it was almost as if, like, okay, I'll let you make the decision. You know, because hey, you know. You, you don't seem to be too, too serious. Now, of course, mm -hmm. as we often say, you know, what we're doing is we are we, we're watching the edited version. We don't know the whole thing that went down. I don't know. But okay. um, I don't know whether it was something forced to get him and 
get him and uh, what's her name, uh, Mika together or what mm-hmm. have you, you know, just holding hands, uh, talking on the bed or what have you, you know, seem mighty comfortable, just seem mighty comfortable. But anyway, we'll let, we'll let the story speak for itself. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So, so with that, uh, what do you think, um, uh, Jay, you think, you think we're all caught up now from last week pretty much? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the events from last week definitely played a role in how this week panned out. Oh, absolutely. So it was very relevant to touch touch on them, right? Because mm-hmm. we're seeing the fallout from a lot of it now. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we, right. You know, those women don't want to sleep in bed with each other. You know, they don't want to sleep in bed with each other. You know, they want to, they feel like by the time we get to this portion of the, of the show, then, hey, look, I, I think I feel comfortable enough with you laying in bed beside me. Mm, Wes, calm down, calm down. You are, you are. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't put anything. You, I can't put anything that you got up on the screen. As, 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 as Jr. would say, uh, them yams, those yams, yams, okay? yeah. yeah, yeah, those yams. So I mean, I don't know. Like I said, she's over on her channel and uh, Mary Ten Years. Shout out to Mary Ten Years. She's over there saying, uh, leaving messages saying that. Apparently, her son walked into the room as she was watching uh, Mary Ten Years' uh, review of last week, and her son was shocked to hear that his mother might have been having hot and heavy time with somebody, so not his dad. But, (laughs) I mean, these people are divorced, and she's single now. She's uh, divorced and single, ready to mingle, so. Trying trying to come back to the other side, trying to come back to the other side now. Yeah, out. that's a whole nother story. I, I think I would really love to interview her about that because I got my thoughts about coming back to the other side and why she went over to the other side and why she don't stay. I, you know what? I, I'm going to say this, I, and I'm going to leave it alone because it's a whole race issue thing. I'm going to say this, Sean. 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 I'm going to say this. Yeah. I'm going to say this. This is my, my, my honest to God feeling when I think about the thing because I think about these things as I'm walking and you know, trying to you know get stronger and leaner and whatnot. I think about this. I think that like uh, Mary Ten Years said, uh, Vanessa could have stayed with her husband. Now, short of him uh, being abusive, being an Mm -hmm. addict of drugs or alcohol or Mm -hmm. some such thing like that, short of those type of serious situations, I think she probably could have stayed married to her husband. He had a job. He was working. You know, he was loving on her because this dating thing out here in 2024 is no joke. It is no joke. She could have stayed married to him. You know, at least you know mm-hmm. that's your son's father. You know what it, you know, you know that's the devil you do know. Cause it ain't nothing out here for you, sugar. I'm telling you, whether you look in, in on the Caucasian side or or the African American side, there's really not a lot out here for for, for women. There's not, mm. you know, yeah, in my but, opinion. You know, but unfortunately, social media has given the impression that there's certain things going on that may actually not be happening in real life and also um you know, I, i'm gonna tiptoe around this one because i realized <laughs> that there's a there's actually a large fan base for um vanessa out there and they defend her vehemently so i don't think it's any coincidence that you know um what I've are they to, defending what are, what are yeah, they defending the fact they're, that they're she defending, they're defending their queen um vanessa so all I'll say is, uh, I don't think it's any coincidence that you have um, people like myself, married ten years, Kamisha uh, reviews, you know, a few other people. It's no coincidence that uh, when we have said uh, certain things in commentary about what we we've observed on the show. Um, like they, like she has a fan base that's just started to come for people to to try and defend or protect her, right, or her image or her or whatever it is they got going on. But like we we all watch the same show, and we all see things differently, um, and we can, we're all watching the same thing. There's always different right. talking points, and different opinions. That's a good point. That's part, and that's that's been happening every single season, and it happens not only on Ready to Love, but every other similar show whether it's love is blind or any of the other ones mm-hmm. but, so people can make inferences or assumptions and things like that 
and give their opinions and they may not necessarily be fact or you know there may be other panelists or people that disagree unfortunately mm-hmm. that's the nature of the game so like what i'll say is if you were really concerned about what bloggers could potentially be saying about your connections that's something that should have been looked into like by watching some of the previous seasons yes in some of the previous interviews then you would have been more prepared for what happens when the show's aired and then it's out there for everybody to view and, and critique or, or watch or analyze right so if you didn't do that due diligence then that's unfortunate and then yeah. i'll also say just like don't be Mary, a clay don't be a clay from love is blind but go yeah ahead. listen i'll also <laughs> say because you do still get people saying oh, i never watched the show before i came on <laughs> Well, you know, that's really your fault because there's like nine seasons at least, you know, um, Mm -hmm. to to go back on. And if I'm sorry, but if somebody just said to you, you know what, Um, we want you to appear on the show or someone put you forward for the show. I'm sure you would want to know what the show's about before you go on it. So you would at least watch some um, of the previous episodes to see if it's something you could do. But um, evidently, there's still people that go into this blindly. And but yeah, yeah. The other thing I want to say is, um, you know, this isn't a kids' TV show. So mm-hmm. if you are watching it, and you know, you feel like, um, you know, you, it's gonna potentially have some commentary or some um, feedback on there that's gonna be for adult ears only, then you mm-hmm. watch it in a setting where there's only adults around you. Yeah, because this yeah. is a dating slash relationship show. And obviously, there's not much profanity on the show itself, but we're dealing with adult topics. So there is a likelihood that if your child comes into the room, they're going to be hearing stuff that is far beyond their age grade already. And mm-hmm. so you, you can't really be watching this around around children now. So I just put that out there um, because, unfortunately, if there are things that we see that differ from what other people see, it's not being negative. It's actually pointing out things that we, you know, from the, our perspective and the way we see it. Right. And you, and you say that. You... align with people who are out there butt kissing or trying to defend certain mm-hmm. things. They want to see someone in a certain light. They're entitled to do that as well. Yeah, but, you said you know, a mouthful. You you said a mouthful, and I think you're right. Like you you bring up a very good point. So between the three of us, we're all watching the same show. Sean may see something that I missed. Uh, he may see it a different way because his his life experiences are certainly different from mine. We're different genders. We live in different parts of the country. You live in a different part of the world yourself, Jay. And I'm a woman, so we're gonna see and pick up on different. Uh, nuances that the other person may miss or may just write off as not really being important. So I, I think my Geiger counter on the who's had the uh, personal relations is, is hardly ever wrong. So I, I say I say she did. I said they did. That's what I say. And then she can come on the channel and interview with me and, and tell me differently or prove me differently. I, I may be wrong, but I'd be willing to bet I'd be willing to bet a hundred dollars on it. I sure would. And then here's a here's the thing that's so telling though is that you know it's a it's a yes or no or is it a he said she said out of her own mouth as recorded and shared out with other uh YouTubers such as Kamisha Reviews go over and check it out the audio. There's actual audio of what sounds absolutely like Vanessa's voice saying what happened and saying how they've been playing with the producers and pretending like they're not seeing each other outside of the show. Did you did you hear those tapes, uh, um, J, JR? Yes, I definitely did hear those tapes. So again, like, what if, this, mm-hmm. so if you know, if it came from the horse's mouth. Right, she said it. That's right. not just me saying that. That's, I, that's her saying it, which to right. me, once I heard it, I said, oh, bingo, that makes perfect sense. That's what I'm always saying, like uh, with Zadia and Dante, when she went off and smushed him in his nose, I said, uh-oh, they've been, they've been hunching. The two of them right. been hunching. Now, the thing <laughs> is, like, that's, not even, that's not even what um, she came at me for, right? The reason why... why wait, 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 wait. Who came at you, Zadia or, or uh, Vanessa? 
<laughs> well, first I had uh, Vanessa's fan base, then I had Vanessa, right? So. Oh, okay. Do tell, uh, do tell the tea, uh, Jay. Yeah, hey. but, not even about tea, but basically they were defending her queen, their, their queen, right? Um, mm-hmm. But I wasn't even inferring that they'd actually been intimate. Like I don't know that. Uh, and if they have, they're adults. They they're grown. They can do. You know, if that's the level of connection they have, that's on them. It's not to do me. Um, but what my point was is, she like she is trying to get him to um, choose her, basically, like cut off the other connections and choose her. Mm. Now he is not ready to do that. Now, there could be a couple of reasons, i.e. he's not feeling her enough at this moment in time to solely um, focus on her. Um, Or um, he could also be saying, you know what, I'm going to wait to the bridge and that's when I'm going to make my decision. Or he could have, you know, other reasons. But ultimately, he's going through his process and if he has... um, got to a stage where he has three or four ladies interested in him and he wants to make sure he chooses the right person, then, you know, you have to allow, Vanessa has to allow him to to have his process. Just like if the roles were reversed and she had other connections, he Mm -hmm. can't say to her, you know what, listen, I want you to tell them guys it's time to go home because it's me, right? Yeah, if he did that's that, true. then I'd be true. saying the same thing. Like you're not allowing her to have her own process. Like you can't be mm-hmm. forcing her. Like, you can say, "Look, you're my number one." Um, and then if you, you, now you have to wait for the person to reciprocate that, and if right. they don't, then you right. have to wait patiently or move on. You know, there's some talk that um, uh, some 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 YouTubers are speculating whether or not Chaz, who is 47, is this has been this indecisiveness of his has been like a lifelong battle. So we'll, we're going to get into that, but we're going to go ahead and get started with the notes. So um, that is a very interesting uh, thing that what you're saying, JR. And uh, Sean, you just, you have the time laughing about all this hunching that's going on. Oh, wait a minute, let's see. La- last thing on this before we really get started. Uh, Chaz, maybe Chaz gave Vanessa an ultimatum Oh, oh Lord! Either she give up the goods. Now you sounded so childish in high school. It's just so the high school boy would say he's he's forty seven years old. Uh, either she give up the goods so that they could seal the deal, or he continues giving the other women some, some special attention. I like the way you said that special attention could be. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't see Chaz as. Um, having the level of lacking self-esteem to 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 really put it that way to a woman, I don't I don't see that. Um, what I suspect what happened is the same thing that happened with Koshia and Laron. Koshia and Laron had relations too, right? They had it early on, and then he got rid of her, right? Because basically, Laron has already told us that he doesn't want a woman with kids. And what does Koshia have? She has two kids, right? And she's been married before. So for him, that was just, you know, fun, hot and heavy time, maybe for her too. So you have these people that fizzle out because they run and they have relations really quick, don't even know each other. And then now they get back on the show and their feelings get hurt because the person they had hot and heavy time with is now eyeballing somebody else so that that could be the next person in the next notch on their belt. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, That's. That's what that's I'm called, seeing. That's called well. That could have something to do with what they call post nut clarity, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you know, someone might find you attractive. That like if a guy, um, sometimes it's the realization afterwards that okay, this connection isn't going where I want it to go, or it wasn't what I expected, or you know, um, I don't want to pursue this anymore. But again, I don't know whether Laron and and uh, Koshia did that. I'll, I'll go with your theory, but I don't know, right? But yeah, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, there you if that go, Mr. Because, like I said, they're adults. You know, like if they—that's the nature of their connection. Then that's cool. Like you know, then 
No one said you had to be celibate and be a virgin, and <laughs> that's not a condition on the show. Mm-mm. So no, it's not. Right. So if your connection is has a physical or sexual component to it and you explore it, you're grown enough to it's not your first ride on the rodeo, so to speak. Mm. So, so to speak. Yeah, like there's nothing wrong with it. But you know, if it's but I can understand why if you had done that, if you had taken your relationship or connection to that level, mm-hmm. then you've got Laron orchestrating you being voted off. Um, I can see why there would there would be some bad bad vibes about it, and I can also see why Laron would have felt away when she stopped calling and messaging, right? Because now yeah, because that is one of the things right. that right before she got before Koshia got voted off, we we found out from Laron that she hadn't been calling him, and then you know remember in the scene they showed him supposedly being upset that she was giving the other guys attention, right? Exactly. So right. and, uh, and then yeah. you know what's crazy? It's crazy mm-hmm. because then he's gone on a war path after she's been eliminated, trying to get rid of those that he felt contributed to her being eliminated. Yeah, kind of so, kind of duplicitous, right? That's why I say he, he's very shrewd and calculating. Right. Or it's very snake like behavior, right? Very mm. <laughs> so um yeah, so when in reference to uh, the people that still remain. Like, obviously, if you're going into a retreat where everything's all concentrated, you've got, like, Chaz with his... Chaz now has to entertain three or four women. And that's why he's feeling the pressure. So, yeah, if, if him and Vanessa have been intimate, that's their business. Mm-hmm. But, unfortunately, that doesn't mean that he's going to single you out as being the, the person that he wants to ride off after the show with. Right, right, right. Well, right. so we right. So we open up. Um, Vanessa is eliminating William, as you pointed out. Um, and Alonzo and Laron can now relax. Chaz says to the guys uh that he was worried. And do you even understand what Chaz is talking about? Like, why was he worried when he's got four women that are into him? Can you explain that, Sean? Well, I, I really don't. Um, I, I think my question was, uh, why did Tommy tell him last week? You know, I'm watching you. I, I I don't know what was in between oh, last yeah, week and when, this week. Of course, there's there's no well, break in between. You know, mm-hmm. when he said, "Ooh, I thought I was gonna be on," and he said, "Well, I'm watching you, Chaz. I'm watching you." You know, so I don't yeah, know whether I mean, it, hit, it sounds crazy though. They had been to the why principal's office on him. Yeah, I don't know if they had been to the principal's office on him or not. <laughs> Oh, okay. But, uh, got you. Got you. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But um, I don't yeah. know why he thought he would have been eliminated because, you know, if you look at it as a game, he's playing the game okay. Yeah. You know, if you look at it he's as a game. playing with real, uh, uh, what real have sportsmanship. You, um, mm-hmm. Real sportsmanship. Just like LeRon. I mean, LeRon. Yeah. Like I put in a comment earlier, you under you under under promise and minimal deliver. You know, you don't have to make any over promises. So therefore, don't expect anything. Just I'm just gonna under promise you, you know, mm-hmm. and minimal delivery. So I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. Point. I, I'm not going around telling you, I'm not going around and saying I'm not gonna be Mr. Copy and Paste like Mr. Corey Belene was in, in, in DC season and say, You're my number one, you're my number one, or be like Troy was in the Houston season. Kissing every woman on the cheek, you know. I'm not gonna be like those guys, you know. I'm just gonna minimally promise, you know. And hey, right, you know, minimal, whichever one, right. minimally. Yeah, but you know what? Like when she, like when she asked him, she said, "How does it feel to be the man with the box?" You know, you remember mm. that? Yeah, yeah and I he remember. Said, well, he yeah. said, "He said I can see a connection with all my connections after this process." And that was a safe, right. good answer. Yeah, he thing. also said yeah. he also said this week. He also, Chaz also said that he was attracted to ten out of the eleven women when there was only ten women. So, <laughs> Chaz, Chaz, you're a mess. <laughs> but I like Chaz. Chaz will come and jump in your chat, and he'll chat you up, and he'll let you know that he wasn't the only one had, having hot and heavy time this season. He wanted us to know that a lot of them grown folks was doing what grown folks do, and 
You know, you ain't got to remind me because, like I said, I can see it on the screen when when somebody's getting all bent out of shape over the littlest thing. I'm like, yep, she and her feelings mm-hmm. because what? She had relations with him. Or he had relations with her, however you want to say it. So, um, yeah. but anyway, uh, well, the oh, thing go is, ahead. go ahead, Jim. I, mm-hmm. I, I can I can kind of see why he felt like he could have been going home because oh, he knows okay. that the ladies are all talking and just like Sean mm-hmm. just said there's a danger that you're going to fall into the copy and paste cycle. Cause they did actually try it on this episode. You know, mm-hmm. I got a good morning message from him today. Oh, I got one too, girl. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. yeah. So that's the trap that, that, that's set, right? Right. Because, um, in order to entertain like three or like four different Justin women. took that to the women. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. Just, if you have to um, maintain connection with all these different women, you have to basically, have different conversations with them and mm-hmm. you know different um, interactions and stuff and you know when they go back into the lounges or they're conferring with each other because they've been you know they've made, built friendships now and alliances and stuff so mm-hmm. now you're going to be at the mercy of what they discuss with each other about you so i can see why he felt the pressure because he's like he said he may he's not used to dealing with three or four girls at one time and especially right. in a concentrated um setting like that where all eyes are going to be on him like the moment mm-hmm. he goes off and starts eating fruit from Rashina's bosoms and her lips there's going to be eyes watching him right thinking oh he never done that with me or you know oh i didn't know they were connected like that you know so he's going to be under constant pressure then he has to go and spend time with um say Vanessa and Vanessa's mm-hmm. going to be like, oh, it's 7 o'clock. How come you're only just now getting around to me? I want to know that, too. We, we're, jump, we're jumping ahead here. But I want to know that, too. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, Jay. I got to jump in. I wanted to know that, too. If Jay, mm-hmm. if uh, Vanessa was one of his top picks, or even if she was fourth in the line, when she said, when he said it was only 7 o'clock, I was like, wait a minute. It's 7 a.m. and they're already up and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. But then when she said, well, I've been up for 11 hours. Okay, so I'm like, now that means it's 7 p.m. And if you put me, you waited till 7 p.m. in the evening and we live in this house, we're sharing this house together and you didn't see me all day or could have seen me all day and you waited till 7 p.m. to acknowledge me, I got a problem. I got a problem whether I'm number one, two, three, or four, because it don't take no more than 20, 30 minutes or maybe an hour with each woman. You should have had everybody knocked out by noon. I'm sorry. What's, what's up yeah, with but that? Unfortunately, what we're seeing is Chaz is not a player. He's, he doesn't know how to do that. He's not here. <laughs> so this notion that he's some type of ladies' man, gallus, mm. player type dude, no, that's mm. why he's sweating buckets. He don't mm. know how to do it. This is new to him. So mm, uh, that dispels any theory about mm-hmm. him being a player. A player would have romanced and lyrics and got all these girls into a certain position where they know their role and they know their mm-hmm. time, and he's quite comfortable with it. This guy's been sweating for the last two weeks, uh, like so he's under pressure. He he ain't no player, that's for sure. And then the other thing is, um, unfortunately, if he has other connections. Um, then yeah, there's a chance that he won't be getting around to you till seven o'clock. Nah, o'clock. Well, and he, he could have ruled me out at that point. He right, and that's out. exactly where I was I going. I would have self eliminated because that's you're not going exactly to be where I was at going with it. If you yeah. sat there mm-hmm. with four or five other guys remaining, and you decided to cut all of them other guys off, yeah, and true. Focus on Kaz, true. Mm-hmm. Whereas he has three or four ladies, and he's still going through his process. That's on you. Because now mm-hmm. you've got no, nothing else to do except wait for him to come and give you some time when he's finished. Yeah, I'm not a twiddle. Right. twiddle so there's other office. guys you could have entertained, but because you cut them off, you got yeah, no one. that's right. That's true. And well, well right. now remember, so Dom, point, was, her other connection, yeah. Dom, Dom was sent home. So, you know, to be fair, but you're right, because she's been very snooty with all the other guys. She's exactly. been very snooty and very dismissive with every other man besides Dom and uh and Chaz, she's been very, right. very, and even like, Dom's connection. Up. A lot of people were saying, "Look, we haven't seen enough of this you connection." Where has the Caucasian, 
you should have stayed with the Caucasian guy, your husband. Well, may, maybe, maybe not. But the fact is, <laughs> people were saying, I'm saying it. I'm telling you, unless he was yeah. beating you, girl, hit well, you upside your head. That would you automatically eliminate her from him. contention with these guys because none of these guys are Caucasian. So no, no, no. I know, but I'm talking about her ex-husband. This is what. Yeah, I'm so am about. I. I'm saying if oh. that's who you know, if that's if that's someone that she wanted to stay with, she wouldn't mm-hmm. be on a show like Ready to Love because no, I, I there's disagree. an automatic. I disagree. As a woman different. who's dated outside my race, outside my race, outside my culture, I disagree. I think that there are some of us who are sapiosexuals that love people. And we don't look at the color of anybody's skin. Like Dr. Martin Luther King said, I don't judge people by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Uh, Some of us can look at men as equalizers. They're equal. So if you have good character, that's the only thing that brings you up above the average man. And then there's the subpar man, right? But it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Nothing at all. No, but what you've done is you've narrowed it down to one person named Chaz having the character that you associate with and you've okay. been snooty as you rightly say and eliminated all the other guys from contention so therefore your picker is off because you you're not really <laughs> you're not really open to meeting the other guys and investing yeah. time in getting to know them yeah. so that's again um, mm. a self-inflicted wound that isn't Chaz's yeah. fault in a situation okay. yeah, yeah that's true so, yeah, I, I agree you don't have to restrict yourself to one ethnicity that's crazy but that what I'm saying me. is, if you've already come in and said, oh, well, I like this Chaz guy, you know what, I'm not interested in no other guys, so early in the process, then the, the consequence of that is, yeah, there's a kind when of he's right? still got more connections that he's trying to fill out to decide whether he's, because he said consistently, <laughs> he wants to make sure he's yeah. the right person. He didn't come on the show mm-hmm. to, to be back single again. He's making sure he chooses carefully. He said that early on. So mm-hmm. he, he clearly has decided that Vanessa isn't the one yet. Um, and right. he still to examine the other connections he has, which are different. Maybe I'm there gonna... isn't a sapiosexual relationship going on there. But with Rashina, there's more something physical where they can eat grapes and mm. melon on each other. Yeah, because do you remember two <laughs> weeks ago when he was in the chat? He told us that his connection with Rashina was a exactly. genuine connection. He told us exactly. that. Exactly. So why would he say that if he was completely invested in Vanessa the same way she's invested mm. in him? So that's the, that's an assumption that she made. So mm, um, Yeah, to her detriment. Like, so Patrice has been the one where, you know, a lot of the guys have been able to speak to and be more personable, vulnerable with. So that may be their connection. So I'm saying he's got different connections with the different ladies and he has to be careful uh, because, you know, he now has to examine which lady he goes for, which which element of the connection is worth pursuing and cutting off the others for. But he's not at that stage yet, and he's clearly uncomfortable with it. I think he's so, uncomfortable, but here's what I'm going to say. Here's where we differ, okay? So you got your opinion, and, and, and mm-hmm. I, I respect it. But here's where we differ. Here's where we, where we diverge. I, a lot of what you're saying, I definitely agree with. But here's where we differ. I think that Chaz is this guy that doesn't make executive decisions as it relates to his dating life. I think that this guy at 47, never been married. Now, I know he tells us the story of there was a a woman in his life, I think maybe his ex-fiance or former fiance, who was carrying his child and unfortunately had a uh, mishap, unfortunately. So, um, and that's sad. I, I, I do, I do, you know give my condolences for that loss because I think that's a very difficult thing. And every time I carried my children, I was always praying to the Lord that please Lord, don't let anything happen to them. Right. So Uh that's very serious. But at the same time, I think that was over 20 years ago too, 20, Uh 15, 20 years ago. So my thing is, and I tell um, widowed people, this men particularly that want to get out here and jump out here and start dating like, you know, they're widowed. They've been widowed for two, three, four, five years. They get out here and they want to start dating, but then they want to hold back their emotions, their feelings, their vulnerability. Because why? Because they want to lean on that uh, crutch of, well, I'm a widowed man. I'm widowed. I say, well, who gives a damn? That's what I say. Really? Who gives a damn? Because the moment you enter the dating market pool, 
that's the moment you should be available and know what you're getting into. Just like we always say about the people that go on this show, like you were saying so uh, eloquently, JR, JR, that these people that come on the show, they should have some idea of what they're getting into, right? I say that these men that come out here in the world, they've been widowed, they lost a wife to death. Sorry, my condolences. But the moment you say, I'm going to start dating, know what you're doing. Sit down and think about it. Talk about it with a, a, a wise older friend, maybe someone that you know that is widowed, that has went through widowhood and made it to the other side where they crossed and they had a healthy relationship. They remarried because... Um, these things do happen. Like, you know, I was on IG the other day and there's uh, Bobby Brown and his new wife, which she's not so new. Apparently, I think they've been together like 15 years. And there were people in the comments section that was like, well, where's Whitney? We, we only like you with Whitney. Well, guess what? You don't have the right to control somebody because their wife uh, divorced them or passed away. And you're sitting up looking at 20 years ago when he was with Whitney Houston. This man is living and breathing. And unfortunately, Whitney is in another plane on another you know, mm -hmm. in heaven, wherever. She's not here on this plane of earth, right? So I'm very yeah. much a person that believes in living for today. And you don't have to sit there and miss out on love because what? Because somebody died and you, no, no. Mm -mm. Well, well, you know what, Aubrey? Um, I think that, um, I mean, you know, it, it, could, it could go either way. I, I understand what you're saying because only you know when it's time for you to get back out in the water if you want to get back in the water and swim, you know? Mm -hmm. right. Um, I mean, if you remember a few seasons ago, people were saying that AP was not ready, you know, on the DC season, you know. Oh, and yeah, yeah, lost, yeah. Yeah. She, you know, well, she had just lost her husband, you know. And, and she and I talk every now and then. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. she and I talk every now and then. But, you know, mm -hmm. you still see, see that she's still in love with the memory of her husband. What have you? Now, yes. I, I don't know. I can, yes. I'm not going to pass judgment on her whether she's ready to. No. Love or whether the next guy, the next guy will be in having big shoes to fill because her husband was so good to her, you know. Um, it's just that, you know, when you love and loss either through death versus divorce, you know, I think mm -hmm. divorce is a different type of quote unquote death than death is. You know, death mm -hmm. is finality, but I've known people to become better friends after divorce versus when you when the coffin is lowered into the ground. That's almost like the finale. I mean, there's no coming back from that, you know. Right, so, right. I, I, mean, I it's, agree. It's, I understand that there's two different types of grief with yeah. with the divorce and with with the death. Yeah. Well, but you'd be surprised, to your mm -hmm. point, you'd be surprised at people that have been divorced, men or women, that sometimes mm -hmm. maybe because of that they feel so grieve, grieved by by that divorce because they wanted to be married forever to this person, right? But for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it didn't work. So there's a lot of grief there where people they don't want to ever marry again. They may go out and date, but they have determined that I'm never going to marry again because I never want to go through that experience of divorce. I'm divorced. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you that when you go through a divorce, it is one of the most painful things next to death that you will ever experience. Because why? Uh, for us as believers, and you could probably maybe relate to this a little bit, Sean, being divorced from your spouse, it is the tearing of a spirit. So when you joined together as husband and wife, you became one, right? And mm -hmm. God blessed you and blessed your union for you to grow as one. And for whatever mm -hmm. reason uh, that you had to get a divorce, now there is a tearing of your whole entire spirit and psyche. It is very, very painful. Trust me, I, I know. Okay? It is. Right. And, and you know what? It you is. brought up something very relevant. Vanessa stated that she doesn't want to get married again. And that's mm -hmm. because she went through a divorce. Chaz yeah. is saying he wants to find his wife and kind of settle down, right? So that's who right. he's looking for. That's his process. He's looking for a wife. Vanessa is looking for someone to be with, but without getting married. Ah, you're right. She still, did say that yeah. a couple episodes right. ago. She's still right. in that position where she's scarred by whatever marriage, whatever happened in their divorce or whatever, or mm -hmm. the reasons mm -hmm. what led up to the divorce. And she doesn't want to go through that type of experience or trauma again, mm -hmm. right? So that's another reason why they're not aligned. They're not even connected. They don't even have the same outlook on what they're expecting from a relationship, mm -hmm. right? So, right. Um, and then with Chaz as well, 
like unfortunately he him adding more connections was a very dumb move because you already can't cope with the three you have and that to me shows that he has not decided on which lady he wants to be with at the end like so he's he may be giving them a little bit like giving them the carrot but ultimately he has not got the tunnel vision or the attraction level to any one of these ladies to say you know what I'm you're the one that I'm looking for he's not like Laron where Laron's seen Maya and said you know what me and you could do this me and you can be husband and wife me and you could like Chaz is not doing that Laron's talking that type of game right Chaz mm -hmm. is saying look like I want to get to know these ladies I want to all this other stuff. Now it's at the it's the it's the show. It's the process. There is no reason, technically, why at this point he has to have one connection only. Mm -hmm. It's not that's a p other people's expectation because they're saying, "Oh, well, I wouldn't put up with it." Or, but know, so how do you I, get from to to? I hate yeah, to interrupt you, but but J J R, real real um briefly how do you think a person gets to narrowing it down from well we were at three before the retreat you added he added on one that was his choice and his decision right as a grown man yeah. mm -hmm. okay so how does he if he says he wants to be married how does he reconcile that and how does he get down to the one at well, least it's quite simple. For women. It's, that to me is quite simple patrice mm -hmm. is the only lady that allowed him to be vulnerable. When you look at his other connections, ah. and this has been putting him under pressure, choose me. I went, you know, um, not not being hostile with it, but she's saying, you know, you could have spent time with me, but you're cho you choosing to spend time with other ladies type stuff. Roshina mm. is, say, you know, based on them oh, eating I the see food. all of her feelings. She right. making me wonder. She making me wonder what we just said about the hot and heavy thing. But I don't. Right. I don't think exactly. her it is. Too I think much. she just kind of got into her ego. Like, dude, like you know, you you need. You should have told me. You should have talked to me. Right. right now he ain't trying to choose Rashina or Vanessa, evidently, because he would have chosen mm. her. Right. So that's. But um, oh, and then so Mika. Mika the only liked him for a physical. Mika was talking about how his back's big and he looks like he works out and this that. <laughs> Right? Okay, yeah. Now, the only lady that has shown like a, a, a softer, sensitive side to allow him to be vulnerable and uh, Alonzo as well is Patrice. Yeah. So she offers a different dimension that he doesn't have with the other ladies. So that's why he was able to add that connection because their little sit down last week where she was like, you know, um, I gave you my number and you didn't call me and he didn't even save the number because he probably wasn't feeling it like that. Um, but then their yeah. conversation, that vulnerability that happened, that's when he was like, OK, maybe I, uh, you know, maybe I should give this a, a, a further investigation as well. So. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, the task this week on the show was what? What was the task on the show? What did Tommy Trust. Say that these guys should do trust and vulnerability. Trust and vulnerability, and vulnerability. I believe. Exactly, Mundo. So, guess who automatically doesn't fit that bill for Chaz? Yeah. yeah. The and other three connections, other yeah. than Patrice. Yeah, I, and I think that 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 was very, that's very interesting what you say, Jr. Because um, I, wasn't that Patrice that went up and said, "Can I pray with you?" You know, she asked him, "Can she uh, pray with him?" You know. Yeah. That, um, that was deep. I was like, "Wow, okay." You know, see if a guy I, I, said that to me, I would get, I would, I would get excited. <laughs> oh yeah. See, so, so I mean, I think, I think with her hearing him, it felt like a sense of respect to him because most, of me, at the end of the day, most of us as men, we, our first primary need is not love. Our first primary need is respect. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and we want to be heard. We don't want to be overtalked. We want to just be heard. You know, and if a man can share what's in his heart with a woman, then uh you you that's a special place because most of us as men we're taught to be we grow up being guarded you know right. um but if a man has a soft space and that and i think what i can see is the dynamic uh i don't know if chaz is trying to play the field i'm not gonna put that on him but i think he sees a little bit of 
a dynamic in each woman and tries to put them all into one woman. If I could build a woman, I'll take this dynamic from Vanessa. I'll take this dynamic from Patrice. I'll take this dynamic from Rashina. And I will take this dynamic from Mika. So I, I think that's the dynamic of it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what have you. Uh, now, how it turns out in the end, I don't know, because the idea is that, you know, you can only leave with one person. So uh -huh. uh, what have you. Um, but I think that that put a special place in his heart. Patrice, when she she went into his room, you know, not on the door and went his room. I mean, you, you, I don't know whether he was pretending or not, but it sounded like he was crying, you know, and she said, well, mm -hmm. can I pray with you? Can I pray with you? You know, mm -hmm. and she she heard that, what have you, how it was, and uh, she she said, "Can I pray?" Exactly. With you? So, and I and I think that that was a that 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 was endearing to him, something exactly. that Vanessa probably Vanessa probably never offered. Exactly, you know? she didn't. That's why so, they didn't. That's why that's why Chaz didn't go and pray with Vanessa because it wasn't even out there for yeah. him to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. You guys both so, are on to so very I'm glad point. I'm glad yeah. Sean said that because this is the thing. Like men and women see things differently and we have different experiences in relationships. Mm -hmm. And like Sean yes. said, like if we're able to be vulnerable and open with a lady, that goes so much further and deeper than maybe some women realize, right? At that mm -hmm. point, it's not about the physical, it's not about the sexual, it's mm -hmm. not about um, you know, um whether we have lifestyle compatibility or anything you've allowed mm -hmm. us to have a safe space in you where we can confide and then what we if we do let those guard that that guard down and those walls down the last thing you can do is weaponize it or weaponize go and it. jeopardize it. what we share oh, that 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 is that is a that is a no go in any relationship That's be right. right so what are the ladies friends. doing on this season they're what, talking. What, you think, mm -hmm. what we've seen is we've seen William share things about his father. He got voted mm -hmm. off, right? That was vulnerable for him to share that. Yeah, he was. Right? He was vulnerable. Voted off, right? You've had um, who else shared? Uh, I think you had. I'm going so far back now. Um, uh, you had Will share that mm -hmm. you know he was between jobs and he had to sleep on a mattress or whatever he had to do because he didn't want to face a four or five hour drive that vulnerability of what was going on had that got weaponized and he got voted off so that you you have to be mindful of how these ladies are moving with certain information and if you have someone like patrice who's always an opening an always an open heart or a listening ear then she's going to attract mm -hmm. guys just purely for being that that type of person that you can have that connection with. Well, yeah, well you know, to, to add on to what JR was saying, I think mm -hmm. with that dynamic, with that dynamic, I think that, um, I think mixing last week and this week, I think that Vanessa was speaking for herself, you know, when they were talking about who to eliminate, you know, when they bought Alonzo, Alonzo, William mm -hmm. and, and, and Laurent up, and she said, well, William, some of the women feel like, you know, you're vulnerable. They just cannot deal with. You know, oh, yeah. I, I caught and, that. I caught and that, and too. I, and I, and I think I that, that was the wrong, that was the wrong thing to tell him, man. This man had been open like that and tell you what was yeah. on his heart. Uh -huh. That was something That's wrong. Cool. That was something wrong to tell that man. So that man will That's probably cool. forever go in his shell. He'll probably forever mm -hmm. go in his shell. That'd be mm -hmm. the last time I say something like this, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, that was rough. I mean, he wanted to be heard in that moment. I mean, because mm -hmm. you, could, you could look at him and he was not. He was not. He was not playing for the camera. He was no. not trying to be seen on TV. Trying to be trying to be Superman and all that macho man. But no, he was not. talking about how it was literally breaking him down. Trying to be there for his father and his family. So, especially when you have a man. I mean, I can understand. Most women can understand a man's affinity towards his mother, but a man's affinity toward his father. Mm -hmm. This is something a different dynamic. You know, right. uh, that, 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 that's very interesting. And, and I think, and I think that that was weaponized against him. You know, yeah. she should have said something else if he was going to be eliminated. I think, you know, I don't know oh, if they give them a prepared speech or what to say. Came out the bushes. Oh, oh, there's <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so next to me at the top and, and to my right is uh, Sean A. Stokes. 
Uh, hey, that's my brother. That's my brother there. Hey, Chad. Yeah, doing? okay. Yeah. That, that's Sean. And he's there in Dallas uh, where, where you guys. And then over yeah. here down the beneath me, underneath me is JR. He's from the UK. And I think you yeah. heard him talking the last time you were in our chat a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. So, which part did they nail? Because Chaz is saying you guys just nailed it uh, regarding uh, something. Are, are you saying the sensitivity or the being vulnerable part? Because that was vulnerable. Just praying with the man. Just praying with the man. Offering to pray with the man, probably. Right, right. But I'm saying, but that was a part of her being sensitive, showing that she's trustworthy, possibly, and that she is okay with the man being vulnerable. And this is something like. Uh, JR and I talked about this earlier in, in the week. We talked about this. I was saying to him that I do respect that we as women, I, I'm seeing it in a lot of our the different um, reality shows like Love is Blind, uh, Married at First Sight, particularly with Married at First Sight, for example. Let's talk about that real briefly this season. The women have, uh, on, on this season of Denver, the women have weaponized the men's... Um, when they're vulnerable, they weaponize that against these guys. And I don't think that's right. And I think that as a woman, I feel like um, I can see myself sometimes in some of the things that I do because your condition as a woman, sometimes growing up in society, okay, so you have certain social norms. And one of the things that we, that I grew up with at the time I was growing up is that, you know, men don't cry. Uh, but men do cry, yeah. right? It took me a minute. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that like I, I didn't realize that, but I, how I caught that was like when my son was young, you know, I don't know, seven or eight, something happened and he's crying. And I told him something that I had heard other people say, other mothers say to their sons, you know, boys don't cry. And as soon as I mm -hmm. said it, I, I knew I said the wrong thing. And I, I sat down and I told him, I said, you know what? Mommy's wrong. Mommy's wrong because boys and men do cry because you guys have feelings too. And so we as women, we have to create a safe space for our man. If we're not going to have a safe space for our man, then we can't really expect, how will we expect a man to fully fall in love with us? Because that's what love is, is being able to trust your partner. They got your back. They don't take the things that you say, weaponize it, use it and hit you upside the head with it. Go tell other people what you said, your most intimate personal secrets. That's a problem. That's a real problem. Guys, it sure is. It sure okay. is because, unfortunately, um, I you know this is a very important thing to to acknowledge. Like men have feelings too, and what we've seen is we like, and I'll, I'll just break it down. Um, when I'm watching uh, these last two episodes in particular, where I'm seeing Chaz say, "You know what? I can't take this no more," or "I'm struggling," or "I'm under pressure," right? Um, you know, that's not him. I don't think he's faking that. I think he literally is a fish out of water, water in this situation. And uh, this notion that men must be strong and silent. Right. You know, um, you know, men don't cry. Like, men aren't emotional. No, we are, but we have to do it in a different way. Right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if we are too emotional or too vulnerable, then that can also be a sign of weakness that repels the women that that were attracted to us initially because they see us as soft or, you know, we're not able to deal with pressure and things like that. So there's a balance that we have to, uh, you know, we have to have. And then again, like I said, if the person that says they care about you weaponizes your moments of vulnerability, then that person is not meant to be with you. They've automatically eliminated themselves from contention in my opinion because part of being in a relationship is you share and confide in each other and you're supposed to build each other up um, and you know console each other and try and be each other's strength at the end of the day when you come home from work and all of that stuff you're supposed to be trying to create memories not weaponizing things that the person shared with you last week or how you know trying to score cheap points and things like that, that's going to lead to the demise of the, the relationship and the trust element in a relationship. So if I can't come home and talk to you as my girl or my partner because you weaponize stuff, then now you're putting me in a position where 
I've got to have other people that I confide in when you should have been the one, but you mishandled what I said to you. That's what I'm saying. So it's a real uh, clear and present danger to relationships these days because, like I said, in this sit- in this setting, the ladies are friends. They've been around each other for the last eight, eight nine weeks or however long, maybe. Right. So the moment one of them has an experience with one of the guys guess what? It goes back into the lounge or there's a phone call later about it. Yeah, you know what? I went on a, a, a bungee date or I went on a, a jet ski. Oh, oh, you know what? He did that with you? Oh, we did it. you know, so they're always talking and having conversations. But yeah, if you're sharing stuff like with, with what uh, William said, you know, about his father being poorly and, you know, oh, uh, you know what? Well, that's just too much for me. No. You know, like he volunteered that information because it's something he was struggling with. He didn't have to share it. To be honest, it's nothing to do with the process, to be honest. But he felt like, you know, he could open up to Patrice about what was happening. And the other ladies were like, yeah, you know what? Well, combined with everything else you got going on, yeah, I'm not, I ain't dealing with all of that. So you got to go home now. So, you know, like, unfortunately, you have to be a well, safe space for each other. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get because that builds your connection. How are you going to have a connection with someone when the first thing you do is you go and compare notes or you're going and taking information that you've learned from that person and using it against them in the lounges? Right. Well, you know, Aubrey, well, you know, Aubrey, I think that, um, I mean, just to gently, I believe, correct a, a remark that was just made, um, Miss Iffy, I don't think Chaz had baggages. I, I think when we see a man who has vulnerability, that it is not expected of us as men to expose that vulnerability, um, because we we are sometimes men uh, seen as having to always have an answer, having to always have it together, having to always be Johnny on the spot for everyone and everything else. And, and when we see a man who and we 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 feel like men don't have the word overwhelm in our vocabulary, we think that's the quote unquote punk way out. You know, hey, you know, you let you leave, you a man, you, you you should be able to handle this. You should be able to handle this. And a lot of stuff get thrown gets thrown at a man, you know. Uh, like I said, we only see one hour what's filmed in hours, you know, and we don't know the extreme pressure that he may be under. I'm not trying to defend him or nothing like that, but I'm just talking about in the context of the show and in life as general. You know, I, as a man, I have my pressures as well. You know, I'm sure right. Jr. is a man, he has he has his pressures. You know, so th- there's a lot of pressure of being manhood, um, you know, mm-hmm. because, you know, we, 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 are, we are up against this whole culture of things, what we call, quote unquote, toxic masculin- masculinity nowadays, you know, and what mm-hmm. that looks like. Uh, um, okay. And so yeah, I, right. I think that when and, and that, that that the myth of, of, of a particular black man is that we must be always Superman and that we must be always overly sexual. We must be always feel like, you know, we're either the thug or the, yep. the third or yep. the very rarely the gentleman. It's black, black men. Yeah, it's black men. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, uh, um, yeah, a player. Yeah, a player. That that because we're hypersexual as black men. That's what the stereotype is about us. That you know, we yeah. don't have any touch with our friends, but we're just hypersexual. You know, we, we just do and do and do, lay and play and just you know, down and dash. That's it. You know, and so mm-hmm. I, I you know uh, there's dad. a good book that was written years ago by Dash. Uh, it was a good book by uh, J. A. Rogers years ago called uh, "From Man to Super," the myth from man to Superman, you know, oh, wow. and that you know that that basically looking at that the, the lens, the way the black man has been viewed, you know, that black man has been viewed as Superman. You always got it together, but deep inside, most of us are just Clark Kent, you know, uh, <laughs> you know. Mm, okay, I get, I get we're it. Just, I get we're just it. Clark Kent. Yeah. We're just Clark Kent, you know. Uh, yeah, you we're not know. able to leap over tall buildings in a single bound. We're not. Right. You, you're right. You know, and something that to your point, Sean, I grew up with a phenomenal, I mean, absolutely, positively phenomenal father in my life from day one till when he passed away. Very involved, very active mm-hmm. and gave me a lot of his wisdom, gave me the benefit of uh, his wisdom and his years here on earth before I was born. Uh, but one of the things I realized um, as a young woman was I had to get out of the habit of comparing 
the men that I was dating to your father, Mm -hmm. to my father. Yeah. Because like I said, he was so tremendous and he stood out in my eyes as being like a one, like, you know, this, this is the man right here, right here. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the, the prototype. Uh, because Mm -hmm. one thing that my dad did that, um, and Lord rest his soul. But one thing that he did that I recognize, it took me a long time to recognize this, that is not healthy for me personally. It worked for my mom. They had a great marriage and a great relationship. But for me, and I think it's it's kind of a generational thing, right? Because things change as people, we enter into different generations, right? Um, one of the things, my daddy was very stoic, you know, because that's the mm-hmm. way he was raised. He was a military man. He was very mm-hmm. stoic. And he didn't do a lot of expressing of his emotions and his feelings. Like I knew he loved me and he told me he loved me, but it wasn't something where he was overboard with this type of thing. Like I can remember two times I've ever seen, I ever saw my father cry. One was when his brother passed away from cancer. And the other time was when he found out that he had cancer and it was terminal. Those are the only two times I can Mm -hmm. recall my father ever crying. So that was my model for a man for a long time. And then it took me, that to recognize that's really not who's going to probably make me happy as a woman because I need a man that's going to be able to share with me how he really feels and I'm not saying that my dad didn't necessarily share with my mother because what went on behind closed doors between those two I'll never really know fully right Mm -hmm. um but but I needed something different so I think for us as as we move forward as men and women a lot of times we have to recognize what is our faulty thinking in relationships that gets us into trouble uh or th- where things don't work out like are we thinking well, of this person should yeah. be like my mother or my father yeah. go go ahead sean go ahead we do we do we do feel those, those dynamics that they should be like one of our parents you know uh and we use that as a benchmark you know if, if this guy can't treat me like my dad treated me then hey he's no good you know uh and it's kind of like an unfair advantage to this man because he is not your daddy you know and your dad is not he and of course, the different is a different day and time. No, nevertheless, there should be a, uh, a degree of respect there that he should respect you as a woman. And you should respect him as a man. However, right. I mean, just like just just to share personally in my life, you know, I mean, I grew up in a two parent home, uh, what have you. And I, I know my, my parents had hot and heavy time because I'm here. But <laughs> but yeah, was, you are. Was, was was there any was there any uh, romance? No, <laughs> never no romance in my household, you know. So oh, how right, did I that, have to... that you saw, that you saw, phys- that you yeah, actually saw. That I saw. I mean, I mean, I never saw my mom. I never saw my mom and dad really hold hands or nothing like that, and go on date nights or nothing the other like that. Thing. You know, you're right. But it was expected. And my dad, because he got it from his dad. My dad went get up, went to work every day. You know, he provided for us. We never yep. saw a hungry day. We always had a roof over our head and all of that. And, you know, my, like my, you know, for those who don't know, my dad was a preacher. He was a pastor. You know, so, you know, he believed in the scripture. First Timothy 5 and 8. If a man provides not for his own household, he's worse than an infidel. So my dad sometimes worked two jobs, you know, and what have you. But he took care of his family, what have you. But the romance wow, side, that, that's I, romance didn't, I didn't see it. Didn't see it, you know. I, I'm sure they, they did some things that my sister and I did not know about, you know. What have you, but we did not see that. And so we had to navigate things in life sometimes with a yeah. blindfold on how do we navigate through life? How do we learn? How do we learn that from our friends? Sometimes we yeah. learn it from looking at other ideal couples or what have you. And it's just it, this whole thing called life doesn't come with roadmap. It, it doesn't. doesn't. Come with a roadmap. It do- well, yeah, you know, so it, it doesn't. You, yeah. It doesn't, but the one we know of, the one, the one that we know of is yeah, that's right. B-I-B-L-E. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basic basic instruction instruction before before leaving leaving Earth. Earth. Yeah. (laughs) So if you get into that B I B L E, you know, check it out. Check it out. That B I B L E. That B I B L E. I'm telling you. And if you don't do this, go go through Proverbs. Go through Proverbs for your wisdom. Ask God for wisdom to give you discernment in who you're dating, who people are. Because I'm going to tell you something, a true story, real quick. Um, Years ago, when I was dating, I had asked God for this wisdom and this discernment because I kept running into this certain type of guy. And I was like, oh my God, this guy is trash. He is complete trash. Now he, on the outside, 
uh, or even intellectually, he was my guy. Because my guys, I always tell you guys, I'm into sap sapiosexual. I'm into a man that's highly intelligent, highly. I mean, like, he's got to be able to teach me stuff that I don't know. And I think I have a good grasp on a lot of stuff. But anyway, so I asked God for this discernment. I'm going to tell you what happened. This is literally what happened. I was in the club. I was in the nightclub. I'm in the, you know, the club, right? And every time I looked over at a man, I would see a W on, on some the ones that I was attracted to. I would see a W on their forehead. Now, okay. those of you that know me, you know what that W stands for, right? Um, oh, okay. Kind of loosey, loosey goosey, <laughs> as I, I say on the uh, Married at First Time, right? Uh, <laughs> a guy that um, it, he kind of gets around, right? So I would see this He's a W on the He's a Lothario. Th yeah. Yeah, Lothario. Yeah, you know, and they come over and try to talk to me, and I'm like, I'm looking at that W on their forehead, and they don't know what I'm looking at. I'm just laughing. I'm looking up at his forehead, and God has written this W like, stay away from this one. He's a total, you know what, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, ask God for discernment because it's really, He really will give it to you if you believe in God. If you don't, if you don't know, even if you don't know if you believe, ask him and see what will happen in your life because he will show you. He will really show you. So um Well, but, you know um, what? Not to make not to make light of that, but the moment you mm -hmm. stepped into the club, most of the guys would have had that W on there because that's mm -hmm. if you're looking for a serious relationship, you ain't gonna find it in that club. You, you, yes and no. I, I, I agree with you to an extent because you're right. Like you think of, we think of, let's see, that's a kind of a stereotype. You think of certain types in a nightclub, right? Yep. But when I was younger, okay, so we're going back some years now. Uh, when I was younger, that was your place. So like you guys now, you guys have, you have social media, right? You got Tinder, you got uh, plenty of fish and all the other uh, online virtual look up look around and swipe right swipe left or whatever that thing is right but when i was a young woman you had the nightclubs you had the nightclubs you had church and you know you had work and school this is how you meet people right but my point is i could see that i'm, I'm yeah. using an example of the club but I would also see it in my everyday life i just use the club because you're right maybe they're they're actually more is more compressed. There are more singles in a club, or maybe hopefully singles. Because I would, I'm not, I literally would run into guys sometimes at the nightclub, sitting at going to the bar to get my drink, and a guy would offer to buy me a drink, and I'm looking at his hand. He's got his wedding band on, and he would tell me, he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm married, but you know, I'm just looking for a situation ship, basically." Good time. I'm like, You're what? For a good time only. That's what. That's what. Yeah. Now, uh, hey, I'm not here for a long time. I'm just here for a, a good time. I'm like, what? Exactly. Are you serious? Like. You know, so you you run it too, but 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 my point is is that to really have that discernment um, is is a whole nother level. And then the other thing is is that I would just say to uh, young women, middle aged women, older women like myself, mature women, seasoned women, as I like to call myself, is that it's really not necessary to be out here giving your body away to every Tom, Dick, and Harry because. As Jr. pointed out, everything comes with consequences, and I feel like when we've, as a society, made uh, hot and heavy time so casual, the consequences that come with that is a broken world that we're living in right now, where you have a lot of children born out of wedlock, where mm -hmm. you have people that have permanent diseases that they can't even get rid of. Uh, it, it's a lot that comes with that casual. It's not so casual after all. So just something to think about. Um, yeah, Sissy says what? Clubs were much different back then. Exactly, Sissy. Like, I have several friends, um, a few friends. I won't say several. I have f a few friends that have met their husbands in clubs, married them, still happily married. So clubs back then weren't, I mean, you, you had all types. You're you're just as likely to see like I can remember being in a club and I would see my my high school teachers in the club. So you know you had working professionals, you had judges, you had lawyers, attorneys, doctors. Everybody was up in the club. One of the wealthiest men that I've ever met in my life, I met him in a at a club. Um, he was so wealthy at the time. He bought a house um, in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, which is like one of the most affluent suburbs in, in in pretty much the whole country it's certainly in michigan but but it is one of the um highest per capita of all of the united states right and this guy had a house 
And where he lived at, it was a private drive. And the only six other houses that lived there were all captains of industry, General Motors, Chrysler, Ford Motor Company, and so on. I mean, like you didn't live there unless you were a CEO. This guy happened to be a doctor. But anyway, mm-hmm. but I'm telling you, you can meet some good classy people in the club. You just had to keep your eyes open, your ears open and and really talk and ask the right questions. So I'm not I can't discount the club for back in the day. Now, I don't know what that club looking like now. It's probably looking crazy, cray cray. What What's the club looking like, you guys, if you're in the chat? What well, is the club it. looking like? Well, it depends I'll, on I'll, where you go. Depends on where you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll just say this. There are different types of club. And obviously, people that frequent the clubs are usually there to go and have a good time. They're not there looking for relationships and spouses and all that stuff. Um, and I think it's different for men and women in that regard. Like, if a, if a guy's really going to find the lady that he's going to take seriously... It more than likely won't be in a nightclub. It would probably be more likely be in their everyday, like could be in a supermarket, petrol station, church, library, uh, gym, um, you know, uh, maybe live on this in the same neighborhood and just come across each other from time to time. And okay. those, last time I checked, all of those what? institutions have been mm-hmm. available <laughs> for decades, right? Or for, but, for a long time. But wait a minute. What yeah. what about what about free. this? Okay, go ahead. They're free. Okay. Because I was going to say, what about online? Because a lot of people are meeting online. The, last, yeah. Yeah, of the course. last person that I talked to, I met them online. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, online is an option, just like the club is an option, just like church is an option, just like the supermarket is an option. They're all different mm-hmm. options. All online has done is giving you more access to more people um, because now the internet and social media has connected the world like never before. So the downside to the advancing technology is it's made it a lot more convenient and easier to to date and eliminate and meet people and things like that. So it's a blessing and a curse. But ultimately, anywhere you meet someone, regardless Mm -hmm. of the setting, once you meet someone and you sit down and talk to them or you exchange phone numbers or whatever, whatever, there's no guarantee it's going to lead to relationship anyway. Well, no, there's no there's guarantee, no guarantee about anything in lead, life. Exactly. There's no guarantee it's going to lead to hot and heavy time. There's no get. <laughs> like, so okay. you, you kind of. I don't of, know. That's not what I hear about these online apps for dating. I, I hear they well, lead to a lot of hot and heavy time. Well, uh, for some people, because that's what they're looking for. But some people ain't looking for that, so it doesn't lead to that. Okay, right? okay. Um, well, let, listen, let's, let's, let's kind of get back on these note cards because we got no well away from them. <laughs> so I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to skip over the stuff we've already talked about as we were kind of just having a real good conversation. And I, and I love it. I love it, JR. I love it, Sean. But here's what I want to ask you. So getting back on my note cards. So when we're at the retreat and um, – Chas starts to speak to Vanessa and he tells her it's only seven o'clock and then we find out it's 7 p.m. and not a.m. Okay. Uh, You know, we see Chas in confessional and he's saying like um, that he feels like Vanessa's all of a sudden become a very all or nothing type of woman. Uh, Do you guys agree with this? Is she being overbearing and or is he kind of doing a little gaslighting there in in that confessional? I'll start with Sean. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know the gist of that conversation. Um, I think you can ask uh, Chaz that. Um, he's back in the chat now. Um, I, I, okay. I, I, I don't. I don't know how to answer that question really, to tell you the truth, um, Aubrey. Um, I, I think you, I, I defer the question to him if you don't mind. I mean, let him answer. Okay. It. Okay. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to him but i want to ask jr while we're on the topic jr won't you take that question for me um do i think she was overbearing um yeah i think maybe there's some unrealistic expectations as well as um kind of yeah being overbearing in that situation she listen she can only state what she would like and where she is in her process and this is why I got the negativity because I said, listen, he still has to go through his process as well. And if they're not aligned, they're not on the same pace or in the same place, 
then unfortunately she doesn't have no other connections and that's something she chose to do. Um, so that's why I think he's feeling the pressure because she's kind of trying to say, look, if you, it's not an ultimatum, but it's kind of like soft power. You could have spent time with me all day, but you chose to come and spend time with me at seven o'clock. So he's trying to say, listen, but we're here now. Why are you talking about what I could have done? I'm spending time with you now, and this is how you choose to spend it. Like, which I think is valid. Like, don't worry about his other connections. You know he's got other connections already. So try and make the most of the time that you do have together to try and influence his decision to choose you. Not beat him up and bash him over the head about why it's seven o'clock. He doesn't he probably knows what time it is. He don't care about that. You're in the retreat. So, yeah, like, I think that was overbearing. I, I would I would hate, because it has happened to me as well. Oh. I would hate. If I, if I come and, if I, if, if I reach out to you at seven o'clock and mm -hmm. that's my downtime and that's the time where I'm like, you know what? I want to spend time with you now, girl. This, that, that <laughs> and you're going to, and you're going to admonish me <laughs> or, or try and throw me off and be like, listen, it's seven o'clock there. You had all day to holler at me. No, I didn't have all day to holler at you. I, I you have a like, job and an actual <laughs> life, huh? <laughs> Right, and then you're yes, going to say, me. oh, well, I want to be a priority and you're not making me feel like a priority right now because you mm -hmm. put everything else above me. No, I didn't. I just had certain things I needed to do first, yes, but I'm prioritizing yeah. you now because in my downtime, which is my quality time, which is my important time, that's when I'm choosing to spend my time with you. And you're oh. now trying to take the conversation or try and dampen the mood and then start time with you instead of enjoying the time that we're supposed to have. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was, you know what, as they say, the saying goes, uh, six of one and half a dozen of the other. I felt like I could understand and relate to both sides of it. So as Vanessa, as a woman, I could see Vanessa was trying to hold Chaz's feet to the fire. That's the way I looked at it anyway. I took it mm -hmm. as... You know, he came to her and he was talking to her. He was holding her hand. So he was making an effort to kind of woo her and make her feel better and talk to her. And she comes out the gate with, well, you know, uh, I want to know what your, your decision is or, you know, th that was kind of, I'm paraphrasing it because she didn't say that exactly, but we knew that was what she was really trying to get at. And then she kind of admonished him for adding another woman onto the roster going from three to four which again i kind of understand that because chaz you're looking kind of wild out here like you know you wilding out what is it uh kojo always says you you, you moving mad you moving mad yeah. man bang, bang. Like, why, why, bad, why, why why you gonna add on one new girl to the roster you already up to three two three and then you're gonna add another one on i'm like man oh man that was just like that was a lot but at the point where she said maybe the first line or two, like I would have, I would have questioned you about it had I been her. And then I feel like, cause I don't know me, I got this sense of uh, composure that was put into me by my mom and my dad who were very proper type people. Um, I would have left it at that. You know, you could have answered, you could have said, woo, 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 whoop de whoop de woo, whoa, 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 or whatever, <laughs> as, on, as Will would say, on, as, as Will, Will would say, but, you know, I mean, he got me saying his blood, <laughs> you know, but you get what I'm saying, but then I would have left it alone, because my pride would not allow me to sit there and quiz you, you're not my man, you're not my husband, exactly. I'm not going to sit there and quiz you like that, because you're a grown man, and you got autonomy just like i got autonomy and i know how to move around trust me i know how to move around so you would right, have been right. asking me like, what well, could, could, could it be a way we could have could it be a way of marking her territory well yeah she absolutely was going in because she has feelings for him and she seems to be wanting uh, she's decided that he has to make his decision, but that's why I go back to Vanessa, and I'm going to say this again, Vanessa, if you check us out over here, uh, you should have stayed with your husband, because this world that you've entered into dating, it's a whole beast that you it. did not know if you were married for, I don't know, five years, ten years, or even two or three years. It has changed so drastically that if your man wasn't beating you and he wasn't on drugs, he wasn't strung out on drugs, 
You should have stayed with them. You should have got into therapy, counseling, and you should have worked that crap out because you're not going to find a whole lot out here. You really aren't. Well, okay? we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Aubrey is is just like is just like our buddy, our buddy Ron. The same thing happened <laughs> to him. Who's your number one, yeah. Ron? Who am, am I your number one? I mean, you know. I mean, Oh yeah, I mean, with Alexis you know, when she was asking, was, yeah. was, she, was she his number one? Was, exactly. Was, was she? I mean, you know, I mean, well, she know, was, the, the difference it, it go, was. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, my bad. I mean, it goes from Ron to Phil in DC. When Phil mm -hmm. did not tell Sydney what he, when Phil oh, did not tell yeah. Sydney what he wanted, she wanted to hear. Then she uh -huh. accused him of this. When Ron didn't tell April what she wanted to hear, and then that went off left. And now, right. you know, I mean, so it, it seems to be like a, you want to pigeonhole me, you know, and look, we haven't gotten to that point yet. We have not, I have not decided, you know, mm -hmm. you know, we're all in this house together. We're all, right. But I think the idea is that you know, it, it just, it just doesn't fit the dynamic. It doesn't fit that dynamic. I don't think. Yeah. And I think that because just like he's free to choose, the uh -huh. other part of that dynamic is she's free to choose. And there were yeah. four other men or three other men there that she could have chose from. That she could have exactly. she cut her yeah. she cut her own self off short to 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 your point. You're gonna probably say this, JR, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it too. Uh she kind of cut herself off early on in the process because she was turning her nose up at all the guys, like except for Don and Chaz, like. You weren't even trying to be like Maya. I love Maya's approach to all of these men because Maya has treated everybody with respect and with a smile. And to me, if you're a flight attendant, um, customer service is number one. So you should be very adept at, at, at smiling at these guys and kind of going along, but asking your questions, sneaking your questions in, not sneaking, but, but getting your questions in with these guys to kind of filter out who it is if there's some other opportunities out there for you, right? And then right. if there's not, if there's not, then maybe just self-eliminate. Right. But this is this is the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh as we've said already and as you've rightly said, Vanessa has her own process. And if her process of elimination has led her to only have Chaz as a connection, then that's the way her process has worked out for her based on the decision she's made and the way she's felt. Now she has to afford Chaz the respect to go through his process. And, you know, there are going to be pros and cons with the other connections that he has. Maybe there isn't the, the one that ticks all the boxes, which is why he still has so many at this point. And like Sean said, maybe if he could combine them in an ideal world, he would have his perfect woman, but he can't. So he has to make sure, as he said, he wants to ch uh, carefully choose who it is, right? He's not in a rush to just jump on the first lady that shows him attention. But at the same time, he's now ended up in a position where he's got like four ladies showing him that they're interested. Now, like I, this is very key to this week's episode. The task was beach, like, the girl that you are most open and vulnerable with, that's the one you need to connect with, right? Now, Vanessa's not that girl for Chaz, right? Okay. The only lady that allowed him to be vulnerable, not Rashina, not Mika, it was Patrice. So that's why that connection was added so late in the game. Because she offers something different that the other ladies don't. They're more self-centered. They're more about, oh, well, you need to choose me. You need to pick me. You need to show me that you're going to be interested in me. No. He has his own process. He doesn't have to do none of that if he doesn't view you as being the one to ride off into the sunset with. Mm, oh, if, okay. he's looking at, if he values vulnerability and being open and able to express himself as more important than just picking somebody for the sake of it, then he's going to choose to have that person, that, that Patrice, over all of you. Because in this very week, you all failed the task of allowing that man to be vulnerable. When he did share that he was uncomfortable and, you know, he's under pressure, you did nothing really to 
be that person that he can confide in and feel like you've got his back. It was all mm -hmm. about you wanting him to choose his connection on your time. Choose me, cut the other women off. I've I've done the same. I'm waiting for you to make a decision. You need uh -huh. to do it. And he wasn't there yet. I, I want you to answer this question that's on the screen, though, JR. Okay, so I get everything that you're saying. Uh, why Valentine says, uh, I think Vanessa took the show as a reasonable person would and not a game. She found her love interest and wanted it nurtured. What do you say to that? I would say, right, she found. That's the key thing. She found that. He hasn't found that yet. Oh, I don't so hear that. You, you're you going to have to wait for someone to reciprocate that energy and that angle. And if there is no one on the show that's going to reciprocate that energy, then you've already cut off the other guys. So, And Chaz isn't there yet. So now, what are you going to do? Self-eliminate or wait for Chaz? Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, why Valentine? What would you do? Like the person that you claim to have th those feelings for hasn't got those feelings <clears> for you yet. So what are you going to do next? Are you going to stay there and watch him mingle with the other connections and get salty about it, or are you going to say, you know what? Well, my my guy's not here then, and eliminate. Well, you know it, the the dynamics of the show are it's a funny animal. Each season we watch, um, and it only happens a few times when a Camille will hook up with Cornelius or a Joy will hook up with Clifton, you know, and, and it just, I mean, it just depends on the dynamics of the show and how the show is progressing, what we see, you know, mm. um, you know, I mean, it, I mean, to be locked into one person and then find out when they start delivering, well, I never had a connection with him. I never, I, I, I never got to know him because he was spending all his time with X, Y, and Z or she was, and all her time with X, Y, and Z. I, I never got to know him or her, you know? And, you know, it's like it's like you say, it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. You know, how do you navigate through this thing called, quote, unquote, ready to love? You know, is it really ready to love or is it, you know, let's try to push this thing to the end to see what happens, you know, and, and build from there, you know? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I really, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've never been on the show never auditioned for the show or nothing like that. I don't know the idea <laughs> how it's supposed to go, you know. Uh-uh. Chaz, you did not just say this comment right here. I'm going to put this up on the screen real quick and I'm going to take it away. <laughs> you did not just say that. Uh-uh. Well, he, he, was, he, was, he was probably was talking about being heavy, being, being vulnerable, heavy, when he said vulnerable. Heavy. Oh, 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 heavy yeah. as in mood or tone? Yeah, and, and, oh, yeah okay, mood or tone, my, yeah. Yeah, not in, weight, not in weight, not in physical weight, I don't think. My my bad. Okay, and Chaz just, is letting us know that he's not a native Texan, but right next door, he's um was born and raised in New Orleans. Oh, nice, nice. Hey, nice. baby, what's up, baby? <laughs> what's that? What's you, that? You, you, heard, you, heard, you heard me? 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 You know, I'm gonna know. You know, I'm gonna know. You heard me, but oh my hey, god. I, it's gonna be interesting. I don't I don't catch as much accent off of Chaz. Um it's it's funny when you have accents and other people are from other parts of the country because we don't always get what the hell you're saying. And I guess you just say that about me. I'm from Detroit, so hey. But, what up though? What up though? Yeah, but the thing about the thing about the Midwest, here's the thing though. The thing about the Midwest, you talk you take Illinois, you take Michigan, you take Kansas, you take the Midwest. Ohio. Uh, yeah. we are actually known like in journalism, people are taught to speak the way we speak. Those of us that didn't grow up with particularly Southern parents that had that real heavy Southern accent. So, you know, you it, it, we speak normally, I guess is what I call it, like normally, like there's no draw and there's no 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 East Coast um, the way they can't pronounce their their T's or their R's or something like that. And they say wah, like Baba wah to us, wah wah, you know, wow. so we don't really have wow. an accent. So when I hear some accents i'm like uh-uh will was that guy when i heard him on uh kojo kojo i tip my hat to you you got the patience of a saint because there's no way i could have sat through two hours 
of you feel him. Me, cut? And, you feel me? You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? Woo, woo, you feel me? Woo, woo, woo. And every other <laughs> sentence is, I'm a freaking millionaire. Every other I'm, sentence I'm a millionaire. Is, you feel I'm, me? You feel me? You feel me? I'm, I'm from South Beach. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm a freaking I'm, millionaire. I'm, I'm a freaking millionaire. millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Do you hear you hear what I'm saying? So anyway, yeah, except, but, for, uh, except for me and Chad, we, we the one got money. We got money. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I saw okay, you put me sent me a note in the uh, private chat. Uh let me go back up here in the comments because I wanted to get back to I had asked Chad some some questions. Uh oh. Uh okay. <laughs> yeah, that's something that, exactly, exactly. My mom too, because she my mom was a native Houstonian. She was born and raised in Houston, Texas. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but she moved here to Michigan as a young gal, and uh, she really didn't have much of a Southern draw that she had grown up with. But like you said, maybe um, in those moments where emotional or angry. But I want to go back. I'm trying to find your uh, comp your comments, um, Chaz, that I had asked you two particular questions. Um, so I had asked Chaz earlier, um, and he was driving, so it took a while. He said, "Let me let me get home or get wherever he was going, and um, I'll respond." And so, thank you very much for responding. Chaz says that he honestly doesn't know, uh, but he has an idea, and he says it was not a voicemail message that Vanessa left; it was actually a voice text. Okay, I stand corrected, and he doesn't know. Okay, all right. And then the other question was about making decisions. Um, I asked him about is he what is his process and 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 does he really know how to make executive decisions as it relates to dating, not his professional life. He says that he has made decisions and he respects um the channel married 10 years, uh, but she is not correct about that regarding making decisions. Again, it's not that simple. And I can expound when I begin interviewing. Okay, yeah, that that would be. And you know what? Um, to his credit, Sean, you were saying that it's a lot more. I'm sure it's a lot more stressful than what we're we're sitting at home with our popcorn and our glass of wine or our Kool Aid or pop mm -hmm. or whatever the thing is that we drink, our beverage, and we can sit and talk about you guys to ad nauseum. But we don't have that pressure, uh, the pressure cooker that you guys are in and filming for uh, several hours a day. We don't have that pressure. So I, I get that it's a lot more to it, but I was just wondering what the thought process was, particularly because you added on a girl. That was that was the thing that blew me away. You added on a girl. You added on Patrice, right? So, um, uh, Sissy, yeah, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. He wasn't getting what Patrice is offering from the other ladies. I I like what you said. I'm 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 I, I, I'm in full agreement and total agreement with you, Jr. About this one fact you pointed and, and you and Sean pointed out that Patrice gave him peace. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She did at the not time when he was distressed, okay. she was the only one that gave him the peace to mm -hmm. to be able to be vulnerable, and she didn't weaponize it like that. But as we as we've seen, you know. Yeah, it gets back yeah. into the lounge and it can go crazy. But that's all she offered. She just had to be a listening ear at that time. And you know what? It still wasn't enough to keep him in the house. He still packed up his stuff and left, even after he was vulnerable with her. It was still too much. He had to get out of there. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you something what I feel because we're just skipping around here. I'm going to tell you something that I feel like, again, how it mirrors another reality show. I didn't like, now I understand that women are going to talk because I, I talk to my besties and I'm going to talk to them. If I were dating somebody, I'm going to probably go to them. But now I would go more so to my godmother because what I find is when you have peers that are your same age or in your age range and they're all single and you're running things past them, sometimes you don't know if there's an ulterior motive why they say the things that they say to you, right? And you get caught up in what they're saying or they're giving you advice. So what I saw was when Vanessa on this retreat, when she went out to the ladies and started uh, talking about Chaz and, uh, you know, he's upset and he stormed off and I don't see why he's upset because he's got four ladies and, you know, two or three of the ladies, the other ladies were sitting there with her, one of them being Rashina. And um, I remember hmm. Maya was sitting there and who else? And uh, Mika, I think, too, right? But I, I feel like 
as we watch the episode unfold, I feel like Rashina got particular in her feelings because she was listening to Vanessa and what Vanessa was saying. And Vanessa was trying to make it seem like Chaz is a player and girl, he's sending us these good morning, big head texts to all of us. And I think he might be a player and I'm not sure if he was gaslighting me, which I totally didn't understand where the gaslighting came from. Cause like, wow, are we really just throwing gaslighting out there like that? But I feel like Vanessa did everybody a disservice and Rashina, as a woman, she got too caught up in what this other woman was saying. And sometimes women are telling you things to get you off of the man that they want. Does that make any sense to you guys? Of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course. She's trying to influence the decision. Mm-hmm. Influence. The Thank you. Because we also know that when you use a term like gaslighting, narcissist, mm-hmm. you know, any of these terms that these people are diagnosing you with based on their experience with you, then it often tarnishes your name in the group. So, yeah, again, if you feel like you are being gaslighted, do you stay and wait for him to choose you and eliminate all his connections for you? Or do you say, no, this guy's gaslighting me now. I'm going to self-eliminate because I ain't got no other connections because I'm not interested in no other guy. That's that's right. the decision she has to make, because you by saying that you back yourself into a corner again. Why would you want to be with someone that you felt was gaslighting you? Why are you waiting there? Mm-hmm. Very true. So if you genuinely feel that way, and now all of a sudden he's a bad dude and he's wasting your time and he's a player and he's gaslighting and these are all reasons that that you should be either. <clears throat> other guys there the other options and if they're not good enough and up to your standard then there's nobody there for you on the show oh oh chaz you're making me blush over here what is this you're saying chaz uh as jr mentioned patrice touched me in a way i felt inclined to explore oh my oh whew. somebody passed me a cold drink of water here <laughs> Means the vulnerability. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's just the way he phrased it. I'm sorry. It's 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 also overwhelming for me in this moment. Overwhelming. Yeah, I'm I'm joking. I'm teasing. Um, okay, so we, we talked about Vanessa and that whole thing with her playing on the women's emotions, and it really kind of rang true for Rashina, but I kind of get to Rashina like what we were saying about Vanessa or any of the women. If the guy that you want, uh, if you only had one guy that you were attached to, connected to, uh, and that thing isn't working out for you, and you start feeling bad because you let Vanessa get inside your head with her influence, um, then maybe the thing is to to self-eliminate. Um, guys, do we want to skip? Because we got a lot of stuff. I got a lot of notes, but we've talked about a lot. Of, we've been on we've been on Chaz for the longest. So let let me kind of go, go through these ones that weren't about Chaz. So we see yeah, that Leron, Leron and Maya are starting to get cozy. Um, what do you think about Leron and Maya's uh, connection as we see them at this retreat, uh, Sean? Well, oh, oh. Uh, let me let me let me get Sean here. And then we'll come back to you. Well, it, it may have been an honest effort. I don't know how genuine it was, but it may have been an honest effort. Uh, what have you? Um, basically, to save face uh, from maybe the next week of being eliminated. I don't know. Um, I, that, that, that's as far as I can see it. I don't know how genuine. Uh, the connection is between the two. I'm not going to disparage his his person or character or nothing like that, but I don't know how genuine it was or is or will be uh, on both ends, on both ends or what have you. Okay. Um, I do see how she pivoted quickly uh, once the quote unquote revelation about William in the chat. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how stable she is with relationships or what have you or how emotionally she matured she is with relationships or not. Or how emotional mature he is. So I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, all right, JR, you want to talk about this whole Leron and, and Maya connection and what we saw? Cause because uh Leron was taking full advantage of the fact that William was gone. 
at that point. So, right as he's supposed to, because you mm-hmm. know his whole objective was to eliminate everybody so that he can get to um, Maya in the first place, and now he's got her in his sights. Now it's time to spit game and you know be, again be vulnerable, tell her how he feels, where he sees their where he sees their connection potentially going. Um, is Maya sold on him? I think they're, you know, she says she likes him. Um, they have a lot in common. Um, they seem quite happy together. I'm sure if she wasn't interested in him, she would have shut it down. Um, so, yeah, like, he's just taking full advantage of the situation. He's being vulnerable. He's being forward. The same exact thing that Vanessa wants Chaz to do, Laron is doing with Maya right now. So, yeah, I, I mean... She, it seems like she ain't got no other connections. William's been sent home, so they can make a go of it if they're if they're on the same page like that. Right now, now um, Aubrey, Aubrey. Yeah. Aubrey. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just gonna. I was just. Gonna, can I can I be a man for a moment? Which I'm always a man, but can I be a man? I mean, I just, I just got caught up looking at. I just got caught up looking at Maya's thighs when she was walking. That's all. I mean, I was I was just lusting after her thighs. <laughs> on the thighs. Oh, uh, she is gorgeous. <laughs> Good Maya Lord, Jesus. Is, yes, Jesus. <laughs> Maya is gorgeous. All the women are lovely. I, I hate that Leiling left early because I thought she was particularly mm. beautiful in a way that really resonated with me personally. Not, you know, I'm 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 straight. I'm, I'm but I, yeah, I do yeah. I don't mm. mind giving women other women. I know some women don't like yeah. to give compliments. I, I, I have no problem at all. All I think that Maya is absolutely stunning and beautiful. I was surprised this episode, um, the last two. I didn't realize she had a had a tattoo on her her upper thigh. Mm-hmm. Talking about Maya, where her, her, her Taraji P Henson looking self. I mean, you know, yeah, like, she does kind of put me them, in the big eyes, the big eyes, you know, the big yes, eyes, <laughs> big pretty eyes. Yes, she does. Yes, you read about that. I, 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 did, um, I just got caught up looking. I just got caught up looking at the uh, the thighs when she was walking. Now look, table. now don't 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 you know don't get out of the word now. You know you know you can lust hey. with your mind. You can lust hey. with your mind hey. and commit hey. a sin. <laughs> All right, hey. Hey, hey. Yeah, but uh, but I want to say this though. So we see that um, I want to point this out. I thought this was really good on uh, Laurent's part that not only was he on her on on Maya while she was there, but this is what I would have really, as a woman, if I were in her spot, her position, I would have been flattered and I would have thought even more highly of him. He made a point to make a date with her once they left the retreat. The next day, it looked like they went on a date. And he took her to a restaurant where they served uh, these oysters, which, of course, is an aphrodisiac. He brought her the most beautiful roses. And what I loved about it, he told her, he said, these roses I picked out especially for you because this is the color that you were wearing the first day I met you. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's really like for a woman, like for you to go back and remember that, like, My ex-husband told me the first time he ever laid eyes on me, we were at college. I had on my little, you know, my little tail cutter shorts. So, you know, he was checking out the thighs too, kind of like Sean. He was checking out my thighs back then and, you know, giving me the whole look. I didn't even notice him. I didn't notice him. We didn't talk till probably a week later when he he, uh, inadvertently bumped into me on purpose, right? But uh, but for, for him to tell me exactly what I had on the day that he first saw me, that really brought his stock up for me because that's letting you know that this man has seen you, he's admired you, and he's letting you know that he's not ashamed to let you know that he thinks you're beautiful, you're sexy, you're attractive, or whatever that thing is. I love it. I love that that Laurent did that. Uh, any thoughts on on that date with you guys, Sean? Well, I mean, I I, I mean. Uh... That was a. I think that was a pretty good date for for the um, length of time we saw it on the TV. I mean, I don't know how long it was in person and what they could have talked about and what was in detail, um, what have you. But I, I think it was a pretty good genuine date, or what have you. And I think it was probably um, maybe it could have been something that the production had put together, uh, what have you. Since you know William was no longer in the picture. Uh, to to try to uh, create this dynamic between the two. That's what I think. Okay. Uh, 
Ms. Wilson has a question. Will will anyone get eliminated since Rashina self-eliminated? <laughs> I think that's a good question, but I think that I don't know if they can answer that. <laughs> yeah, I think since she was eliminated, which either way that she was eliminated, self-elimination yeah. or it doesn't really matter. Yeah, because there, there was no other woman that was taken out for elimination day. That's yeah. the thing that killed me. Like I said, you know what? On and uh, Will Packer production, you guys are really messy because by right from what we saw in the men's uh, lounge, the gentleman's lounge, Vanessa should have also been out on a date and she should have been sitting on the bubble because a lot of men mentioned that they didn't really click with Vanessa. Mm -hmm. so if we go back to if we go back mm -hmm. to the messages that the uh, that uh, Will shared, um, Mika was on the chopping block uh, for most of the. Oh, most absolutely! Of the but she's another one that could have been. You right? She could have been, but nobody right. mentioned Mika because here was the thing: Justin is now connected with her. Yeah, I know. So that's. I mean, my point is, she's been. What someone with the fewest connections for a longest time, and they've kept her around. <laughs> Vanessa has Daddy only team. really had Dominique, and uh, you know, if you want to call it a connection, and now Chaz, and you know, she's still on there. Um, so I, I, I think, uh, I think they should. If the numbers are still not balanced. Then um, yeah, somebody's got to go home. It should be, you know, just because you self eliminated doesn't exonerate the other ladies from going home. In my opinion. Mm, well, we gotta have the bridge scene. So we we're down to what four ladies now. Well, it it, 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 it it comes down to a man being eliminated this week. I think. So yeah, yeah, after they after they meet the family, we will have a man eliminated, and that's mm -hmm. going to be interesting to see who that'll be. Um, Chaz is saying no. Maya looks like Le yeah, I can see that too. Layla Rashawn, I can see both of those. Layla Rashawn or Taraji P Henson. She's definitely super super gorgeous. That's all I can say. That lady is stunning. Like a couple of seasons ago, who was the lady? Um, Morgan. I felt like Morgan mm -hmm. was like she was like a work of art. Just looking at her, she was just that gorgeous. Like her face, her body. Like she was gorgeous, but she was also very toxic too. Unfortunately, yeah, that's what. That's exactly why I didn't see more than anything like that. I saw the toxicity more than anything. Yeah, Beautiful yeah. Skin. I I get it. I get it because I'm like that with men. So when the moment a man starts showing these toxic traits, like it doesn't matter if he is like the most handsome man. I just he's already dropped down so far, in, or if he's unintelligent. An unintelligent man, he is not attractive. No, mm -mm. nope, never. Um, but okay, so uh, moving along, we got um, the next day. We got Alonzo and Patrice. What did you guys think? They went out on a on a bungee date, and uh, uh, I kind of skipped around a little bit. But at the retreat, before we get to this date, um, or no, I'm sorry, it's on this date. I'm sorry. On this date, Alonzo is asking Patrice after they've done the bungee jumping around. Uh, they're sitting down and he's asking her, what is she afraid of? Is she afraid of falling in love? And she tells him she's absolutely not afraid. And then he shares with her about losing his dad early in life. Um, so he was being very vulnerable and he was also seeing if he could trust her. So I like that he really did participate fully in this week's assignment from Tommy. Uh, what did you think about that, Jr.? Again, Patrice passes the vulnerability test because that was the task this week, and you know he was able to share something quite um, important to him about his father and his relationship. And uh, yeah, so Patrice Tr Patrice is clearly the person that they feel the most comfortable speaking to maybe it's her personality or the fact that she listens instead of trying to take whatever they say and turn it into what she would like them to do right or, or chastise or tell them off she doesn't seem to be doing that so yeah um yeah definitely brought them closer together uh i mean that's where you want to be at this at this stage right 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 Oh, who is this in the chat? They're over in your chat, and they're uh, thanks for um, for dropping by and um, 
for subscribing and following and liking the video, Kyle. I think that's how you pronounce your name. I hope I'm not mispronouncing it. Sorry if I am. Uh, Kyle B says, I don't like Maya. Who is she? She doesn't make eye contact and she says nothing. I think she wears too much makeup. Guys, any any comment on that comment or we can move on? Well, different strokes for different folks, you know? Um, yeah. Laron, Laron seemed- yeah. She looked hard to me. She looked hard to me. Yeah, Laron, Laron, Laron thinks that he's fine as hell, so that's that's her connection. That's the only thing that matters at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't have it. a problem with her. I, now, I did. One thing Kyle did say, though, that I have noticed, and I'm not really sure. I've been really trying to figure out what it is about Maya that is it because of the camera being right in front of their faces as they're filming, as they're having these conversations? You're also taught when you're in front of a camera that even if you're talking to somebody sitting next to you, you're you're kind of cheating the, the, the angle, right? So you don't want to look directly into the camera, breaking the fourth wall. But then again, you not really want to be always turned to the side either. So I'm not really sure what that is because I've noticed that about Maya, uh, the but- eye contact. But but you have to remember, Maya does um, photo shoots, modeling, all that stuff. And like you alluded to, we're in a social media age. So it's all about angles and lighting. Mm-hmm. Oh, and absolutely. Like so if you're, if you're professional, you know, at being in front of the camera, then you're very trained on how to present yourself to look as attractive as possible. Mm, okay, that, that's another... Uh... Uh, option too, uh, Kyle. So there's something to consider uh, why she's doing that. But um, I don't know. I, I actually like Maya. Um, no, have I seen her or heard her get into any deep conversations that we've seen on the air? Mm-hmm. No, I haven't. But the thing I like about Maya is is that she's kind. She's respectful of every man that approaches her. Um, and even too, like I think one early on when um, Lamar was acting a total butthole to all the women, she gently checked him. And I think there's an art to that. I know as a woman, when I was young and out in the clubs and being pursued by many different men in many different ways, there is an art to putting men in check when they disrespect you without cursing them out, without throwing a drink in their face. There is an art to it. And if you can do that, I think that is the height of femininity and sophistication. And so I do like that about Maya. That's what I see in Maya. But, um, you know, we all going to see different things, right, based on our experience. So um, so we'll push on to the next thing. Um, oh, what, what happened here? Um, you still there? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 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 kind of lost my place on my notes, and I'm thinking that some notes are actually leftovers from. Uh, okay. Well, what I, I got something. What about uh, Justin and Mika? What about their connection? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. What a vulnerable moment. Yeah. Oh. You know, like, he was feeling poorly, feeling sick, and she came. Yeah. She was the only person that came in to check on him and kind of nurse him back to, you know, it could have been staged, but I'll, I'll run with it because that's, you know. <laughs> You're right, right. It's, what, it's what they gave us this week, so right. That, that, that dog will hunt. That dog will hunt. Yeah. Right. So he had man flu or whatever it was, and she came <laughs> in. <laughs> and gave him some bedside manner, and that instantly turned it around. And yes, it did. They ended you up know, spending yes, time together in the bed, right? What yeah, make that yeah that's what that's what I was like. Okay, so Justin, you <laughs> you kind of surprised me because when you first walked in as the curveball, you know, you kind of like you a little you a little sneaky there because you know you seem like this little uh shy school teacher but you know you got some moves there i see chaz has been teaching you and mentoring you or something i don't know no but uh you had some moves there because uh you know whatever happened the man flu or whatever it was you're right uh mika kind of nursed him back to health and i like that you know he asked her to help him with his hair 
she kind of pulled it out this way that way and then when he looked at it he was like uh uh-uh, uh you you didn't do that right so they had a kind of a uh, playfulness about them a flirty playfulness but one thing he said to her and I caught it and I like the way he said it. And it's it's a certain way a man asserts himself. He says, because I'm coming back tonight. I'm coming back to your room tonight. And she said, Oh, you coming back to my room? And he said, Yeah, I'm coming back to your room, baby. I was like, Oh, okay. Let let her know. Let her know. What did you think, Sean? What'd you think about that connection with Justin and Maya? Oh, Thank yeah, you, well, you know, uh sm- smashing, smashing, smashing. Um I, I, I'm inter- I'm interested to see what was going on underneath the covers, you know, um, you know, and uh, I think it was a convenient man flu, uh, just to she try to solidify the connection from uh, her being dumped in the water from the jet ski. Uh, so <laughs> hey, I'm gonna make this thing right. I'm gonna make this thing right with you. <laughs> I think that's what it was. I think that was a makeup from the jet ski thing. I mean, not the, the snow, uh, the ski, the ski mobile. What is, what is it? The uh, what, what is it? Jet ski, jet ski, yeah. Jet That's ski, yeah, yeah. Or you know, I yeah. guess I go yeah, by the yeah. brand name, uh, Ski Do, but yeah, but jet ski, yep. yeah, yeah. That that was a makeup for that. That's all that was. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. Right, right, right. <laughs> I am uh, really sick. I was I'm, surprised that she actually. This is the warmest I think I've ever I've seen Mika so far this season. This is the warmest and the most smiling. Uh, and the friendliest she's ever been to any of the guys because she's another one that kind of she's kind of been dismissive with the guys too like you know I ain't really into you and she told us early on that Laron was friend zone right she told us that well, well, that's, that's her home that's a homeboy that's a homeboy for her you know but but Laron's Laron's lifestyle doesn't align with what she's looking for she's not looking for that party guy she's looking for someone that she can plug into her current situation with her children and what she got going on yeah that's true because she's so, she's got the two the run right. definitely eliminated from that but yeah this you know he was uh justin was feeling poorly and she came in and potentially gave him some sexual healing if, if that's <laughs> Oh Lord! But, but um, <laughs> we don't know. We listen, don't know for a fact. <laughs> no, we don't know for a fact. But a night nurse can often, you know, um, yeah. that could be the remedy. Uh, that could be the remedy to the sickness. Maybe he was having withdrawal symptoms and he was feeling a bit low. You know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. Look, 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 Jr. If we see next week, uh, Justin trying to talk to one of the other ladies. And she oh. starts having a conniption about it, then we'll know. We'll know. We'll of course, our, we will have our answer. If she gets all emotional and caught up in the dramatics of it all. We will have our answer. Um, so with that, let's move on on to the uh, gentlemen's lounge. Uh, I think we got everything that we need to get out of that. Um, oh, I see well, what happened. Well, you see, you, well, well, Aubrey, well, Aubrey, you saw the setup. I mean, you know. Uh, to tie into what Jr. was saying, mm-hmm. that uh, you know the camera lens, camera angles tell everything, and uh, you see uh, last week after the fall off the jet ski, and when she was getting back on the jet ski, uh, yeah. you see where the cameraman was focused, the camera person was focused on. Oh, that's enough. The, thank you for thank you. Go the ahead, glute, complete the, glute, your... the, glute, the glutus maximus there. <laughs> They yeah. got a they got a, a, a interesting cameraman, and I'm assuming it's a cameraman and not a camera woman. Because I want I want this to be fair and square. If we're gonna get all yeah. the women's backside and we're gonna get the curves, that's that's one thing. I, but I, can I, we can we zoom in on the men's crouch? Can we get listen, a crouch out? Listen, I, I, I gotta be <laughs> real. I'm gonna be real with you. I I don't pay attention to me because I, I I haven't seen Mika's figure to be honest. I'm not looking at the show for that, and I haven't seen okay. Maya's tattoo. <laughs> I haven't seen none of that stuff. I'm are you serious? Yeah, Wait I'm a being minute. real. I, are, you, I'm are, you, even, are you are I, you serious? Yeah, I'm being real. I'm not even interested in none of that to be honest. Like, oh, okay. So uh, let let me just let me just ask you a question since you you brought it up. You started this this uh, down. You started me down this road of thinking. Okay, so out of the nine seasons, and I don't know, you've been reviewing this, what, for a good three, four seasons, I'm thinking, because I know you were here for the last couple of seasons here on our channel and then also with Kojo on his channel. So are you trying to tell me there has not been one woman that you have seen on this show, including Liz, that you weren't physically attracted to? 
Um, no, because I was in a relationship for m most of the time I was reviewing. So, no, nope, I only had tunnel vision for the lady I was with while I was with her. Okay. Um, okay, that's fair. And then, that's fair. And then, uh, and no, and unfortunately, I um, chose a lady who was very, very beautiful. So it would be hard to, oh my, uh, hard to top her um, physically, in my opinion. Um, right, right, of course. But uh, no, I, I can seriously say I'm not looking at the show for eye candy. I want to actually see relationships pan okay. out at the end and the success rate that's what i'm watching it for that's what that's what inspired me to start reviewing and blogging and all that stuff and that's where my interest still remains it's not it's never for just the eye candy aspect i know I, I, maybe it's not for that i understand that but i mean i'm just saying in in your watching of it as a man you don't ever look at any of these women and think wow she's really pretty whether you have a woman or not i think it's i've seen yeah guys i mean say, she's pretty she's beautiful. yeah i mean I can, it's not I like can you're definitely... lusting after her no, no 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 yeah exactly so i can definitely see the aesthetics of it and say yeah okay she's attractive but again like i said there are other components that you, you know in my at my stage and my age like there's other components other than the physical. Chaz is a, I mean, I'm sorry, Jr. is a grown, grown man. Go ahead. Yeah, listen, you can you can be fine and, and everything appealing to the eye, but like you said earlier, the moment there's some toxicity or there's some hostility or there's any, you know, if that that can easily just make me be like, okay, well, you know, you're nice to look at, but not nice to talk to. So you you fall down, right? And that may be a bit harsh, but you know, I'm, I don't really mess around like that. Um, I'm I'm really just looking at the show for connections to see who who's on the show and who they end up with. You know, I don't ever look at it as, wow, uh, Rashina's fires, man, or uh, Maya's eyes, man. Oh, my goodness. No, no, no. I don't get invested like that. <laughs> okay, okay. No. A man after my own heart. A man that knows how to stay uh, single-minded and focused and intentional. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, guys, what do we think about uh, the men? In, and I think we can get over to the, the gentleman's lounge now because we've been all over the place. But we're going to wrap it up with the gentleman's lounge. The guys are talking. We find out that, you know, why Chaz left and that, you know, he didn't eliminate himself from the process. Uh um, and a lot of the men are saying Vanessa, we hear Vanessa's name thrown out as somebody they're not connecting with, and we hear Rashina's name, and Tommy asks Chaz to take Rashina out on a date, and it's up to him. Now, this is, this is to me, I felt like this was highly unusual why Chaz got to make the, the determining, determination of whether Rashina stayed or not. Did you feel any kind of way about that? Um, Sean? Well, you know, it was interesting. Um, I don't know why the, um, why the ball was thrown to him. Uh, probably um, probably because of, uh, I guess, the way that they may have been paired at the retreat. And I guess it was kind of like some kind of bringing closure to that, what have you. Um, I don't know how much time it was told in the in the meantime, in between time, and that that was he was he was given the ball to do that. I don't know, uh, but but I think that's the reason why um, Chas was told to do that. Kind of like bring a closure to hey look, just left the, uh, the compound and and then say bye. You know, that's my thought. Okay. On it. Okay. All right. Uh, any thoughts on it, uh, Jr. Before we move on to the final scene. Um, it's something that they've done um, at different points in this season and other times as well. Um, you know, take the person out before decisions actually made, and uh, you know she pretty much talked herself out of <laughs> out of any type of conversation because she wanted to basically self eliminate and she wanted to over talk and not even give him the chance to say what he was going to say anyway. So she had a lot of stuff to get off of her chest uh and yeah like that's probably why she was not going to be 
um, a top connection for him, like in terms of riding off into the sunset together at the end of the day. Because that type of energy, um, no, we, 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 we're not really, most sensible guys are not looking to come home to that every day. I'm sorry. So it may be cute for you ladies, you know, you may champion it. Yeah, man, you tell him. You, you let him know, girl. Yeah, you can do that. That's cool. But you didn't give him the opportunity to say what he was there to say or give his perspective or his opinion. So it was a, it was a one-sided uh, exchange. And yeah, like you see your see yourself out after that. Wow, but, okay. but you know what, Aubrey? You know what I thought about? You know what I thought about, Aubrey? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? My mind immediately at that 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 uh quote unquote eliminate eliminate bubble date, if you want to call it. Um mm -hmm. uh with Rashina. My mind immediately went to Houston when, when the young lady said, uh, hey, look, you can say that to the chair. Uh, I ain't, I'm going, I'm leaving. Okay. You know, and the guy said, yeah. <laughs> he told it to the chat, so you're not ready to love. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you remember, okay. you remember that, that season? The guy said, she said, well, look, look, no, you ain't got to tell yeah. me. No, you can say that to the chair. I'm, yeah. I'm gone. <laughs> oh, uh, was, that, was that David and, uh, and, um, no, not, and not, not, not David, they, not, oh. not David and Liz, but, um, I think it was the first Houston oh, okay. season. She told the guy, no, the guy said, well, I brought you here because, you know, the guys were deliberating and uh, she said, well, I know oh, who you're going to say. I remember her. I can't think of her name. I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. She said, I already got me a man at home, man. Anyway, you know, I got me a man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was you the one. That was, hey, wait a minute, Sean. Was that the young lady that was like a track star in college? She was. Uh, yeah, Denise, 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 Denise. Denise, yeah, that's yeah, it. Denise. Denise, yep. Yeah. Okay. Said, well, yeah. You, you, can, you, can say, you, can say, you can say that to the chair because I, I, I'm going home. I mean, you you ain't got to tell yeah, me. I'm Denise, going home. De Denise was not having it. You're not going to eliminate her. I, I don't want to know that you got. And then she got to go and tell us that she already had a man at home. Well, what were you doing on the show then? My God. Hey, look, strange things have happened on Ready to Love, you know, especially like when the young lady came up pregnant at the reunion, you know. Well, she didn't know, no, she didn't come up pregnant at the reunion. She was already, she was already pregnant when she came she was on already, the show. Yeah, she, yeah, she was, yeah. That was the problem with that. I mean, like, you know, I guess we would have we would have had our first ready to love baby, but now we got uh Magic Mike and Brandy. They got a baby now. So Yeah, they okay. got a baby now. Yeah. They got yeah. they got a baby now. So um congratulations to you guys. Uh yeah. Okay, yeah, so in the scene, okay, we're in the final scene. So now Chaz is sitting, he's 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 greeting um Rashina, stands up, gives her a hug. Uh and and the two of them to me already are defensive. Like she's especially defensive. She's saying, Well, what's up with you? And he's saying, Well, what's up? What's up? But they're going back and forth. And I'm like, Oh my God, this energy already is 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 highly volatile. She's defensive. She knows she probably has an idea that she's there for the bubble date, right? The elimination. And um, she sits down though, and you know, and they're talking, and she's like, the first thing out her mouth, this is what I don't like when women do this. The first thing out her mouth is, well, why didn't you call and tell me blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, my God, here we go again. Like, she is getting so possessive and so territorial. She's asking this grown man who she, A, is not married to, B, she's not in a serious, committed, exclusive relationship with, why didn't you call me and tell me blah 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 blah? What in the world? What are your what are your thoughts about that, Sean? Yeah, I mean that, that did come off a little bit, you know, uh um brash, I think. Um, you know, uh, I mean, you know, maybe maybe it was self-preservation. You know, I'm gonna hit you before you hit me, what have you. Um and maybe, maybe I guess she felt like she had made that far to the to the show that, you know, she did not deserve to be eliminated. You know, it's not like being the first one to be eliminated in the first week, but now we got to this point, and it's kind of like I guess yeah, we are we're almost at the end at this point. Yeah, she was she, she she was feeling embarrassed, I guess. You know, why? If, if this was shot in order, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. 
Well, this is the thing. Well, okay, let me ask you this question before we, we uh, get JR, uh, get him in here. What do you think about the fact that she kept talking and then uh, Chaz jumped in? He was trying to get his little word in and say, well, you know, the fellows and I, we just had a, a, a meeting uh, the, in the gentleman's lounge. And then she's jumping in and she's saying, well, you know what? I have already decided. Uh, she pulls a David on us, basically from Houston. Yeah, yeah. I have already decided. I don't like the way things are going. I'm done, done. This is a wrap. I'm self eliminating. Like, do you I, I, I guess. That? I, I guess yeah. when you hear when you, when you hear those words, when you hear those words, the fellow, you know, we had a meeting in the ladies' lounge, and we had a meeting in the men's lounge. I guess you already know why you're there at that moment. You know. Um, and it could either go one or two ways. Either you're staying or B, you're being eliminated. So, um, and uh, maybe looking at her effort, maybe she thought put, she put a whole lot of effort into it and she did not deserve to be eliminated. That's probably what it was. I don't know. Okay. She might. <laughs> somebody said she was just too masculine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? She didn't want to take her lump. I, you know, I, no, I she didn't take the lump. I, I, I get yeah. it. I get it. Like our ego is saying for us ladies, because this is the thing I'm seeing a lot of now in this new generation, this younger generation, is that women have the egos the size of what I would traditionally say was a man's ego. Now women are mm -hmm. kind of brashy and bold and have all this ego, and they don't ever want to be rejected. And the thing about it is, I almost felt as I was watching the scene, there was a point in the scene where it felt like he was about to say he was going to let her stay. But at the end of the day, if she doesn't have a connection <laughs> with anybody else, maybe she, she did do the right thing by self-eliminating. But I didn't like the fact that she kept cutting him off. I thought that was just darn rude. Well. Uh, mm -hmm. JR, hop in yeah, there. Well, it, it was rude. And uh, unfortunately, there were some people that don't see an issue with that. But um, I also think, um, you know, you're trying to take away the power of the guy to eliminate you in that situation. And if mm -hmm. the roles were reversed, I'd say the same thing. If a guy basically just didn't allow the lady to get it out and, um, you know, tell, give him the feedback, then that means you don't want to hear what other people have learned about you and even take it in a constructive way so that you can go about right. the dating any differently. You know, you're going to go out there and be like, well, you know, take me as I am. I'm not going to change, you know, that type mm -hmm. of mentality. So that means you've gone through this whole process with other people getting to know you and you're not even interested in the feedback from the guys who have been dating you. You're going to stay in your echo chamber, believing what whoever's been gassing you up and what your own perception is. When you're trying to attract a guy, you it's very important that you hear how the guys are receiving you and how they viewed you throughout the process. So the fact that she didn't want to hear that means she ain't going to change because she feels like what she's doing is right. So the guy's opinions don't matter. And, uh, and the other thing I'll say is maybe she thought it was coming from Chaz himself and not the mm. rest of the guy. So she might have been defensive and said, no, nah, you know what? I don't want to give this guy time. When um, he could have spoken to me about how he was feeling, he didn't see me as a safe space. He decided to pack his bags and leave. I felt a way about that. So now I'm not going to give him no opportunity to talk. I'm going to tell him how it is. And then I'm bouncing. That's, mm -hmm. that, that seems to be the attitude that she had. But it was yeah. rude. Yeah, I thought because, she was rude. Yeah, a conversation is two-way. Yep, you yep. Know? And but what I learned from this this particular episode is, you know, unfortunately, the guy's feelings or you know the guy's feedback um, is not always appreciated by the ladies that claim that they want to be around in your life, right? Yeah, yeah. he could have given her some constructive feedback. He didn't seem like he came there with an agenda to shame her or blast her or do anything derogatory or insensitive, right? We never even oh. got to hear it, but by <clears> his <throat> demeanor, he didn't seem like he was coming in to attack her, but she just wasn't interested in listening at all. So, I mean, it, it kind of reminds, 
Oh, well, I apologize. Go ahead. Oh, it kind of puts me in mind of, uh, of the elimination date with um, Samson and um, Sharice. Um, oh, you know, God, that um, was horrible. Um, yeah, Sam, Samson and Sharice. I mean, you know, I mean, I've studied, the, I might not study, but I've looked at the way some women have handled being eliminated. You know, some of them look like they're cool on the surface, but I think inside they're infuriated. You know, like, say, for some when Alexis got booted off, you know, shit, mm-hmm. okay, fine, cool. I mean, everything, you know, I learned when one, a woman sometimes says those one word sentences, it, it, it's the opposite of what she really means. You know, like, cool. It ain't really cool. You know, like, okay. Mm. Yeah, but you we're know. not mind readers. So if no, you we're not say, mind readers, you know. Yeah, if you don't say and what I, you I, mean, I, we'll never know because we're not supposed to guess. But at the same time, there's a way of articulating your feelings and yeah. letting people know how you feel without being derogatory or, mm-hmm. or, or um, emotionally charged to the point yeah. where you're disrespectful. Oh, right. I mean, I mean, it, it, the man can get like that too. I mean, just like Chris was last season, you of know. Course. Uh, uh, and even even uh, Alonzo from a few Alonzo, season, yeah, yeah, thirty five billion dollar portfolio, or whatever he had, you know. Yeah, there are some people that do not handle rejection or criticism well at all. So their first mm-hmm. defense mechanism is to get hostile and angry and aggressive about it. Yeah. And that's a problem. That's a flaw that they need to work on, because in life, oh, yeah. you are going to face, you know, rejections and ups and downs and highs and lows all the way throughout your life. And yeah. if your right. instinct is to react in a hostile or disrespectful way every time it happens, then you're going to spend a lot of time in that mindset, and that's going to deter a lot of people from wanting to be around you or have relationships with you, etc. And that energy is contagious. It will spread mm-hmm. onto other people, and then the people around you will become negative, and and, and and you know, it will become an echo chamber. So, yeah, you know, it's some people are just not able to handle it. And I don't think she wanted. I don't think she respected Chaz enough in that moment to even hear what he had to say. She wanted to give him no time of day at all. Yeah, that and that that was kind of sad because I felt like, and you know what? And it's easy for me to you know. To, to talk about it because of course I wasn't there and I'm not the one that's on national TV and getting uh, critiqued but I really wish that she had slowed down a little bit and and allowed him to say his piece and um, to me like even if it was the safe face or whatever it was if she really truly was going to self-eliminate, she could have allowed him to give whatever the men's final decision was, or in this case, actually, because Tommy did tell him that it was up to him to decide. She could have allowed him to get everything out, whether he was going to say, you you stay, you go. And she still could have told him the same thing. She could have said, well, you know what? That's great that you told me I could stay, or that's great that you, you know, eliminated me because honestly, I didn't feel like, this process was for me at this point because you know whatever right mm-hmm, exactly mm-hmm. and you know like he actually dodged the bullet because that's who she, that's a part of her character that exists and mm-hmm. you don't want to get you don't want to have gone through this process and eliminated all these other ladies got to the bridge started a relationship with her off camera and then this yeah. comes out where she's dismissive mm-hmm. of your opinion, she's disrespectful, she doesn't doesn't even want to hear what you have to say, and she's going right. to put you on blast and get some crazy thrill from talking down to you or demeaning you or putting you in your place. So mm-hmm. he definitely, it was a good move for her to <clears> be <throat> away because it showed who an uh, element of her character that may not have been seen for okay. the rest of her. And you know they they say that's when our character really shows and comes out the most is when we're when disappointed or we're being rejected. So that's a good point. But I want to um kind of give the other side of the coin, and I want you guys to respond because why Valentine is saying um why Valentine is saying while Rashina was disrespectful, however his audacity delivering feedback when he cowardly left the retreat. What do you think about that, Jr. Yeah, I've seen this. Um, He was a coward for leaving. Listen, I I, I hate to say this to you ladies, 
if you stress us out more than the stresses we already have to deal with every day, we are out. Yeah, we're going. We're going to go and find peace and quiet somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah. Is this so resonating this notion, with anybody? <laughs> yeah, this right. notion that he should have just stayed there and stuck it out. Listen, he's not going to choose one woman yet. He's not ready to. So that is the underlying point. Okay. If he had chosen, if he had said to Vanessa, okay, I choose you now, right? Then, yeah, fine. If he had chosen Rashina, yeah, fine. He's not ready to. That's why he still has so many connections. He hasn't decided... Mm -hmm. which lady has most of the plus points for him to go off and have a relationship with this guy as people keep pointing out is in his mid 40s he's had relationships before so and and i'll break it to, i'll give you i'll give you some tea as well mm. when right. guys genuinely like a lady right for whatever quality she has that we're attracted to we get tunnel vision we kind of know who we like and how much we like them. And he hasn't reached that point with Rashina or Vanessa. So despite them being fan favorites and I would have done this and none of that matters because he's not choosing her yet. He's not ready. She hasn't shown him that, that he can be who he needs to be comfortably in her presence enough for him to choose her and have a long-term relationship. That's what it comes down to. So, yeah, it ain't your attitude that's going to win the guy. I'll tell you that now. You can run him down to the ground, run your mouth and diss him and disrespect him as much as you like. You might feel better while you're doing it, but just know you're severing your connection or your chances of being with that guy long term when you do that. So, yeah, Rashina, yeah, I get it. She may feel like it was a cowardly move, but ultimately, if he had stayed he would have been in a place where he felt under pressure and all the back and forth and all the eyes on him and all the conspiring in the ladies' lounge and comparing notes and all the rest of it. I don't think he's comfortable with that. I do. I definitely don't think Chaz is a player. I don't think he, even though he may be charming to the mm -hmm. point where you can sit down and have a conversation and he can be complimentary, I don't mm -hmm. think he's the type of guy that can do that to three or four women at one time and get away with it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't get that. A player True. in that situation would be more calm, composed, and be True. able to give you the silver tongue, um, you know, the flirtatious banter, mm -hmm. and, and not even sweat, not even blink an eyelid. No matter which one of the four ladies is there, he'll be turning on that charm in mm -hmm. front of your faces, behind your back, like he'll be comfortable with it. Chaz is not that dude. I'm more so, of the mindset that he's a late bloomer, like most people are saying. I think like mm. he's just either too into work or just wasn't attractive to certain points until he got money. And then once he got money, then he started attracting more ladies. Self confidence came, started hitting the gym. And then mm. now he's got his attention on this show. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for that. That's a, those are very excellent points. I want to get both of you, but I'm going to start with Sean. I, I got some people in the chat. They're bringing up some very good points, okay? Like it or not. Uh, what do you say to the women that are saying that Chaz, he had a very good time with those grapes and that strawberry with Rasheen at the retreat just a few days ago? Sure did. So what, 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 what do you guys say to that? That's the nature of their connection. There was, so mm -hmm. again, he wasn't doing that with Vanessa. He wasn't doing that with Patrice. He wasn't doing that with Mika. Rashina's connection with him was more of a sexually playful banter type connection. Mm -hmm. True. But in terms of vulnerability, no. In terms True. of where they necessarily align, at the end of it, no. But, you yeah. know, so every lady has their strengths and weaknesses. And the things that attracted him to one lady may not have attracted him to some of the others. They're, True. they're unique in that way, which is why he has three or four connections. I, I hope the math makes sense, right? Yeah. Well, doing well, the strawberry, it, it, pineapple, 
bosom things mm -hmm. with all the ladies. It was just strictly with Rashina. Right, right, right. Well, Bath says uh, that if he, and I, I guess she's assuming she's saying Chaz, he tucks his tail in between his leg and leaves, a lot of women would see this as an indication that he will also leave when times get tough as well. So do you think yes. she has a good point? I think she definitely makes a good point because okay. when okay. times get tough, that's when you're supposed to stick together and work together to get through those tough times. Mm -hmm. If you turn on me when times get tough and you're trying to put me on blast and let me know how you feel and I ain't allowed to speak or I'm not allowed to be vulnerable, I just have to sit there and take it. So you're piling on to the stress that I'm already going through. Then, yeah, I'm out. I'm leaving. Mm. Yeah, and, that, and that's the inter and that's the interesting thing about a man in a relationship. A man, his um, his heart will leave the relationship long before his body does. You know, women too um, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and and the interesting thing about it is that sometimes we as men, uh, we can we can separate sometimes uh, hot and heavy time from vulnerability. Oh yeah. I mean, just because I'm, I'm having hot and every time with you don't mean I'll be vulnerable with you. Uh, just because right. I beat the grapes from off your chest and what have you, or suck strawberry out your mouth, or don't mean that I'm going to tell you all my heart and what have you. Uh, because like, like Jr. said, this is just a just just the nature and the dynamic of where we are, and what have you. Um, and um, even though he did that with Rashina. It, it, he would not open up. I don't think he would open up to her if, mm -hmm. if it came to be like, if the dynamic was for him to share with her that he was feeling overwhelmed, what have you. And maybe she felt like that he he owed her an explanation because the, yeah. we were just intimate. We, that, that was just intimate. That was, that was intimate for us. And that was, that was intimate right. for us. And I, I never let a man do that. And so that you owe me an explanation. And I think that was like the part of her, her anger. Yeah. Right. right. No, I think so like, too. I think that I think that she allowed, uh, like, and I just kind of bring this back up again. I really think that she allowed Vanessa also to get in her head, and I don't mm -hmm. think for one second that that was not unintentional. I think it was very intentional, and it was very strategic, much like Laron talking about those uh, text messages from William. I think it was very strategic as a woman that she brought up, oh, Chaz this and oh, Chaz that. And oh, by the way, I'm not sure if Chaz is gaslighting me. Yep. And, and just started putting yeah. all those little niggling thoughts into Rashina and, and any other woman that she could affect. I think mm -hmm. she threw that out well, there. And I think that's a yeah. problem that women, if you're listening to other women that are talking to you about your relationship or the guy that you're seeing, don't let them get in your head like that because this guy yeah. is not her her man. He wasn't her man at that mm -hmm. time, so he didn't owe her that. He didn't owe her an explanation mm -hmm. at all. Right. Well, and, it's and just, just like this is the question I have. Right. And now, mm -hmm. listen. Like he he said he was going through through it. Right. He locked himself in his room. Like someone clearly pointed out in the chat. He locked himself in his room at first. The only mm -hmm. person, and you saw this, Aubrey, on my Instagram. The only mm -hmm. person that noticed that he was feeling hurt in some way was who? Patrice. Exactly. Rashina and Vanessa, who claim or feel like they have a stronger connection with him and want to be chosen, where were they? They didn't even care. They didn't even notice. They didn't care what he was going through. They, none of them two, as far as what we saw, went to his room to check on him, to sit down and see what the problem was or see why he was feeling a certain way or anything like that. In fact, they were told by Patrice that he had left. They didn't even notice. They didn't even look around and be like, you know what, um, he's been away for a little while. All the ladies are here in front of me. Let me um, go and see where he is. Mm -hmm. None of them cared. Because they don't care about how he feels. They care about yeah. how they feel how they because feel. they want to be mm -hmm. chosen more than they care about how he's feeling. Yeah. yeah. So from his perspective, I'm probably going to assume that, again, that's what makes Patrice different to the other ladies. 
the fact mm. that she has that caring heart, that caring spirit, where she felt like, oh, you know what? I sense he's in pain. Let me go and see what's up with him. It wasn't enough to keep him there, but at least she showed the care and the compassion, like a maternal instinct, like a mothering instinct. You want to, you, you, you have that softer side of you. You're going to go and see how he's doing and what he's going through and see if you can help in some way. Rashina and Vanessa don't have that. And they, mm-hmm. they both have kids too, just like Patrice does. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what it is, but I can only assume that they were just not interested. Unless he's choosing them to, to, to say, listen, you're my number one connection. They don't want to hear nothing else. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, just like, you know, I mean, sometimes, I, I think sometimes the, the women could have been trying to one-up each other. I mean, because just like, I mean, I don't know whether, I don't know whether it was production driven or not, or it was just came straight out of the regular conversation. Why was it important for Rashina to tell the ladies, yeah, he, he sucked strawberry out of my mouth and woo, we had a good time. You know, wh- why was it important to say that? Was she trying to make Vanessa jealous? Oh, or, was, that, was that part of the... Yeah, the, 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 when they were sitting around, the, yeah, uh, when they were sitting around. Oh, yeah, the, she the, did, the, she did, right. Yeah. I was like, no, I think, no, 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 can we have some discretion here? I mean, what would you and I do? What we do? I mean, you know, you ain't got to tell all the ladies this. You got to tell your sisters this, you know, what's going on. You know, just like, I ain't going to tell them the boy, the dudes, you know, what we do. If we get down, we get down. If we don't, we don't. You know, hey, you know, but, uh, you know, I think there's some some matter of discretion. So that some men feel like that if you tell all that, then I, I can't tell you nothing. I ain't going to tell you. Mm, that's a good point I'm, though can can, you know, can she be trusted can she, she be, be trusted, trusted yeah. with the confidence okay yeah. mm-hmm. and that goes yeah. back to the vulnerability task right yeah. that's the whole point yes. yeah that's the whole point of the of this week's task if you really cared about your connection then they should mm-hmm. be able to be vulnerable with you and feel comfortable knowing that you know that's a that's something that you can share if you look at Alonzo and Patrice, that's mm-hmm. one of the main reasons why they've connected this week because mm-hmm. Alonzo shared something about his dad, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Conversely, yes, when William showed some, sh- shared something about his dad, it was used against him. So clearly, yeah. that respect and that connection wasn't going to go anywhere. Mm. But with Alonzo, <laughs> it is good. Do that, right? Well, see, I think, Chaz, I think, yeah. Like Chaz was able to be vulnerable with Patrice. That doesn't necessarily mean their connection is going to go somewhere, but that's the reason why she's been added as one of his connections in his opinion, probably in his dating process on the show. She's been the one that he's been able to be vulnerable with, where the other ladies who he's probably spent more time with on the phone, or, you know, if we are to go by the voice note and the other things, there's been some hot and heavy time, but the vulnerability was never there. Okay. So you you were saying at least according if I'm hearing you correctly, Jr. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're saying that in your opinion, the vulnerability, the trust factor, the nurturing that Patrice gave, you seem to see that as being above and beyond the other ladies, and this is a characteristic that you as a man respect and admire. Is that absolutely? Because, okay. you know, we every week they set a challenge to try and yeah. break down a barrier or get closer, right? Tommy sets them a challenge weekly. And this particular week focused on vulnerability. So, you know, the only one that really checked for Chaz in that moment you, was Patrice. So that automatically, to me, shows why she's a connection now, whereas she wasn't before, Right. She's she only start. It was only yeah. last the last episode when mm-hmm. they really established any. T- they they didn't even have each other's phone up. Like they weren't even right. talking. They weren't talking. Mm-hmm. Correct. Right. But she what, already what in in the space of one week has been able to allow him to be vulnerable. Whereas Vanessa and Rashina have had longer time with him, getting to know him, and he and he wasn't able to share that with with uh, mm-hmm. them two ladies without being judged. Well, well, think about it like this. Think about it like this. Uh, uh, um, 
Ch Chaz is the senior of the men. He's the senior of the men. He's the oldest of the men. Um, the brother, you know, the brother's very well established compared to the other brethren, you know, on the show. Um, if we would look at it, quote unquote, the most, uh, what word am I looking for? The most, if there's a word, unestablished man would be probably Alonzo at this moment. Uh, what have you? So it'd probably be Chaz, Leron, and then Alonzo. William, then Alonzo, if William was still on. But I mean, Chaz is the ideal guy for the, these women. He's he, he's a brother that's got it going on. You know, this brother's you know late forties. You know, he he's 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 got this nice crib, what have you. He's the brother got it going on. He, he I mean, this, this is why I want to take home the mama. You know, and I think a lot of the women, uh, quote unquote, urinating and trying to mark the territory for this man. Oh, my, not, the, not the urination of it all. Yeah, urination of it all. Urination of it all. <laughs> the and, marking and, of the territory. But the idea is that that all those things mean nothing because I've seen, I, I hear a lot of chatter now among some some sisters that, and that's what that's why it's incredibly stressful on us. A lot of us as men that, huh, like especially that it goes back to the Houston conversation uh, when when um. Chris was asked about bills. He said, well, look, we can, we can split the house note. No, what do you mean split the house note? You gonna pay the whole thing? You know, I mean, I ain't going to work just to pay, pay bills. You know, I feel like, hey, if we're in this together, we both live here, we can both, you know, check, contribute. You know, it's not like, yeah, I, yeah. you know, and, and, and this incredible pressure for a man just to go to work, just to pay all the bills and what have you. Well, what are you going to contribute? You know, you're not just an added fixture to the house, just sit there and look pretty. You know, and I'm going out to work, bust my oh, home nine to five every day. You know, <laughs> but the I, but the idea, I, as, as much as it as much as it takes to live nowadays. You know, when we look at steady inflation and, and wages are not going up with the inflation, you know, it, it it becomes a lot of pressure. It becomes a lot of pressure, or what have you. And so I I think that idea is that that, you know, when when you have a man that can have that soft spot to land. To land and to put down the cape and not have to be Superman, but to show you this is who I am. I'm Clark Kent. This is my kryptonite. This is what helps me overwhelm. This is what oh. I'm going through. This is where I am in life. You mm. know, you you see me. You see me. And that to me was last week's lesson: intimacy. Because I look at intimacy as the play on words of "into me see." You know, mm -hmm. "into me see." So you see into me. You know, you don't see the facade. You don't see all the trappings I have, the trappings of success, the nice car, the nice house and all that. But you see into me. You see my soul. You see who I am. That's yes. I wow. OK, I, I, I'm getting teary eyed, Chas. You 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 are really causing my eyes to, to get blurry. It's like I've been cutting onions. OK, I got to stop you guys. Chaz is saying in the chat and I, I didn't realize. Sorry, sorry, Chaz, I didn't realize you were still there. I guess you were allowing us to to chat and not say anything until we got to some points that you wanted to clarify. But Chaz has put in the in the in the chat that I have only had three women to ever pray for with me and for me and then in mm -hmm. the next one patrice became the fourth that is so powerful for where i come from and i don't know about anybody else it's just me prayer is so vital to living and to having prayers answered and to healing and to recovery mm -hmm. that for you when you say that that you've only had three women and then patrice became the fourth Mm -hmm. That is so validating because, and then, and then Chaz goes on to answer a question that Kiki had asked him about whether the other women reached out to check on him, just to check on him and say, not to, to nag him and not to say, well, why didn't you tell me you was leaving? You, you should have told me, you owe me, you owe me, you owe me. But instead to just check and say, hey, Chaz, are you okay? Are you all right? You know, I noticed you left and 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 I just want to make sure, check in on you. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Is Drum everything roll. okay with your mental health, with your emotions? Um, I'm not no, even going to worry about who not. you're picking, but just, just a person, just a person. Like, look, sometimes some things got to be person to person. Like, Everything in life can't be, what am I getting out of it? What's in it for me? If you're always looking at what's in it for you, that's mm -hmm. problematic. Exactly. That's very problematic. 
So, no, they did not, is the answer. And those three women that prayed for Chaz previously, I doubt that they were Rashina, Vanessa, and Mika. So, there you go. That's why Patrice is up there in his estimation, because she showed a level of care, love, compassion, enough to be vulnerable, enough to allow him to be vulnerable. And that is major for a lot of guys. You know, we deal with stuff every day. And now that... um. Now that ladies are out there doing a lot of the things that we as men do out in the workforce and, um, you know, getting educated money and all these other different things, you go through it too. So, you know, it's already stressful. Um, you know, it's stressful for us as well. So when we do get the chance to sit down with you and have that vulnerable time, that Clark Kent time, as Sean says, you know, that shouldn't be taken for granted because if we've chosen you, if we've said, you know what, I've got tunnel vision for you. I want to be with you. I want to have a relationship with you, spend my life with you. You are our kryptonite. You are our weakness. You are the thing that makes us revert back to that Clark Kent in that moment to allow us to be vulnerable. But if you weaponize it or you use it against us or you deliberately turn up your aggression and intensity and hostility, yeah, never open again. You're, vulnerable, you're mm-hmm. going to push us away. So you need to snap never out. Never open that. up again. Exactly. The walls will go up even higher this time and we ain't going to come to you for anything. When we need reassurance, when we need you to pour into us, when we need a second opinion, when we need anything, we're not going to come to you no more because you've weaponized it. You've been, you know, you just shut us down. We're not allowed to get a word in edgewise. And regardless of how you felt about the situation, if you're not willing to listen and you just want to go off, then you're not communicating effectively. That's not what communication is. It's never going to be one way. And I think, unfortunately, we're conditioning uh, men and women in society these days in particular, where it seems like guys have to be stoic, strong, silent, and but yet we're supposed to lead somehow. Listen, we're not going to be strong, silent, stoic, and lead without giving our opinions or the final word or the final say or the final thought on the situation. All right, now. You can't have it both ways. Say that with your whole chest. Say that with your whole chest. Um, Yes, to what Babs is saying. um, Many of us women are out here being super women as well. Um, I'm thinking there's a thought behind this once you said this, or maybe it was in reaction or response to something we said. I don't know. But I'm just wondering if you would complete that thought. So many of us women are out here being super women as well. So what's the next sentence behind that? Like the next sentence behind that probably oh. should be when so when they come home, they want to be the female equivalent of Clark Kent with their man too, so that they can be vulnerable and share stuff. Oh, right? okay. Okay. That should be what comes next. But I okay. doubt that's what's going to come next. It's not about competing well, on who's right. more super mm-hmm. and who's got more superpowers and what you're out here doing. That's not the point. The point right. is... Right, it's not a competition. It, right. When you come yeah. home, you should be a super couple, right? Yeah, there you go. You should be able to love each other and respect each other and communicate effectively without being hostile, disrespectful, or anything like that. Because that's not mm. love. That is no. That is the opposite of what love is. Love is getting well, on it, together, working as a right. team together. You become, you know, you become a, a united in your mm-hmm. cause to try and create a better life for each other, and you love each other while you're doing that. But you're not going to yeah. do that while you're constantly um, trying to weaponize and berate and disrespect the person you're with. Mm-hmm. No, not at That's all. That's not going to well, bring unity. Well, just like well, uh, well. Go but ahead, to Sean. tag on to what Jr. was saying, mm-hmm. just just like Jr. was saying, if okay, let's go back in the in, in between season between Dallas and this season. Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Remember the question that was asked of Vernicia by Jabari. He said, "Look, he said I need you mm-hmm. to be home, and, and you got to turn that turn the boss mode off at home." You know. Oh yeah, so in other words, yeah, yeah. So so you know, I mean, you know, you the boss at work, but but just turn it off when you get home. You know. You're not my boss here, and I'm not your boss, but we can we can build this thing together right here. You know, that 
you know, as a boss, you don't want to be vulnerable around your employees, you know, because you want to seem like you had it all together. And, and sometimes when you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go and don't know how to do. But you want to paint, paint this picture at work, they can get it all together. But at home, I can see your faults and you can see my flaws. I mean, there are people that see me uh, one way at work, but those people who know me personally see me exactly different because they see me that that the work does not see. You know, there have been many times I've been to work and I'm like, how in the world am I going to make it through this month? How am I going to make it through that month? But wow. those people that know me saw that vulnerability in me. You know, just because I, I got this doctorate degree don't mean I got it all together all the time. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so the idea is that, you know, when a man or a woman uh, is allowed to have that space, safe space where I can put down the cape, I can put down, uh, you know, I can put down the superhuman strength and be just plain, uh, plain uh, Clark Kent or Lois Lane or what have you then okay. you know you got a treasure there you got a treasure there you know and, and interesting thing about it and if you if you 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 made a good segue aubrey uh one of my favorite verses in the bible is hebrews 11 about the hall of faith you know and and, and no need to go through all this and the you know, bible said by the faith able offered unto god by faith you know uh noah built an ark you know by faith moses fled egypt and all that but there's one little passage in that hebrews 11 it says that out of weakness they were made strong. Mm. Mm. Out of weak, out of weakness, I think it's Hebrews eleven and thirty three or thirty five, somewhere in verse. But it says out of weakness they were made strong. And many times we we praise Samson for the strength that he had, but it says out of weakness they were made strong. And Amen. and that's 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 that, that point right that point right there. Understanding that point that dynamic. That we can be strong out of our weakness. Mm -hmm. That we can be yeah. strong out of our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. We can be strong. We can be strong out of, out of that. That's yeah. Almost, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, J JR. I was saying Thank vulnerability you. is actually a strength because it allows. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. You you can't be firm, hard. Uh, you know. Um, uh, That's why thugs don't live long. Listen, yeah, you, you can't do that all the time. That's draining. John, you are about to make us go off the air because I swear to goodness, I almost spit this water out on my laptop. We would have been off the air. My computer would have been fried, okay? <laughs> Thugs don't live long. <laughs> you, are, you can't be hard all the time. You can't. Thugs, Thugs, don't, live Thugs don't live long. Thugs don't live long. <laughs> You are so wrong for that. Guys, if you're still listening to this great, really, really awesome, very organic conversation, I just said the heck with my notes. We're just talking real talk, men and women. He says, well, no, no, they said, the hell with it, the hell with it, yeah, the hell with it. Yeah, just, just hit that like button. You here, and if you're in the bushes and you haven't subscribed yet, but you're one of those 66% 60, 60 of the people who are in my analytics, who are watching weekly, go ahead and subscribe. Help a sister out. I got I got goals free, this year. Free 99. Free 99. In, in 2024. It's free 99. Like, like my boy Sean said, it's free 99. Definitely go over and 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 also subscribe and like the video on JR's channel too. You know, go over there mm -hmm. to JRX TV. Show your boy some love. He he's he's out here every Sunday. He is giving us the real. He's letting us know what a young man thinks. We got a more seasoned gentleman. Sean is 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 representing the seasoned man side. I'm over here representing the seasoned woman who has been through life experiences, been been married, been divorced, has has dated, and 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 really has a lot of experience, guys. Definitely like the video. Um, I actually had a couple more things. We're going to wrap this up because we were already three hours into this. I'm starting to feel like Kojo here. And, you know, I, I don't I don't have any uh, Adderall or anything to keep me going like, you know, OK, because uh, I'm going to have to crash in a minute. But there was a couple of things that came up. Let me go back over to my other side here. There were a couple of things that came up in the comment that I wanted to ask you gentlemen about. Um, we got 
we got Miss Wilson. But I'll save that for later. We're going to stick on. Um, I think we we're talking about Patrice. Uh, someone said it. If I can find it, I don't know if I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Kyle B said um, that I bet Patrice probably checked on William. Also, she seems to show a lot of empathy. She's a sweetheart, and she's been my favorite since episode two. Best overall personality. What are your thoughts uh -huh. on that, Sean? Just just that that statement alone. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, is she the one that was crying when he left, or was that Rashina? Uh, who was that crying over? Uh, uh, Patrice is the it? one. Okay, so Patrice is the one who uh, she is a chauffeur. She has the 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 van, the Mercedes. Yeah. Van. Uh -huh. She's also the, the one fleet. that was yeah. in the room praying for for Chaz. Chaz. That's Patrice, uh -huh. and Patrice yeah. is the one that's also uh, connected with Alonzo. Okay, that helps you. Mm -hmm. Patrice yeah. is connected with Alonzo, uh, the young guy. Yeah, um, yeah. I, 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 so you said, yeah. What was the question you asked? But this uh, right okay, here. The, um, my question so, is, so, so, uh, with Patrice, what do you think of this comment that's on the screen? That I think uh, she's a very genuine. She seems to be a very genuine person. She seems to be the yeah. more matured out of the group. She seemed okay. to be the more mature out of the group. Um, okay. She seemed to be very, uh, very forward thinking. She's not a woman of. Uh, she's not a shallow woman. She's a. She's a woman with. Uh, excuse my expression. She's a woman with deep wells. She's deep well. She has deep wells, and mm. she has deep wells. And I believe she has calm waters. And if you can find a woman, if a man can find a woman with calm waters. Mm. Then he's got a treasure right there. Wow. Not saying that nothing rocks, her, takes her off her center, but if she's a woman that does not freak out over a lot of things, but she's a very a woman that, that is very thought provoking and has very calm waters, she's a treasure. Wow. Well, there you have it, guys. So, mm -hmm. Kyle, um, and I'm not sure if Keel Kyle is male or female. I'm not really sure. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be funny. Uh, there's no picture up or anything, but um, there you have it. That's what Sean is thinking. Um, JR, you have any thoughts on this comment that's up, up on the screen? Uh, mm, yeah, I think mm -hmm. um, it's very valid. And I get, I, like I said, it's very important um, for some guys that when they are going through things, um, you know, if a, if the lady they're interested in or has a connection with or in a relationship with, if she cares about what you're going through, then she's going to ask if there's any way she can help or she's going to be a sympathetic ear. And then, again, that comes without weaponizing. Now, my only, my only blip with Patrice is, obviously, she was involved in Will getting eliminated earlier because he was... He had a connection with her and she shared that about the mattress thing. Um, so, um, but other than that blip, that, that episode, um, yeah, she's been pretty solid. She comes across as a very warm, bubbly, personable um, lady, right? Um, and I can see why some guys would gravitate towards that personality. Um, whereas... Like I said, there are some other ladies who c tend to be more self-centered or more about themselves to the point where, uh, you know, they've kind of cut off their connections. Patrice, at least, still seems to have Alonzo and Chaz around. So that speaks uh, volumes as well. When you look at the ladies who have no other connections other than Chaz, there's probably two, Rashino and Vanessa. Mm -hmm. and, and Mika has Justin. Uh, Patrice has Alonso and Maya has Laron. So, mm. yeah, the, by process of elimination, you know, you would have to say Patrice is up there as well. Hmm. Alice the Great, why does why does she say that? Um, you got me, you got me questioning. I, I see what's up on the screen. Um, why does she say that? Could you say? Um, well, well, uh, Alice the Great is saying that um, over on uh, the Married 10 Years page, Deborah mm -hmm. or Deborah um, thinks that Patrice just likes a project. So in other words, it sounds like she's saying that Patrice is one of those women that likes to build a man. 
Like, I, I don't see Patrice. But then, I don't know, maybe she's referring to the connection with Alonzo. What, what 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 do you think about that? Let me let me get your thoughts on that, um, Jr. What are your thoughts about Patrice having this connection with Alonzo? Does that does that well connection does that make sense to you? Well, if the assumption is that Alonzo needs building before he becomes a man, then I, I haven't seen evidence of that. Um, okay. he just seems younger. And probably a little bit more immature because he doesn't have. I don't think he has kids yet either. No, no so children. They're at different stages in life. She's got three, and is probably more mature. I think she's older than him as well. Yes, she is. Um, but again, different strokes for different folks. For some, for some women, it probably um, you know, they don't want a guy who's necessarily been there, done that, seen everything. Hmm. And sometimes they, you know, it helps them to get to a guy who, before he's got there. Um, and then for the guy's perspective, we already know a lot of women in the community might want a finished article, the guy that's got it all already, and then you're going to come into his life and take from him. Um, but no, <laughs> a lot of guys are wise to that now. So you, they're not. They're oh, not Lord. Them. No, he didn't say take from them. Mm. Hey. <laughs> Spent all his time Ooh. building himself you go, up. You go, his... you go light some fires up under somebody. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 uh, you know, I intend to because you know that is mindset. That what you intend is, to do? <laughs> yeah, that mindset is detrimental to the progress of a relationship. Right? Listen, uh-huh. there are some guys that do have it all, and they've yeah. worked hard to get it to where they to where they're now attractive in your eyes. Now, that doesn't mean that when you come into their life, then everything he has is yours. Nope. Right? They're two different things. So, and again, when that guy does come into your life, if he has accomplished everything he needs to accomplish and is where he wants to be, et cetera, then that's Mm -hmm. even more reason why you make yourself a safe space and you Mm -hmm. show him the loving, caring stuff that he's looking for in a partner because that's what's going to keep you around him. Otherwise, he's going to move on to someone else and take his well-built self to another lady. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, you know, with, 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 with men who have a lot invested in life, like JR was saying, you know, you don't automatically assume that, you know, what he has achieved that is yours or what she has achieved is yours. You know, if you're a man going after a woman that's achieved. Uh, I think I told you that Aubrey that one of my one of my former presidents I've worked under said he said if you're gonna f up f up don't f down you know <laughs> right said, right you told me uh, yeah, you uh, sure did. yeah always mess yeah. always mess with somebody who got more to lose than you do you know I mean Makes I mean uh, me. you know, because the idea is that you know because you could you can ruin you can ruin your career I mean you know think about okay think about it like this. Bill Clinton almost lost, gave up the presidency behind Monica Lewinsky, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the intern, he definitely, t- he intern, definitely tainted his legacy. He definitely tainted his yeah, legacy. Yeah, he tainted the legacy. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, the idea is that that when you, you know, when you get to a position in life, that you don't want to have to start back over at square one, um, and it could take you a lifetime to build things together, build things up, but only seconds to tear it down. You know, mm-hmm. um, my whole my favorite one of my favorite proverbs is the Bible says that a wise woman buildeth her house with her hands, but a yes. foolish woman tears it down with her mouth. With her tongue. That's a good yep. Her tongue. A wise mm-hmm. woman buildeth a house with her hands, but Ooh. a foolish woman tears it down with her tongue. Now, now break so, that down for for the for the younger folks and the non. Bible reading folks haven't been to church in a while, but they're gonna get there. <laughs> Easter, Easter is is days away. So no, break yeah. no, I'm not gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> break that down into into generic terms that our audience, our younger, you know, followers, and thank you for being here, guys. We've got a wide range of people from my analytics 
from all the way from 15 to 65 plus. So break that down. No, seriously, break that down. Okay. Well, the, the thing is, is that you're either a wise woman or a foolish woman. You're either a wise man or a foolish man. But I but, think but, in this particular, but the part that, about that, the hands, I mean specifically, what what is the Bible saying? A wise woman her building her house with her hands is a woman who's industrious, a woman yes. who's very industrious. If you look at and I, I get so sick and tired of when I hear people quote unquote preach that famous sermon on Mother's Day about the virtuous woman. Every woman ain't the virtuous woman. Just because she's a mother, don't mean she's the virtuous woman. But if you read, if you really read that 30, Proverbs thirty one ten through thirty one. The industrious yeah. woman, she, her husband was well respected in the gates. But the most important thing about the virtuous woman is that one little passage. The Bible says the heart of her husband, though safely trust in her, that she would do him good and not harm all the days of his life. Mm -hmm. The heart of her husband trust in her, that she would do, though safely trust in her, that she would do him good and not harm all the days of his life. That like Jay was saying, that if a, a man can be vulnerable and give his heart to his wife, a woman, then he's got a jewel because he if he knows that she would not do him harm all the days of his life, he's got something, he's got a gold mine right there. You mm -hmm. know. Um, and we talk about the woman building the house with her hands, she's industrious, she's not lazy, she's always forward thinking, she's proactive and not reactive. Right. Mm -hmm. She's in, she's industrious and not lazy. She doesn't. She doesn't sit around and let and watch things happen. She makes things happen. Ooh. And then what about the part with her with her mouth or her tongue tearing down her house with her mouth? Or, what the does one, that? The one, when a woman, when a woman or a man, but in this case, a woman, when she has no discretion, when everything that goes on in her house, she got to tell everything that goes on in her house this to every, somebody else. This is it. This you, and like, like weaponize it. And weaponize, and, we, and, we, and weaponize it. And weaponize it. And weaponize it. Has vulnerability against mm -hmm. him. Because I, I mean, just a vulnerable, vulnerable moment for you, just a vulnerable moment with me. Okay, I'm, I'm a divorced man. The worst thing in my life was when I hated to go home. What? When I hated to go home. So you when I hated to when, work, working overtime. I'd rather be working overtime when I hated right. to go home because I did not know what I what what I was going to be greeted with when I got home. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. Exactly. If mm. you got a man that that yeah, when when he when he wanted when, like the Lord, 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 with this with this with this work day and it's not like oh I just can't wait to get home to see her. I just can't. but no when he's mm -hmm. got like Lord I got it, oh God, it's time to get off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when he's dread when he's dreading, when he's dreading that moment to get off, time to get off. <laughs> yeah. I've been That's there. Something. I've been there. Yeah. I've been to walk yeah. at work seven days a week. And, yeah. and my ex was saying, he was saying things like, I know you're not really working. You are lying. He just called me all things out by yeah. name. He thought I was lying so bad. And I swear to God, the people I work with, they said, my God, you're here day and night, night and day. Mm -hmm. You're here. You're here on yeah. the holidays. Yeah. And I just thought to myself, you don't understand what you I've just got don't to understand. do. <laughs> you don't yeah. understand. You do not understand when your home becomes a war zone, right? Mm -hmm. When your home, when your home literally becomes a war zone, and the very person that is entrusted to to love, nurture, care for you, and at the very least, at the very least, if you can't even do those things, at least do no harm. Like you know, like like a mm -hmm. doctor's oath, do no harm. If you if you can't nurture me, you can't uplift me you can't encourage me you can't be my friend just go in the other room and just do no harm so i can come home and have some peace but when you've got a, a home that is a war zone that is the most asinine thing in the world yep and and, and it's all about and, and i know we got to wrap this thing up in a little bit but I, it's all about learning to speak your partner's love language you know, okay we mm. talk about love like we talk about love like See, uh, and, 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 and what I might be going through, my love language might be physical touch. Hey, baby, a hug, mm -hmm. a hug, a hug would just do. Oh, I don't want to hear, da, 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 da. you know, this broke down, that broke down, this happened, this happened, da, 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 da. I want to decompress. And, and, and some of us men, we just want to be held. We just want to be held, you know, what have you. Our love language might be physical touch. Or her, her love language might be acts of service. You know, well, uh, she's been with the children all day long. And, and, and an act of service will help 
not just, you know, uh, more than just, we can be both be speaking English, but when we can be talking the same language, but we're not necessarily communicating. Because oh, right. if your language, if your love language is acts of service, and I'm just giving you quality time, mm -hmm. we're not speaking the same language. We're not. I'm not telling. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not giving you the same language. Because you said, look, you need acts of service. You know, run to the store, to the store for me. Do this for me. Do this that, that for me. You know, if you be a sweetheart, do this for me. That means I sometimes I got to go out of my way. I'm tired, but I go out of my way to go to the store for you and get this, that, and the third for you. You know. And so, and I think it, it takes time to learn, time and maturity to get to that point of learning how to speak each other's love language, you know, because our, our love language is not always hot and heavy time. It ain't that, you know, no. you know, you know, it's no. not that, it's not about that all the time because sometimes that that get that gets monotonous and routine and old, old you know, because ain't but so much you can Ooh. do, you know, what have you, you know. But the idea is that you not, not that you don't enjoy doing that. But it's just mm -hmm. the fact that that does not meet the need all the time. No, 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 no. You know, no sometimes that might be just a band aid for. It might just be a band aid for. It might be a band aid for something else. Mm. You know, what have you? But the idea mm. went. But when I'm speaking your love language, you know, I, I mean, I mean, I've read the book several times. You know, uh, that book um, by Gary Chapman, the Five Love Languages. You know, I've oh, read the yes, book here in my yes, library. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. You know, like, and, and learning book. to speak. Learn to speak, and, 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 and I keep coming up with all these biblical illusions, you know, uh, biblical references. Genesis 11 about the Tower of Babel. The people mm. had the skill to. The people had the skill to build, mm -hmm. but when once they when once they start communicating, they didn't lose the skill to build. They lost the know how to build because they could not communicate anymore. The language, the language, right? The language was confused. When the language became confused, then the building stopped. Mm, they didn't lose the skill. They didn't lose the skill, right. but they lost the ability to communicate. So in our in our relationship, when we lose the skill to communicate, guess what? We can't build anything anymore. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I look. I like what Jr. is saying out here in the chat. Look at look at Jr. interacting and engaging with the audience. He says. Um, <laughs> Trees and Alonzo aren't quite like Dre and Michelle. You can't, can't build anymore. They I mean, are, we, we, but they are at different ages and stages. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Sean? What's that? He said, yeah, he said, once, we, once, we, we, once we stop communicating, we can't build anymore. Exactly. Right? We can't build anymore. And um, communication is not you just it. going off and ranting and going on some mad tangent. Communication That's That's it. is a conversation. It's, it's both of you being able to communicate effectively without getting heated, without being disrespectful, without raising voices. Because the moment it starts to escalate, then you're no longer communicating. Now and that's the key. Beef. And that's the key. And sometimes, sometimes we listen to, for the response instead of listening to understand. Exactly. It's called being reactionary and highly sensitive. Mm hmm Right. Yeah. And it's not that you know, if you want a relationship to go smoothly or be successful, you can't have that. And but to your point earlier, you know, if you're at work and you're dreading going home or you're mm -hmm. hoping that work goes longer than it should, or you sit in the car for an hour mm -hmm. or two hours before going into the house. Oh child. That's already showing you that the person you're with is potentially causing that situation and you're allowing it to continue because you're not addressing the reasons why you're sitting mm -hmm. in that car or able to find peace outside of the person you're meant to be with. Mm -hmm. So listen, it's not a joke. Yeah. Nowadays, um, you've got the cost of living going up in most Western countries. You've got the overworked and underpaid yeah. stuff happening. You've got job losses. You've got so many things, health problems, more health problems now than there has ever been, whether it's mental or physical. Like, there's so many different things that can happen to you in life. But when you find a partner mm -hmm. that you feel like you can invest time, energy, love, affection, um, 
you know, and you feel like you're compatible enough to want to make those sacrifices to make it work, that needs to be appreciated and respected much more than mm -hmm. you wanting to get your cheap points across or demoralize or mm -hmm. demean the person that you're meant to be with. Right? Because you do damage a relationship that may be irreparable if you don't check yourself and stop doing it. That's true. Um, and, and the interesting thing about it is this. Okay. Go ahead. And the interesting no, thing no, about no. it is this, mm. is that many times in, in those toxic relationships, to add on to what JR was saying, in those toxic relationships, many times people die years before they die. Mm. Mm -hmm. exactly. You mean the relationship you die dies? Before... Oh, they the die inside. No, no, you die, you die, you die, you die, you die internally, internally. Yeah. You die internally. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. They lose the drive or the passion for life or they yeah. get downhearted or, you know, and that's why it's important for the person you're with to be an uplifting presence in your life. Yeah. Because things can easily get you down. And once you start that downward spiral, sometimes you can't always see that you're in it and you need someone to show you the light and lead you to it, oh, yeah. right? To, to pull you up. And say, look, okay, I know you're going through things right now. Listen, let me be there for you to help you turn this around. That is valuable because it's a very selfless act. Mm. So, yeah, you can go back to love languages. That's very important, of course. But there are other factors as well. I could give, like, your love language might be acts of service. And then I start doing things for you, serving you, right? But if you're not nourishing me as well, mm -hmm. then it's one way. I'm just your servant now. You ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? If my love language is words of affirmation, so you expect me to serve you, but you can't even give me the words of affirmation to lift me That's up right. every day, which, which is free 99 as well, might I add. Three ninety nine. <laughs> That's it. Three ninety nine. How? What are you expecting? You're just expecting a servant. Mm -hmm. You're not actually giving me the love language that I actually need, which is mm -hmm. free, which is just mm -hmm. being nice and polite. Mm. So acts of service may cost money, cost time. It's me doing something for you. It's me serving you. But words of affirmation, coming back my way are few and far between. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a successful relationship, is it? No. Because like I said, if it's free for you to be nice, it should be part of your personality anyway. We're all humans. Right? So we know what being nice to someone is and compared to being horrible to someone, right? Mm -hmm. At our grown age. So if you can't mm -hmm. take the time to be nice to the person that you expect acts of service from, Therein lies the issue. You've got entitlement problems. You've got mm -hmm. an entitlement. Because you're not prepared to water the relationship in the way that you need to. And it doesn't matter about any other love language. If it's not specifically the love language that resonates with your partner, then you're not doing it right. Because it should be specifically relative to the person you're with. If my love language, for example, is acts of service, and then mm -hmm. you start giving me words of affirmation. You're mm -hmm. not loving me in the way that I'm going to receive it the best. Yes. Come on, James Ingram. Come on, James Ingram. <laughs> I don't have the heart to hurt you. It's the last thing I want to do. Exactly. <laughs> I don't have the heart to, the, the heart to love you the way you want me to. That's, that's, Ooh, and that's James true. Ingram. That man so can sing. Oh, my God. He said, he said, inside I'm dying. He said, but mm -hmm. I don't have the heart to love you like the way you want me to. Right. Wow. And when you're in when you start dying inside, you don't want it to be at the hands of your partner that's doing the mm -hmm. that's that's No, we don't we don't want that. We don't, we don't want that. You have to your partner's job is to resurrect that life back into you so that yeah. you can be the best person you can be for them and yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so there was a comment earlier that was made about how mm -hmm. Just going back to Chaz tucking his tail 
between his legs and running like a coward. Mm. When times get tough with you and your partner and your partner is saying, you know what, I need you to lift me up every day or at least be nice or whatever the case may be. You would rather take the coward's way out and instead of helping that person when they need those words from you, you would rather withhold them and be like, nah, you don't deserve it. I'm going to talk to you the way I want to talk to you. Now you're taking the cow's way out because you don't want to be soft. You don't want to be warm. You don't want to be loving because you'll be being vulnerable yourself. And that's what you're really afraid of. You're afraid of being vulnerable yourself. Right. That's going to kill the romance in your relationship. Let, 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 let me let me hop on one thing right quick if you don't mind, Aubrey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bab gave Bab said something that I just I just triggered. Yeah, something I'm, in my mind. I'm responding to that too. Yeah, I see you. Let me let me let, you want me to hit it, put it up on the screen. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. well, you don't have to. If you, yeah, 1994, 1994. Lauren Hill gave us a word in her song X Factor, and she gave mm-hmm. us that word reciprocity. Reciprocity. Yep. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. It's a give and take. You know, a give and mm-hmm. take. It's a reciprocity. I sow into you. I reap from you. You sow into me. You reap from me. So mm-hmm. it's a law of sowing, sowing and reaping. If I sow into you, yeah. I reap from you. But if you sow into me, you reap from me. So the idea mm-hmm. is that, like, like, don't be surprised uh, of the fruit that you receive because of the seeds that you've sown within the person. Mm-hmm. So, so the idea. It is that if you're sold into me negativity, don't mm-hmm. surpri- be surprised at the fruit that comes about as a result of the negativity that you sold into me. Or if I sold, you, if, or if I sold into you negativity, don't be. I, don't, I shouldn't be surprised at the negativity I receive because of the seeds mm-hmm. that I've sown. 100%. But she said that they keep the whole keyword of reciprocity, that reciprocity between us. But that, what that does is, that look like? That's that's his see, here's the thing though, and, and she's saying facts, she's agreeing with you. Okay, but what does that look like? Because my response to Babs was this. Um, I think that in life, what happens is um sometimes I may not have it all to give to you with work, with the children. Let's say we're a married couple. We have a couple of kids. We got three kids. I got a job. You got a job. I got to keep the household nice. I got to cook the dinner, all of these things. Sometimes I may not have it all to give to you, but I'm not trying to tear you down or disturb your peace. Sometimes you may have more to pour into me at that moment. But here's the thing about life, because I don't believe that it's always 50-50. That's just, that's, that doesn't exist. That's what Teddy Pendergrass said. That's what Teddy, that's what Teddy Pendergrass said. Yeah, but it, it doesn't Teddy, really what, exist. We, a lot of things we take from movies, we take from, from even records or songs, uh-huh. or we take from Instagram, and we make it like it's a fact. But the fact yeah. of the matter is, we don't always have all of it to give. But here's the thing. If in relationship today, you're up, and you got a little bit more juice to give and you're pouring it into me, you're nurturing me, you're encouraging me. Like like, like Sean has pointed out this love language, you know my love language, maybe my love language is like you said, it's not always the hot and heavy time. Certainly if I'm going through a, 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 a lot of stress and some things going on, it's definitely not that, but it might just be you as my husband, my man showing me, uh, giving me a compliment. Uh, giving me a rub on my shoulders and saying, hey, babe, can I give you a little massage? I see you're tense. You've been working seven days a week. You've been working hard, you know, uh, bringing into our home, contributing to our home. And I just want to show you some love. And then tomorrow, it may be my day where I'm up. I've got a little bit more energy. It's my day off and I'm pouring into you. You see what I'm saying? So it's not like if somebody is sitting up keeping a tally I think you're an absolute fool. If you're out there and you're keeping a tally and you're keeping a, a chart and a, and a spreadsheet, today he gave me 10 kisses. Uh, he gave me five kisses. He he bought me uh, uh, some roses. And, and if you're sitting up doing that kind of crap, we already got a problem. We got a problem. You cannot mm-hmm. keep tally in love. What no, is the no, balance? It, it, what is the sum total of your your love and your relationship? What is the sum total yeah. of it? 
Well, I, I think I think the whole thing is is that like when Muhammad Ali, the late Muhammad Ali, was asked to to, uh, to recite a poem, and he gave this short, quick poem that he thought of off the top of his head. He said, "You, me, we." You catch that? He said, "You, me." He said, "You, me, we." Okay, mm. so it's you, me, together, we. So it's no longer just I. It's you, right. me, yes. okay. we. Yes. Okay. I see what you're saying. So, 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 so the idea is that I should be so in tune with you that I know when you're not at your hundred, your your best. Right. None, none yeah. of us are going to be at hundred percent every day. No. But the I idea know. is that when I see that you're not at the hundred percent, that I mm -hmm. must help shoulder the load. Help mm -hmm. shoulder the load. At, 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 once again, it is Ecclesiastes 4, 9, 11. He said, how can one be warm alone? For if he falls, he has another to pick him up. For two are better than one, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. So so the idea is, is, is that, you know, as, as a lot of people say, I, 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 I can do bad all by myself. I mean, I don't need you to do, help me do bad, because I can do bad all by myself. But the idea is that, you know, every day is not going to be sunshine and roses. But in the day, days when it's raining, I need you to be an umbrella for me. I need to be mm -hmm. an umbrella for you. You need to be an umbrella for me when it's when That's it's right. raining. But I need you to be also a, 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 a cloud and a covering over me when it's hot and heavy. You see what I'm saying? So so the idea is that, that learning to, dis, to design the weather in the relationship, you know, the weather mm. in the relationship. Mm. You know, it's, we're either in springtime when things are vibrant and lively and coming alive, coming out mm -hmm. of hibernation, or we're going into fall when things are getting cool or All surviving right. through the All cold right. time. Right. Seasons now. So we don't went, oh, oh, yeah. we went from the five love languages to the four <laughs> seasons. I like that. Well, no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So, or, or we can survive. When, or, uh, the biggest test is how do we survive when our relationship is in the winter season? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Talk, about it. Talk about it. Come on, Sean. Come How on, Sean. Because because I, because our relationship is not always going to be in spring. No, our relationship is not summer. always going to be in summer. Mm -mm. And our relationship is not always going to be in the fall. But how do we navigate between the summer when things are hot and mm -hmm. the winter when things are very cold and dormant in order to come around to the spring and dormant and coming back to the spring? Mm. Mm -hmm. How do we navigate Sometimes those times? you got to have that perseverance. Sometimes Some I, perseverance. I think That's you got to have that commitment. I think to be honest with God, true, when I think about people like Michelle Obama, when she talks about her marriage and like for for several years, you know, her and, like and yeah. Rock were not in a good place, but they stuck it out. They stuck it out. She was raising the kids. A lot of things were going on, and she saw that he was pursuing his passion with the community activism back in Chicago. And it was like, a, it was like a lot of things that were going on because he wasn't, he wasn't really so. She felt like at the time he wasn't sewing into the family. He wasn't helping with the household chores. He maybe wasn't as involved with the children as she would have liked for him to been, right? But a lot of times we miss that because we're saying we're looking at them now. We're looking at their their White House years. And I'm gonna tell you something. To me, I, I bar none, and this is just my personal opinion, bar none, Michelle Obama, Barack Obama were the sexiest, hottest on fire couple back during their uh white house years like there was no way you couldn't have told me that that uh young barack and young michelle obama when they went into that white house there's no way you can tell me that they didn't make love in every single one of those 16 17 20 bedrooms in that mansion there's no way you couldn't tell me that there is no way when you look at the pictures of them and you see the chemistry dripping off of them as they were dancing that first dance they were regal. They were in love. There was so much chemistry. But that's not, people get it confused and twisted. That's not every day. That's not every day. They built upon decisions and choices. Babies lost. She had miscarriages. They built upon that. They didn't allow the world or any of their misfortunes to tear them apart. They were committed to loving one another. And that's the key. Surviving that winter season of life. Surviving that winter season of life, you know, 
And it, it sounds easy for me to say, because I ain't got nobody in my life now, you know, what have you. But the idea, they were well, Sean, you're doing a whole lot of talking. Well, man, you did, no, no, I'm telling you the thing that I've learned. Over that even this if course of, as, as divorced yeah, people, we have experience to. Yeah, we, we've, we've, we've experienced, experienced these things, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, what, what, yeah, because hindsight is always twenty twenty. What you could have done, what you would have done, and what you should have done, you know. What you should have um, done, and, right. and and learning how to net because I realize that that you ain't gonna be twenty five all the t- uh, uh, forever mm-hmm. today. You ain't gonna be thirty five forever today. You ain't gonna be forty five mm-hmm. forever today. You ain't gonna be fifty five forever today. So I must, I'm, I must, I must practice the law of evolution. That the more things change, the more things stay the same. The things have to change over time. Mm. You know, so the idea is that I'm not going to be the same man in my 50s as I was in my 30s. I ain't the same man in my 30s as I was in my teens when I turned 18. So the idea, but my perspective should change on life as I get older. You know, Mm. my perspective should change, you know. Um, and and that's that's the way we look at. It. I mean, I know we 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 way over time and all that, but yeah, I just got one last thing I want because I've been holding on to this and I wanted to pop it on the screen. And we got to love languages and the four seasons and uh, responding to not just uh, not just the hotel, the four seasons, right? Uh, no, not the hotel. The actual four seasons of, of life of of life on this earth. There are actually four seasons. Well, unless you live in some places where it's the tropics all year round, but like here in Michigan, we got all four seasons but um and that's what a lot of people say that live here they love it but this is what i wanted to ask you guys as a last thing um we're talking about patrice here um uh-huh. and alice the great responded to my question because i wasn't understanding why someone another um youtuber would say that uh patrice was a a build a build a man kind of a woman mm-hmm. and so she responded back and did respond and answer me thank you for that alice um she says well patrice was hitching her wagon to william even more after he told her about his dad being sick and then she was throwing herself on Chaz the moment he became distressed you have any thoughts about that sean and then i'm gonna go to jr and we're gonna we're gonna shimmy and shake our way on out of here well, I mean, we only know what was shown to us on TV. We, I don't know if if that does one of the relationships that was being fostered that was not put on camera until we saw it. When we saw it, um, I, I don't. I'm, gonna, I'm not saying she was just hitching along with Chaz for the ride, trying to not to be eliminated or what have you. I'm not going to say that. I won't go that far and say that. Um, I think probably there was something that was brewing the whole time, uh, and she just, you know, moved, moved silently in the background, what have you. And that's what I, that's how I think that um, her relationship developed with Chaz. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, same question to you, Jr. What do you think about? Um, what do you see going on with Patrice? Is she trying to build a man? Why is she over here um, into William? And then on the other side, then she's over here into Chaz as he's falling apart. What do you see in that? Because I, I see something different, but I'm going to wait to hear what you have to say. Listen, all I see is Patrice is what we call exercising her option. She meant to have more than one connection at this point. And, uh, you know, she's... She's got connections with William and Chaz. I don't see anything about building up nobody. These guys already got jobs and careers and doing whatever they need to do. Chaz has, from what we've seen, a big house, a career, and everything else got going on. Um, William has multiple different um, uh, jobs or careers or whatever. And... um, Alonzo, he got a job too. And all I see is the age gap between them and the fact that he doesn't have kids and she does. Those are the main differences. But this is what comes with the show. You're supposed to date around. You're not supposed to be in one person's pocket because that's going to be the fastest way to get eliminated because you're not making connections with the other people. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Like At the end of the day, they're not at the bridge yet. Nope, not at the bridge. Right. So yeah, I don't she she's gonna have a connection that means one thing, and then uh she may have a completely different connection with 
uh, William or Alonso. Completely mm. different connections. And then eventually, well, as it gets closer to the end, then you're going to see which connection is the strongest with whoever it is. That's how mm. I understand it. Okay, that that's and you know that's interesting too. I didn't thought I hadn't thought of it from that perspective that each person in our life, when we meet somebody and we're attracted to them, we could be attracted to this guy. He may be look totally different from that guy. Uh, personalities mm-hmm. may be different. This one's uh, obviously Alonzo is much more seemingly lighthearted and more go with the flow, whereas Chaz may be much more intentional and maybe mm-hmm. a little bit more serious and more mature acting or behaving. But that doesn't mean that you can't be attracted to different aspects of these different people. But here's what I thought. I thought as I was reading this, what she's saying, um, Alice the Great, uh, great comment too, by the way, I was thinking that for me, I, I felt like Patrice, like some of us are empaths, right? So I'm an empath. And what that means is that um, generally speaking, not all the time, because I have learned to conserve my energy, but generally speaking, when I was younger, what I would do is if ever I saw somebody that was distraught or distressed, I was always going to help them. I was always trying to help them, right? So what I'm seeing in this moment on the show is that Patrice giving an ear to William is her like to what part of what JR is saying she's kind of keeping the door open or her options open which is the whole premise of the show but I also see more more to it than that I see that she's just being empathetic she's an empath she's a healer she's kind and she's being kind to William because he's a human being and I think Mm -hmm. a lot of times we've lost that in this cold world that we live in big city life uh, everything's moving at a breakneck speed. Everybody's trying to get to the next dollar, the next this, the next that. But I think that she's actually a person that is a very caring person. Um, and then when I see her with Chaz, uh, for him to say, like I said, it brought tears to my eyes. For him to say that she's only the fourth woman that's ever prayed with him and for him, it's telling me that she's not self-centered like so many of us are. So many of us in this Mm -hmm. world are self-centered and it's always about what can this person do for me? So Mm -hmm. Patrice may be this this rare unicorn person that literally actually cares about other people, not just about, is he going to pick me? Uh, Is he the right guy for me? But just that he's a human being and in this moment, he's in need. See him as a human, yeah. And well, that well, goes you know back what? To, uh, that's the point I made earlier. Like that's what kind of separates her from the other ladies, from what mm-hmm. we've seen on the show, right? She's able to have that, um, and then that empathy or whatever, and be caring, whereas the other ladies have been more about, well, listen, are you going to pick me or not? Don't keep mm-hmm. me waiting. Like you know, choose me. Lock off the other connections. Me, 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 me. What are you going to do for me? Like that's what they're coming with. She doesn't seem to be coming with that energy and that pressure yet, right? Um, and then when someone's an empath, what, what, like it's great that you show empathy and, and all of that. It's it's amazing to have someone do that because it's a selfless act as well. But mm-hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean she's building these guys. So this notion, you know, automatically just because a lady's caring or or empathetic or sympathetic or she's warm or loving or nurturing that doesn't mean she's a pick me and that doesn't mean she's trying to build a bear boo and all these other different things no (laughs) this day and age it's okay to still be warm loving and caring and nurturing that should be perfectly acceptable that's the normal state as humans, that's well, where you we know should what? be. Yeah. True. True indeed. Well, you, you know what, Aubrey um, and, and JR, I, I think that when you look at what happened a couple of weeks ago with the date with Patrice and Alonzo, right, at, at, at the museum, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, it was it was built like he had the museum shut down, which I doubt it. I think it was probably a day that they weren't even open or they just opened up for filming and what have you, you know, and Bill, that he, he shut the museum down, which he, okay. But I, I saw that as 
basically them breaking him out of this little boy mold uh, of immaturity mm -hmm. for a brief moment out of a brief yeah. or a brief moment in the sun. And, 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 and I don't think that's what you're going to get consistently from him going forward I, I, after, I, after the cameras have gone off and, and now we live in life, which, you know, they've been finished filming and all that, but I don't think that's what a woman's going to get out of him. The museum being shut down there. We are, or, or, or these grandiose dates or have you not saying that we can't have fun time like at a skating rink or at a, at a, at a skating rink or at a, at a go-kart place or what have you, whatever we have here in the DFW. But I, I think that was just to break that monotony of this little boy role that he had been pigeonholed in to, yeah. to show some, because remember what she said, well, I don't know when to take you serious. I don't know whether to take, how to take you serious or not, you know? And he Why? just wanted, and it was, it was somehow, Conjured up to try to make him look as a, as oh, a mature as, as a mature point. decision, per good se. Point. Yeah, I, and I think that's what that was. You know, I don't I don't know if he had the idea or not, but, but let's just talk it up to him, give it to him, give him the idea. Yeah, let's, but let's give going it, let's forward, give it I, I I don't per se would see him, even though it's only like nine years of chronological age between them. There's a world of experience between different between them. You know? I don't know. Some um, people are saying six years, eight years, nine years. Six I years. Don't well, I don't. Whatever. I don't know. How, how is he? 30, 30, he's thirty-four, right? She's forty-three. Something. I like that. thought someone yeah. said that he was thirty-six. I, I honestly 36? couldn't tell you. Something. I, something. I whatever. Whatever they. I don't know what age they give him. Ready love. Whatever age they. I don't know. <laughs> right. 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 Whatever age they gave him, we don't know. Yes, yeah, you uh, sure you're 47, man? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but he's certainly, know. like, to someone's point, he's not the Drea, yeah. and who is that, Drea and Jalen? He's definitely not that. He's not, it's not <laughs> like she's 39, and he's, like, 21, 22. That's, that's not the okay. problem. Okay, Ch Chaz, Chaz said six, Chaz said six years difference. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what someone else has said earlier. Thank you, Chaz. Um, right. So six right. years is, in your 30s, 30s and beyond, that's not that big of a gap. Once you get, especially like 35, like so six years is not that big a gap. But here's the thing. Everybody matures at their own rate and time. So exactly. somebody could be 40 years and they could have the maturity of a 15-year-old and somebody could mm -hmm. be 20 and have the maturity that you would expect of a 40-year-old. So it's it's yeah. all relative. It's all very relative. Exactly. You know? well, 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 you know, my whole thing, my whole thinking process now at, at where I am in life is with a woman. Where can I fit in your life? Where is the void in your life where I can feel? Mm -hmm. mm. Because exactly. if you have no need mm -hmm. of me, then there's no need for me to pursue you. There you go. Hundred percent time. So when you when they be coming with some toes gonna be stepped on out there in the, in the chat land. Uh oh. When, uh oh. Exactly. When they be coming with, I don't need a man, or um, mm -hmm. I can do better all by myself, or I could do bad all by myself, or mm -hmm. any of that crazy stuff. That's what we do as men. We're like, oh, so you don't need us? Okay. Boom. I will quite openly tell the lady that I'm with or that I'm interested in. Listen. I need you in my life. I need you. Right? Mm -hmm. My goals are not going to be complete without you. I need you. So I'm trying to keep you on side. But the moment I start hearing, I don't need I don't you. Need or, you. What do I need you for? Or anything like that? Yo, you're, that's severely going to derail my hopes and aspirations of where we can go. Right. right? right. And then further to, to add on, yeah, I think you're more than likely, with Alonzo and Patrice, you're more than likely going to get more of the bungee date type of experience than the shutdown museum experience, right? Mm -hmm. That that yeah. date at the museum was, some, was a one-off. It was ro romantic and whatever, but don't get your aspirations up thinking that's going to be a regular occurrence. You're more than likely going to go on fun dates like the bungee date because that kind of suits more like his personality. And like he said, he wanted to get a level of trust um, from her because she has to trust the bungee rope. Mm. Right? And then that also allows them to have
broken down that that barrier and now they can both be vulnerable with each other which can lead to more closeness this, this is a question for you i know i said we we're wrapping it up we're almost four hours into this i feel like i feel like the only thing i can't understand is why ron is not here because these are usually the kind of long conversations we have when ron is on the panel and ron is not even here so i don't even understand this i think i sent him the wrong link by the way so he probably would have been here but but here's a good question that favorite t has is it better to be needed or to be wanted? Gentlemen, I'll start with you, Sean. Just quick answer, quick answer. I think needed, but I will not be your savior. I will, I will not be your Lord and savior. Mm. Needed versus wanted. Okay, and you say you think needed is better. Why? Needed Why do better. you think needed is, is better and more relative? Because you know, needs differentiate from wants. Wants is something that you could substitute, I mean, I mean, do you need those pair of red bottoms? Do you need those pair of Air Jordans? Do you need no? I mean, shoes. I mean, you know, you can get a pair of regular Nikes or Pumas or Adidas or what have you, or you can get another pair of Air jo um, Nikes or what have you. Um, mm -hmm. th those are just those are wants. But do you need air? Yeah, you need air. Yeah, you need food. Yeah, you need love. So, yeah, I'd rather be needed than wanted. Hmm. See, I see it a little differently, but I, I'm going to go over here to uh, thank you for that, um, Sean. You're welcome. JR, how, how do you view that? Is it better? Because you, you brought it out. You were the one talking about women that are saying they don't need a man. They don't want a man. They're self-sufficient. They're super women. They're high achievers. They have great incomes, yada, yada, yada. Um, which one, as a man, which one would you rather be? Would you rather be needed or be wanted is it which one's better in your mind and why Again, needed right because for me like i could be wanted by many but if i'm needed by one then i'm focusing on that one once mm. can change you might oh want to... i see i see i'm gonna change my answer <laughs> okay yeah. go ahead continue so once <laughs> you know you might you might want to eat <laughs> Some chocolate. You might want to <laughs> go and do something, but if but the bottom line, you need to eat, right? So okay. it doesn't matter what you eat or what you feel like eating. The fact is, the need is you're hungry. So that's mm -hmm. what needs to be satisfied. In yeah. Sean's example, <laughs> listen. Mm -hmm. Do you do you want those? Okay, you want those Air Jordans. You want right. those Fenty slippers. Uh -huh. You want those sandals. Whatever it is, you want that. But the ultimate, the, the the underlying factor is you need new footwear. You need you need some new shoes, right? So I would much rather be needed by my partner because for the goals I have, if, especially on a show like this or at the age we are at, where people okay. are talking about dating with intention, right? I need to feel like, and again, I use the word need, I need to feel like mm -hmm. we are going to be together long term and your wants can change in that time, but your need for me needs to be constant throughout the whole relationship. Mm -hmm. mm. So, Okay, you guys are saying it's, real, it's so funny how the men are saying needed. Chad says needed. If you're needed, then I want you to. Okay. Okay. I see. What, I see how this is going. Okay. I, I guess you know what it, it's all in how we define words, though, too. Because in my mind, what I read it as when I first saw it, and I was thinking this. So, because this is where you guys get upset with with, with some women. I'm gonna say all women, but some women. Uh, you and you talked about this earlier, Jr. If a woman is out here, and you too, Sean, if a woman is out here and she's just looking for somebody that will pay the bills, do this for her financially, looking at his bank account and his assets, but she's not really wanting this person, like, she's not really wanting him, right? Mm -hmm. She yeah. feels like, okay, you know, I'm entitled. I need this guy. I found this guy that's making a boatload of money. He's a baller. He's wealthy. He's well-to-do. He's very well-established. I'll go with him because I need him 
to do these things for me because I like to live a certain lifestyle versus her actually wanting him. See, that's the way I took it. So okay, I but, saw but, it. I, my definition was a little bit different. So now what I'm thinking is to the person that asked the question, I'm thinking actually it's both. I think that you should need and want the person that you're with. Does that make sense? Of course. Of course. Now yeah. the thing is, right? The, you just you just said something very important, right? In the example you gave, you were like, okay, so if they're looking for a guy of a certain financial status to take care of them and provide for them and all of that stuff, right? Yes. See, she's saying the same thing. Where are they in their life, though? Are they in a situation where they can't afford to do certain things? They're, you know, a key component of them wanting to get married is to change their circumstance or whatever the case may be. That's a need. If you just want a baller, I want a guy who's going to do this, that, the other, it's going to be reflected in the way you treat that guy and the way you try and keep him around. If you need something, there's more of a serious attempt to try and get it and keep it. If you just want it, then there isn't that much desire behind it because your wants can change. Yeah, I want someone to eat. I want someone to drink. I want someone to pay my bills. I want this, that, the other. You're not really investing in the person. You just want what they can give you. Whereas the mm. need, you need that person to be a part of your life consistently in order to mm-hmm. grow to where you want to be. Man, this is yeah. a triggering question. These The chat is well, going, wow, it is lit. Because Babs is saying, wait a minute. She's saying, hold on a minute. Hold on, Sha. She's saying, we serve a jealous God, those of us who are believers. Uh, is it biblical to need um, a man when we should only need God? Just asking, not saying it's wrong, just asking for thoughts. What do you think, Sean? What do you think? Well, is, is, that, is that biblical for a woman to need a man? No, it's not biblical for a woman to need a man. It is biblical that God said he would supply all I need. And of course, you need, like JR said, you need food, but the want is your discriminating taste in that food that you want, need. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, he God promises to supply you need. So whatever that need in that food is, you got to supply it. But it's your wants, whatever you want type of food, you know. Um, now the need, like I said, you, I, I, I'm rather for you to need me and me need you, but not to be dependent upon you as my savior or my Lord, what have you. Mm-hmm. I don't worship you out of that need. I love you out of that need because you need, we all need to be loved. One of the um, theory of hierarchy of needs, you know, Maslow's theory of hierarchy of needs. Yes, I, I remember know, studying so, that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and as we go to the, as the pyramid goes up, up, you know, the needs get, you know, lesser and lesser, you know, from the broad base, we all need love, we all need food, we all need shelter, we all need acceptance, we all need air. But then as we go up, our needs make from primary needs to secondary needs to tertiary needs to quaternary needs, where our needs may vary, what have you. But the idea is that we all have the same base needs. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, do we all need uh, no, I believe like this. None of us is an island, so we all need some degree of companionship. Does that mean oh, yeah. that we all have to get into a relationship with somebody? No, but we are because we, we were not meant to live life alone. No, because not at all. There, it, is, it, is, it is impossible to live a. It is not. It is impossible to live a whole life and not come into contact with anybody. Mm-hmm. Well, and not there only you that, you're going to need somebody for something because even if you're out you're here, need somebody for something. The most, the yes. most money. You're still going to need somebody. Maybe it's maybe if it's just simply to help you make a decision. Do I buy this car or do I buy this SUV? Oh, my SUV has a flat tire now. I need my man to come over and fix my tire because I don't know how to do it and and I don't have the strength or whatever it is. Um, but what I was thinking to your to what you were saying uh, earlier, uh, Sean, to your point. I think the need for a man actually is biblical and the need for a woman because the Bible states that a man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. the fact that we cannot, none of us, male or female, can we procreate without the other? 
So not, if God wants us to recreate, pro procreate and have children and grow mm -hmm. and blossom as a part of our service here on earth is to provide the next generation, how the uh -huh. heck are we going to do that by ourselves? That doesn't hey, make sense. Well, well, you know, well, you know it, it, since you went biblical on that, uh, Genesis 2, uh, 18, it says, God said, and it, God, Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. that's right. He didn't say he didn't say lonely. Lonely is the absence of people, but aloneness is the absence of purpose. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. notice what God says after that. He says, "Not good for man to be alone, for I will make him and help meet for him." Right, mm -hmm. and if you look up the word "help meet" in the Amplified, it says, "I'll make him a suitable, adaptable, and compatible companion." Right. But if you also look up the word help me in the Hebrew, it comes from the word Ebenezer or Ebenezer, as it really is pronounced. Ebenezer is this it's a stone of help. So to me, and my exegesis or interpretation of that is that the woman to the man is what the Holy Spirit is to the believer. The Holy Spirit is a helper. The yes. woman to the man is the helper, the helper. Helper so, and comforter. So, so the yes. idea, helper and comforter. See, and the comforter is not like, oh, baby, it's going to be all right. But comforter literally in the Greek literally means one called to come alongside of and assist. All right. You, know, you never see, you and I have not, come on, you have not, come on, we have never, we have never seen LeBron James or Steph Curry win a game by him or her. Him, that never. Himself. Why? Because they had assist. They had an assist. You know, they didn't score on the point. So they assist. They threw the ball to somebody and they shot the ball and yep. assist. Yep. And, and, so, and so, I so. can go you. I can go you one further if you're going to give go uh, a go basketball ahead. reference because I'm from the old school bad boy era of the Detroit. Oh Pistons. yeah, yeah. And I'm here you to too. tell you that Michael Jordan never won a game, and I'm talking about Michael Jordan, the goat, never won yeah. a game all by himself. Never. No, he didn't. And it wasn't until he incorporated putting getting his uh the rest of his team to participate because there was there was years when michael was scoring a hundred uh points a game and still wasn't winning no championships okay well, All right. well it listen that, I, I'm, I'm a come on i'm a basketball savant so i'm gonna say this <laughs> it took seven years of michael jordan trying to do it by himself and mm -hmm. he did with no championships but mm -hmm. You're right. When they gave him a helpmate in Scotty Pippen, yeah, mm -hmm. and they surrounded him with other role players, mm -hmm. you know, that's what got him over the hump. But also the fact that the Detroit Pistons dynasty, after winning their two championships and the Magic versus Bird era, was all over. Those players were all old and retired. So yeah, it was time yeah, for a new team to take over. And he was in the right place at the right time with the right help mates in order to win those uh, two free peats. And that's the thing about it is that they had to back. They had to buy into it. They had to buy into it. And it took time. It took, it time, took time to trust his teammates. He know everybody knows how good Michael Jordan is as an individual, but he's one man, and he's got yeah. He's got four other teammates out there that are wide open. Mm -hmm. Every time he steps on the court, because everybody's drawing all the defense is drawn to him. Right, right. So he needs help because when things get congested, or he's double teamed, or he can't move, or he's stuck, he needs help. And that's when he has to trust his teammate with the responsibility to help get him through the situation. Can I trust you with the last shot? No, he never trusts anyone with the last shot now. Yeah, if it's he put the game into his hands, and and, and and that's the good thing about leadership is that when you see the team is down, now okay, we're not just gonna sit here and cry about oh, was well, we we down fifteen? The good mm -hmm. leadership say we'll find a way to win. We will find a way to win. Yeah. Okay. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. I got the high hand. And and, and let's also be real. Michael Jordan is a very petty, <laughs> and angry very petty. individual. Very petty. He holds grudges. And that's what made him so good. He hold he, he held grudges against people <laughs> all the way up from high school and college, all the way through his professional career. You know, he would score 40, 30, 50, 60 points, depending on how offended he felt by something you said or did. 
to or about him. Mm -hmm. And he used those grudges as fuel to motivate him. But the bottom line is he couldn't do it by himself. He had to have helpmates to allow him to be great. Wow. JR, JR, you know, we're talking about this. You've been you've been talking about it very politely asking. Look what Chaz just said. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chaz. We appreciate that. Oh, cool. We are yeah, we, we are all in on that. I'm gonna be uh, reaching out to you probably since it's so late, probably tomorrow. I'll, I'll reach out to mm -hmm. you, okay? And we're gonna yeah, see what definitely we... come on board, Chaz. It would be great to board, get your perspective, bro. Yeah, because we we got questions, Chaz. We got questions. Uh, <laughs> but... More importantly, we'll allow you to get your points across, and and we want to hear what your perspectives are, bro. It's that not going to be a true. thrilling session. As much as you can do, talk about it. That's right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And, it's and, a safe space for you here, bro. Right. And that, that's what I was about to say. That is our key uh, mantra, mantra over here at Actually Aubrey is that we're always a safe space. I've brought women onto the panel from uh, put a ring on it that were possibly dealing with uh, domestic violence as a survivor of domestic violence myself. Um, mm -hmm. we're always creating a safe space between our moderators and myself. I'm just not going to allow it. I would rather have uh, just a few subscribers than to have 10,000 subscribers and half of them are in the chat talking crap about our guests, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have yeah. the right to think whatever you want or have your opinions, but if you can't put them in the chat respectfully, you, you will yeah. you will get banned, right? So, mm -hmm. um, JR is telling you absolutely right. This is a safe space. And as you see, um, men are on this panel with me and we are going to have an opinion, but we just want to find out what really was going on because there's so much, I think, you know, with the editing, there's so much chance that's cut out of what we actually see as viewers. And I know you guys get tired of us criticizing you for this or that when you guys were willing to put yourself on the line and be vulnerable and allow us to see you in this way, right? But we really, most of us here, we really want to, we're rooting for love, we're rooting for connections, and we really just want to understand you guys and what's really going on and what is it that we're not seeing? What is it that we're not seeing that would maybe make it a little bit more understandable for us? That's what we really, I think most of us, would you agree, Sean? Would you agree, JR? I agree with it. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, yeah I, I agree, agree too. Because let's be real. Most of us wouldn't open up ourselves to mm -mm. the TV cameras and the scrutiny that comes with going on the show. So we appreciate the fact that you and your other castmates were able to have the confidence to get up there and do that. And uh, yeah, as I say, it's a safe space here. So um, we just want to get your perspective as someone that's been there and done it. And it's something that most of us sit back and, you know, we probably wouldn't open up our lives like that. Mm -mm, I know I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I know I wouldn't. <laughs> and uh, I, I I totally, <laughs> Chess. <laughs> thanks, Chess. Um, yeah, we definitely are a safe space. But guys, with that, we are four hours and 16 minutes into this deep. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> This has been a great. I'm sorry. Did you have something? I'm sorry, Sean. Go ahead. You had something. No, I say to we, say. We, I say you were say we're gonna shimmy and shake and get on out of here. Yeah, we was gonna shimmy and shake a while ago, a couple, two, three times. Yeah, we've been you know. we've been shimmying for the last hour, a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> We've been shimmy for the last hour, but you know what? I have to get. I have to contribute some of the fault. I got to put some of the the blame. Fifty one percent in our chat family because the chat family has been lit. They've been asking really good questions and they've been asking for clarification. Uh, is it better to be needed or wanted? I think that still seemed to fall along gender because I noticed it seemed like most of the women in the chat were saying wanted. The men were saying needed. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, asking good questions like I really want. I'm curious. I'm a person that, like I said, I, I'm a sapiosexual. So I like men that are intellectual. But that means that I'm all, also very curious about the world and how people think and how people process information and how they got to be where they are. All of that. I'm always curious. So the chat has just really been on fire with questions about relationships and about the not really even just about this show but about relationships right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's and much that, needed conversations that need to be had let's be yeah. real 
it's too much of a war zone out here. So the more we can have these type of conversations, dialogues and interactions with the chat, then it strengthens the community because we all can learn from each other, or learn diff learn how women think, learn how men think, learn what the expectations are, what's realistic, what's not. You know, oh. we can, can learn <laughs> things. Okay, last thing. I'm not letting you go. Okay, last thing, because it's Kiki and she's our new moderator. So we're gonna show her some love and respect. Uh Kiki, uh, you know, um, wait a minute, hold on, let me take this off. Look, um, there's my cash app just in case you don't have it right there on the screen. <laughs> but um, last thing, last thing before we shimmy and shake out of here, I promise you, last thing, uh, Kiki, and I think someone else in the chat, I don't know if it was Kiki, asked the question, and I, that was the last thing I wanted to end on. What are our predictions for next week? So next week, who's going home? A woman is going home next week or no? A man? A man? We yeah. just had a woman get eliminated. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Which man would be going home? That's 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 a question. That's a good question. Okay, so who do we have left? We have Alonzo. We have Chaz. Naran. Naran. And, and, that's it. and that's Justin. Justin. Oh Justin. yeah, Justin. You know that's four. Well, you know yeah. Justin ain't going home. Justin ain't not mm -hmm. going home. He ain't going home. Chaz ain't going home. Okay, so um, by I don't see Laron going home. So what what does that mean? So we're talking about Alonzo potentially going home then. I see. I, from what when I look at the the the, the snippet that was shown mm -hmm. uh, from the, the from this week coming up, I get the feeling that the same narrative is going to be painted about Alonzo that was painted about Phil from last season. The instability. Ooh, the yeah. instability factor. Cause he said, "Well, you know, I'm gonna kind of go with the flow." Man. But no, no, this ain't no time about it. You know, especially when uh, uh, what's it? Ain't no time going on going to flow. No, you either know, or you don't know. Uh, you either, you know, you stay you get st stability. The whole mm -hmm. idea uh, about him being unstable. So more than likely, he might be the one to go home, Alonzo. Mm hmm. Okay. Um. Ooh, it's tough because uh, now that. Rasheen is gone. I think we're pretty much even, right? I think we have potentially four couples, right? It's four on four, yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Four yeah. men and four women. So, so uh, I'm going to. I. I. Uh, ooh, this is a tough one. Um, I think I would be very surprised to see Chaz and Patrice go together only because up until last week or last episode, they weren't really contacting each other at all outside of the process, i.e. there were no phone numbers, none of that type of backstage stuff was happening. So mm -hmm. I'd be very surprised if it was a, if, if Chaz and Patrice hooked up. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying I wouldn't be for it, but I'll be very surprised if out of the blue, Patrice just came and swiped Chaz away from Vanessa and mm -hmm. Rashino. But that yeah. vulnerability thing. I don't know. Have you been over on, on Vanessa's channel, her YouTube channel? Because some of the things she's saying, I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't think it works out for her and Chaz. That's my guess. I, no, no, no. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying okay. I'd be very surprised if Patrice oh. was able to do that. That would be, that would be, mm. <laughs> I'd be, yo, I'll be surprised. I wouldn't like really? said it's something that I wouldn't be opposed to. Okay, but, I would, I, okay. but it would surprise me. Um, Chat I family, I'm not, not to cut you off. Hold on one second. Chat yeah. family, real quick, you kept us here this long. The least you could do, those of you that are still in the chat, and if you're watching on the replay, drop in the comment section. Who do you think will be going home next week? Which guy? Which guy do you think will be going home next week? Go ahead, go ahead, Jr. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. Yeah, I'm gonna say it with my chest. I'm gonna say out of all the out of all the guys I want to see go home, it'd actually probably be Laron. Yeah, that's who you want to go home, but who do you need to go home? Because Laron ain't going home. I can tell you that already. He ain't going home. 
Well, not if they keep more crawfish and seafood around. He ain't got no one. <laughs> never, well, Ronnie, never I had a good conversation about that crawfish, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 that's tough, man. I like Alonzo and Patrice. Um, Laron and Maya, I can see they're compatible. Oh man, this Come is tough. On, don't all right, okay. I, I think, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I think Chaz goes home. I think Chaz and Vanessa don't work out. I think they go home. Oh, Sydney, <laughs> that's right. That's her name. Oh, I'm sorry. We have got a whole other conversation going on in the chat about. Uh, I'm gonna say Phil Chaz. I'm gonna say Chaz. You say you say Chaz is going home. So wait a minute. Do you think he's gonna self eliminate? Because how in the world is he, think, is he going home? I don't think him and Vanessa work out, and I think that's the couple that dip out and then they leave the other three couples there so mm. you're saying yeah, that's, that that's next good. week you can actually double see... elimination ah, double i don't elimination. see that i don't okay but that's well what, but think you, about it well, if, 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 if laron if goes maya has nobody else thanks Kimberly. Right. and i think vanessa will feel a way about be, the way that Things went down at the retreat, and I think she might hold that against Chaz and Thanks, eliminate. I'm and sorry. I'm sorry. Say that again. I'm sorry. What we, what okay. Say? So I said that I think Vanessa holds a grudge against Chaz for the way things went down at the retreat and decides that she's not going to proceed. And that leaves Chaz um, without a dance partner. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. That is that your final say before we only if take Patrice, on out here. Only if Patrice. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Only, only, only if Patrice is not feeling Alonzo. Really? Yeah. I mean, Listen, Chaz could be I'm, the wild. Chaz could be the wild card. I mean, because oh, well, he, could, he could sacrifice Vanessa leaving if if Patrice if Patrice does not choose Alonzo, he's got one right there. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, the whole Justin Mika thing, I'm not buying it either, but, you know, I, I don't think they're going to be canoodling up in bed together and then not choosing each other at the end. Yeah, they were doing a lot of canoodling. Yeah. And if uh, Vanessa thinks her kids uh, are coming in and hearing uh, Mary 10 years talking about <laughs> Talking about what's going on between her and Chaz, allegedly, um, I think that Mika should at least get to the bridge with, with my boy Justin. She should at least get to the bridge and put on her fancy ball gown or whatever she's going to put on. I mean, like, what's the point? Like, if you're not going to make it to the bridge, you got to exactly. make it to the And production has kept her around this, this exactly. long. Exactly. That's what Let's I was just going to say. What's the Mika, point in keeping her Mika all this had, time? Yeah, she had no personality the whole season. We saw nothing of her personality. Girl. She's a good-looking girl, no doubt, no doubt. But the only thing, the only personality she showed was she don't want no kids. That was it. That was the. That's that was all the, we knew about her. And now right. it's a uh, uh, rumored on the uh, YouTube streets that uh, allegedly, allegedly, uh, it's possible that she may have had her tubes tied, so she won't be giving anybody any babies like Justin or any of these guys yeah. that. That don't have children, she won't be giving exactly. Them. And for Justin, he deals with kids all day at school anyway. So maybe when he comes home, he wants a break from all of that. But he's not going to get a break because she's got kids already. She got two, and the youngest <laughs> one. Right, he can't, he can't have he can't have any any peace. <laughs> exactly, the youngest one, like she said, is a handful at times. So he's going to. Oh you know, man, when she said that. Break. Hey, yeah. listen. What, what did you think when she said that the, the youngest one is a handful, and she told that to Laron? I was like so outdone. Like anytime somebody says their kids, their own kids are a handful, I was like, oh man. Nope. Uh -huh. well, walk, walk away. At least she's honest, and she's not lulling him into a false sense of security. You know, at least she that that's nope. a, that's that's a good bit of self awareness that she at least acknowledged that there's a problem there, and she needs help with that. Mm. I don't necessarily see that as her throwing her child under the bus. I think that was just putting him on yeah, alert. Listen, yeah. you're not you're not going to be suplexing and elbow dropping my son because he's got <laughs> he's got uh, 
behavioral problems or you know maybe, whatever she said maybe, I think I just, that was just being maybe candid. special means who knows yeah maybe on maybe but you know ultimately that's why i think she's been so set on eliminating certain guys already because she's looking for a plug and play like a plug in father to just step in and take control in some respects so it takes the pressure off of what she has to do 24 yeah. hours a day for yeah, but you know that, that, not that just... she's going to advocate responsibility but you know she needs help that's what i think she's saying and she needs a serious guy that's going to come in not expect any kids of his own because she's got more than enough to deal with at home already that, that's just that's just a little too close to comfort for me if i was um justin's age and she already got an 18 year old daughter Oh, that's just. Ooh, yeah, I forgot about that. Is she is she built like her mother? Cause that could be. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't don't know. (laughs) She gets up in the middle of the night with her little nightie. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Act like like Megan the Stallion or whatever. That could be a problem. (laughs) Hopefully, she's going off to college uh, in the fall. (laughs) Hopefully, she's doing something. (laughs) But the other thing is. Um, Laron, as much as him and Maya, you know, as much as he's been spitting game to her and all the other stuff about where he sees them going, she also said she doesn't like drama. And as we've seen, he has been at the center of some of the drama on the show. For another oh, people on the yeah. Show. Yeah. Yeah. It, won't she feel duped when she gets to the end of this and figures out that possibly Laron uh, strategically set that up for William to go home. She might feel a little differently about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, right. these are the questions as we ponder. Um, let me let me get this theme music up. <laughs> let me hit this button. I wanted to leave a... There was one... Um, Did you want us to give us our, our, our channels and all that? Oh, mm-hmm. yes, yes, yes. Go, go ahead, Sean. Start that and I'll find the stuff that I want to end the screen with. Go ahead. Uh, tell us where, Tell the people where they can find you. Well, you can find me on Instagram at S A N D R E S one nine zero six. Once again, that's my first name S, middle name A N D R E, last name S one nine zero six. That's Instagram, and you can also find me at Facebook under my first and last name Sean S H A U N, and last name Stokes S T O K E S. Thank you. I look forward to connecting with you and talking to you. All right, all right, and he's definitely um on these internets, the internets, Beyonce's internet. Um, he's on there. He's oftentimes sending me things from uh, IG and we we all kind of stay in contact through IG or Facebook. Uh, so definitely check my boy Sean out. He is so awesome. And as you see, he uh, he knows that Bible. He's, he's okay. very astute at the Bible and the word and um, really a very positive person. Um, kind of like the male version of Patrice. Like he's an empath. He's very caring in my experience with him. And um, he really just genuinely wants everybody to win. So that's that's awesome thing about, about our Sean Stokes. So hats off to Sean Stokes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now, now, JR, thank you. Um, JR, now tell the people where they can find you and all the things that are thinging over on your channel. Thank you. Um, yeah, listen, I'm... I'm going to first of all, just put a disclaimer out there. I'm human. Um, You know, I have ups and downs and moments too. Now, my natural state is to be helpful, is to be, uh, you know, um, as, how can I put it? As into, won't even say intellectual. I like to be as informative as possible if you need help with your health and fitness or with um, anything I feel like I'm experienced enough to help you with, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go to my Instagram, you will see more health, fitness, well-being related content. And if that helps you in any way, then, you know, feel free to chime in, follow, take the nuggets and use Mm -hmm. them and apply them if you can. Um, sometimes I might post some bits of humor or what I do in my other, um, career, um, 
which I won't disclose here, but if you go on Instagram, you can see it if you're curious. Um, mm -hmm. And then on my YouTube, I usually um, reserve that for dating, relationship, black love type content. Um, because me being a black man of a certain age demographic, a certain age range, um, and having the views and goals that I do relationship wise, it resonates with me to see people of my age group having relationships and hopefully successful relationships that will lead to marriages. Right. So mm -hmm. that's the two different channels and when you find that you are going through things, i.e. like if you have something that unfortunately happens health-wise, the stress and strain of that may spill over into other areas of your life, other aspects of your life. Conversely, if you're going through ups and downs in your relationship, that may also affect and spill over into your personality, your moods, your thoughts and other aspects of your life as well, your work. So it's finding that balance, that work-life balance or mm -hmm. that relationship balance that, you know, we don't always find, but it's something we should always strive for. And I'm guilty of, you know, sometimes I'm going through things myself and that may spill over into my work. Or if I'm at work, I may take a phone call that affects me and my day <laughs> And then I might be in a bad mood after that. So I'm human, but I put the nuggets up there because it's something that I speak from with experience. I'm trying to make that balance happen all the time. And I definitely recommend everybody try and have balance in their life rather than allow one aspect to, to dominate over the other. Don't let your work life dominate your or restrict your free time to be able to spend your time with the person you love and want to be with. And conversely, don't yet let your relationship and your over-reliance on wanting to be with your partner lead to you forgetting that you need to go and establish yourself out there as well in the wide world and make your money and seek your mm -hmm. fortune. So mm. it's important to have that balance. Check out my channels, JRX TV on Instagram and on YouTube, and I hope they help you out. Yeah, like, he's so awesome. Subscribe. He is thank, like thank you, Jerry. Thank you, JR. I appreciate it, man. And I want you to hook me up with a black British woman, man. Uh, black British woman. <laughs> you are you are uh, into that black British woman. You got I love the black you British know, woman. God you knows believe it. We're on here four hours, probably not, definitely not tonight, but normally we are in the green room after the show ends. That's where the real party, we're going to have to get a Patreon because that's where all the real stuff goes down. But anyway, I, I, I can't disclose. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be a, uh, don't be no snitch. Don't be no snitch. I'm not going to be no snitch, but I was trying to think of the girl's name. I, I'm not going to be no Chelsea from love is blind. Like, you know, Jimmy told her, uh, to keep stuff off of, uh, away from the camera. He told her, uh, when they weren't in front of the camera. And the first thing she did when she got mad, she was like, yeah, you told me you screwed your girlfriend. And that girl is not just your platonic friend, but you've actually had sex with her right on camera. Mm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I see, see, now that's somebody you can't trust. If somebody gets angry with you and then they weaponize things that you told them against you, that yeah. is somebody you cannot be vulnerable and you cannot trust, okay? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, I found the music. Uh, you want to say goodbye so we can shimmy and shake on out of here for real, for real. Good night. All Good right, night. everybody, have a great night. Good night. See to you, you next week. See you next week. See you next week, same time, same place, but not as long next week. You guys got a special show mm, tonight because you guys were such a great audience. So I love you. And uh, Chaz, I'm going to leave this up on the screen because I'm going to hold you to that, okay? But here we go. Shaking it, shimmy and shaking. <laughs>